Texas and putting up a ton of yards, and they're not doing that this year. They're doing it a little bit differently and uh, playing a little more defense and a little more run game and a little less, you know, uh, of everything through the air. And he's winning football games that way. And, boy, this is a sneaky team that is undefeated that nobody has paid any attention to. And you just wonder, are we, Jim, looking towards an undefeated Bedlam, and then it's going to be Bedlam back-to-back weeks? Um, and, and, I, you know, that, that is just really that, – that's a team that is under the radar that you got to watch here is Oklahoma State. I don't think they're going to be a factor at the end of the Big 12. But Mike Gunny just continues to quietly win football games there in Stillwater, and that's a pretty good-looking team right now. Yeah, and they may have the best defense in the Big 12 right now. Yeah. And they played like that. Oklahoma did start Caleb Williams. They win that thing 52-31. That was a big win. Michigan State stayed unbeaten, moved up a spot. They're number nine. They beat Indiana 20-15. to Oregon dropped a spot, even though they did beat Cal 24-17. Oregon, with one loss, is at number 10. All the Big Ten teams moved up except Penn State. Penn State stayed at 7. Michigan jumped over them to number 6. Ohio State is 5. All those teams had buys off. They've all got wins in the league coming up this week. Uh, As far as teams in the top 10 in a precarious situation this week, Oklahoma State's at Iowa State and uh, Oregon's at UCLA. Other than that, not a very scary week for the top 10, so you may not get the shakeup uh, that you usually get. I know I say that, and people are like, oh, my God, here comes the chaos. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, these, those, are the, those are the kind of weeks we normally get the chaos, by the way. Yeah, okay, here we go. Three minutes to go, and we're going to give you some candidates, and I want your initial reaction. Bruce Feldman with a list here. of uh, for, and Again, if you missed it, Ed Orgeron fly, or, you know, dismissed over the weekend. He's going to coach the rest of the year, but they're making a move. Uh, some kind of settlement somewhere between zero and seventeen million dollars of a buyout. Scott Woodward's going to pay it. If you don't know Scott Woodward, when he was at Washington, he got Chris Peterson to leave Boise to go to Washington. When he was at Texas A&M, he got Jimbo Fisher to leave Florida State to go to Texas A&M. So now he's in Baton Rouge, his school. He's finally home, and Bruce Feldman lists Jimbo Fisher as a candidate number one. He lists Mel Tucker as a candidate. So he puts them one and two as a candidate to watch for that job. Six other coaches we think LSU might also give strong consideration. So the way Bruce writes it, he writes it as Jimbo will be the first target. Mel Tucker will be the second target. Let me tell you, if Jimbo says no and they offer it to Mel Tucker, Mel Tucker ain't saying no to this. Negative. I mean, you. by the way, the the last time they went to East Lansing looking for a head coach for Michigan State, he said yes to, right? And That's right. Yeah, uh, that was Nick Saban, obviously, for those that don't remember. That's where LSU hired him from. So And and Tucker uh, was on Nick Saban's staff at LSU, which is how they all yeah. got to know each other down there, all the big boosters. What a rise for Mel Tucker, man, to go from, you know, Georgia defensive coordinator to that Colorado job. You jumped to Michigan State. And the first year at Michigan State was, you know, some ups and downs. But, boy, this year they have been one of the surprise teams in the country. That's a meteoric rise if he gets the LSU job that quickly. Um, Bruce is, Bruce is pretty well plugged in on stuff like this. So for him to mention Mel Tucker, I think is really, really interesting. Um, and I don't know if I haven't seen Bruce's list. I think De- Dennis Dodd mentioned this guy, another guy that's got ties to that program. And you mentioned his team earlier. This may be way too quick for him to get this job, but Dave Aranda has got Baylor playing some pretty good football. And Dave Aranda, I think was very well thought of with his time uh, with Ed Orgeron and Baton Rouge. And I think yeah. that's miles too. He was he was a holdover, wasn't he? I think he was Miles, and Orgeron held him over, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. they like Aranda there in Baton Rouge, I think. Oh, absolutely. Um, strong consideration uh, on this list. James Franklin, Dabo Sweeney, and, and Bruce Wright says, <laughs> another huge swing that Woodward could take, according to one source, Sweeney is totally Woodward's M.O. He'll make him say no. Sweeney's buyout, by the way, only $3 million. Yeah, but if you want to pay him more than what he's getting at Clemson, if you remember when he signed that most recent deal with Clemson, now there have been a couple since then. He was the highest paid coach in football, but you were paying Ed Orgeron close to that much. So I, I don't, you know, I don't think paying Dabo Swinney just a little bit more is going to break you. Um, if you really want him, you can you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Other names on the list: Billy Napier, Mario Cristobal, Mark Stoops, and Lane Kiffin. That's our Saturday breakout, brought to you by our friends at Culver's. 
Uh, we are going live now. If you're listening to this on Monday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, 9 until 1 p.m. And on our YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter streams. We'll see you then. Until next time, God bless you and God bless America. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. All right, live show, here we go. On a Monday, a lot to get to. Things I can't talk about, apparently, according to everybody in the chat already. Uh, but your team does look really good right now. But I won't say your name. They don't want you talking Braves? No, they, they remember what happened last year. Uh, no, I, mean, I am blown away. I still cannot believe last night happened. You know what You know what Braves fans would really hate? Is if we had Alston Riley back on the show right now. No, they would hate if Dunaway did another stake bet. The series well, which Dunaway one, believes is over. Which hey, one would they hate more? Forrester, can you bring me that, that roll of tape right there? Can I just tape my mouth up? I'm not saying the word. <laughs> I am not saying the word. I mean. It will not come out. I'm even changing the final lines of the national anthem. I'm not even saying the word. Home of the bro. Uh, if you remember the history of our show, Austin Riley was off to an incredible start. He comes on our show in the All-Star break years ago. And... Basically says, oh, God, what was it, 25 homers we asked him about? 30. Oh, 30. It's easy. Easy 25 homers. 30. And had an awful second he got, half. He got sent down to Triple A. I don't. Mm. Now he is in position to be the NLCS MVP. I mean, he's literally going to be the most valuable player of the series. What are you doing? What are you, what are you giving me that for? I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to say. Yeah, he about doesn't this. want to go on record here. No, yeah. no. I mean, he, I'm not he, he got, got those Red three. Sox look unbeatable though. Well, yeah. there's, we'll, there's, we'll give him an opportunity tomorrow before Game Three. There yeah. is nobody, every single Braves fan included. There is nobody that thinks this thing's over. Braves fans have been burned way too many times to think this thing's over. No, I'm I not saying it's over. I yeah. even saw our buddy Landrum Roberts tweeted out last night, hey, look, we just need to grab one of three at Dodger Stadium. That's all you want. I mean, that's what with Braves, just, just get me back. <laughs> I mean, where they, they know they're going back, but yeah. look, as long as we get one of the three. But, you know, I, I would think that's the mentality. They've lost 10 of 11 at Dodger Stadium. Congra- I know we don't want to start with baseball. Yeah, congratulations to the uh, the the fan base I will not speak of this morning. You're off to a great start and uh, more baseball tonight. But we're going to start with college football as we get rolling today. We'll get to the games on the field, but we've got two major stories that are off the field, right? Two major stories that are off the field. We'll start with the one that is more interesting to me, and that is the job opening that is now official at LSU. And it's unique the way they're doing this. Ed Orgeron is getting every penny of almost $17 million of his buyout, which some people said is a gift from LSU because they could definitely hold some things against him to maybe not pay anything. But they're going to pay him everything, and he's going to coach the rest of the year um, and he seems very content with this move. What do you think, first of all, about LSU coming off maybe their best performance it of was. the year, making the move right now? Uh, you know, I felt it so interesting because I got asked multiple times um, on Friday and Saturday morning, do you think Orgeron will be jobless on Monday? And I said, I just don't think LSU is going to fire this guy just based on the fact that 19 months ago he had one of the best teams in the history of college football, and he is one of LSU's own. I just don't see them doing this to him. But then they go out and they play the game of their life with Mm -hmm. 60 scholarship players. I think that was one of the biggest surprises of the weekend, how they performed against Florida. And then they come up with this agreement after the fact. The whole thing was weird. LSU, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, when they were going to hire Jimbo Fisher and get rid of Les Miles, the reason they didn't, didn't do that was because of optics and because they didn't have the money, right? And now we're talking about there's there's allegations of all kinds of stuff with Ed, Ed Orgeron. Are they going to pay him the full $17 million? I know. I know. Nobody wants to – neither side wants to get drugged through that, which is why I thought you could get a little bit less here, right? That's right. Meet, meet in the middle. Meet in the middle because neither side wants to be drugged through this. Neither side wants to, you know, out in the open talk about everything that's going on. So you go to Orgeron, you're like, hey, look. You don't you don't want your name being attached to all this for your legacy, we'll give right? You Ten million dollars, right? And Orgeron says, "Yeah, but you don't want it to come out either." So we're like, "Okay, well, uh, let's find some middle ground here." I mean, but does Orgeron didn't. seem like a guy that could spend seventeen million dollars? No, no. no. Well, I mean, home. you heard what he said he was going to be purchasing, right? That's right. He could get G-Bugger. that three days a week, G-Bugger. right there at the old milkshake on it. Yep. 
all right there. Double so, burger with cheese. So it's a, it's an interesting job, and uh, we'll get into candidates and stuff. But for LSU, I mean, they get you know as as we bring all the circuses together in the Southeastern Conference this week. We get a little Ole Miss hosting LSU. So we're taking the Ed Orgeron Circus over to to Oxford to play the Lane Kiffin Circus. So that'll be fun on the field this week. But for this LSU team down the stretch, I mean, they still have Alabama out there. So it's an important team when it comes to the playoff race. How big of a wild card is this team on the field? Well, I think they're going to play with a chip on the shoulder the remainder of the season. And I think you saw it on Saturday against Florida. This reminds me, if you guys were watching TCU in Oklahoma on Saturday night, Herb Street said, Iowa State is a team. When you look at the Big 12, they're going to beat a couple of teams, and they're, they're going to throw some teams off. I think LSU becomes that team in the SEC. I don't know how you guys feel well, about it. The it, problem is they've only got 60 scholarship guys. That, that is a problem, and it's not just they're missing some guys. They're missing some of their best guys, Lance, and that's the part of the problem. That's what made last week's win so amazing. Yeah, Every day last week there was a, a, an all-SEC-like performer leaving the team with injury and it was one after another after another by the time they played Saturday who was that team that yeah, beat I'm, Florida I'm, I'm so pissed off if I'm an LSU fan because I look back and when you had Ricks and you had Stingley you had probably the best duo of cornerbacks in college football and you had Boutte one of the best receivers and we couldn't run the football then now that we don't have these guys we find a way to run the football and Davis yeah. Price was fantastic school, uh, school record by the way yeah, I mean and you think about the the long list of great running backs LSU has had so you know if I'm an LSU fan I'm like how, how can Jake Peets how could we not find this running game before to take a little stress off of Max Johnson but I do think they're a dangerous team you know Ole Miss Alabama Arkansas they'll win one of those games yeah it's so, interesting you included Alabama in that group I, this can go I'll take Alabama off the table okay, about that? A&M right. I'll switch out Alabama for A&M yeah. Ole Miss A&M Arkansas they'll win one of those games. this can go one of two ways Jim um, it can be like Lance said, chip on the shoulder. Let's send our guy out. You know, this is our guy. Let's send him out as a winner. Or your bigger concern, I think, if you're LSU, it's obviously a bigger concern. Is this is not the guy I'm playing for next year, right? You know, why, why do I care if Coach O gets PO'd that I'm out after curfew? All right. Why do I care if Coach O doesn't like the fact that I don't run this last win sprint? Why do I care if Coach O didn't like my effort? That's the other concern. That's the other side of it. This is not the guy I'm playing for next year. Doesn't matter what I do now. I mean, that's. That's what happens in these types of situations. That's why these are tricky situations. Yeah, I, and I agree with that. Before we move on to what we saw in Knoxville, uh, I do want to bring up the other side of that game this weekend after LT gives us our medical minute right here, brought to you by our friends uh, at the Urology Centers of Alabama. I mean, I got a text the, from you over the weekend about the, this. There is a different side of the coin, but you did get a text yeah. from me over the weekend. Yeah, Look, if you're – we're going to take a moment, sensitive subject here. Are you considering getting the vasectomy, but maybe some hesitations about going through the procedure? The physicians at Urology Centers of Alabama, thousands of hours of experience performing non-invasive vasectomies to men across the southeast getting a vasectomy. It's safe, it's effective, does not impact your testosterone levels or sexual function. Over 500,000 U.S. men undergo a vasectomy every single year. Studies show that a vasectomy is over 99% effective at preventing future pregnancies making it the most effective form of birth control. Vasectomy is often covered by insurance plans and is very cost-effective, convenient method of birth control when considering the ongoing cost of other methods. Keep in mind, it is considered minor surgery. You'll need to give yourself time to heal. Patients will go home immediately after the procedure and after a few days of light activity, most men can resume a normal routine, including sexual activity. So if you're done building your family, then a vasectomy may be the right solution for you. Schedule an appointment by visiting Urology Center alabama.com or call 205-930-0920 today uh, not uh i did not place that there intentionally but the florida program has been snipped a little bit lately <laughs> with dan mullen as the head coach ed orgeron six and four last 10 games with two wins over florida dan mullen's four and six over the last 10 games and he just got beat on national tv this past weekend by lsu the guy who they'd already decided to fire does florida now have a Dan Mullen problem. Do you guys continue to defend him as one of the better coaches in college football? Boy, it's a bad look over the last 10 games. I'll give you that done away. And, you know, here's the interesting thing, Brown. If Florida can just take care of LSU, it's like Florida's got an Orgeron problem. You go back to last year, if they beat LSU. He owns them. Yeah, you, you, you're talking about maybe in the 14 playoff, yeah. and then you lose here. The loss to Alabama is a hard-fought two-point loss. That's acceptable. Losing on the road to what was then an undefeated Kentucky team by a possession, that's acceptable. But losing to 
scholarship players LSU just fired Ed Orgeron, that's not acceptable. You said four wins in the last 10 is yeah. what Mullen has. As one of our listeners pointed out, can I run this list of the four wins for you? Yeah. Florida Atlantic, South Florida, Tennessee, Vanderbilt. Yeah. Not exactly great wins he's got in the four either. Now, I will say that his six losses, two to LSU, one to Alabama, one to Oklahoma. One to Kentucky. One to Kentucky. And there's one other one in there. Two uh, to two, Alabama. Uh, uh, two to Alabama. No, yeah. One to Alabama, two to LSU. I think it is. Whatever it is. And they're, they're really good football yeah. Yeah, teams, yeah, 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 except yeah. for the LSU team. Yeah. So it's, well, it's not like he's lost to, you know, a bunch of horrible teams. But Dan Mullen is underperforming by any Florida standard right now. He's underperforming. And I would ask the question, is LSU and Florida a lot alike right now? Are those two programs a lot alike right now, except that LSU won a national yeah. championship in 2019? But here's the only thing, Brown. You look at in, in Mullen's first year, they go 10 and 3. Right. The next year, they win 11 games. Last year, although they were 8-4 and four in a weird COVID year, that was his best team, and I thought they were really, really good. But an under, it's weird to say because they went to Atlanta, but an underachieving team, wouldn't you say, at 8-4? and four? Yeah, With but, all the but, talent but he they finally had. won the SEC East. So it's like in the first three years, it got better. The bottom now, after this loss, seems like it's completely fallen out. And, and what's coming down the road? I think you got to be a little patient, though, if you're a Florida fan. I know that's difficult to say. But I think you got to be patient. I mean, what are we staring? We're staring. We are off week, and then here comes Georgia. Well, you're staring at eight and four, Jim. I mean, look, that's an eight and four. You're about to. Be, they're going to lose to Georgia, and that's going to be loss number four. And then they're going to beat South Carolina on the road, who had to fight to beat Mandy. They're going to beat Samford. They should win at Missouri because Missouri's no good, and they should be Florida State. They've got nothing left after Georgia. It's eight and four. Are one you of, okay with that? One of our great viewers says, uh, "Do you want to call him Dan Malzahn or Gus Mullen? Whatever <laughs> you want to do." And that's, I mean, Auburn. You know, wanting more pushes Gus Malzahn out. LSU wanting more, they push Ed Orgeron out. Dan Mullen doesn't have a trip to a national championship game or a national championship under his resume right now. So when does Florida start saying, I want more? Well, here's what I would say. I mean, I wonder how Florida fans feel about this. He doesn't have a national championship game appearance under his belt. He had Mississippi State at number one, though. Yeah. yeah. So that's almost, to me, um, as impressive as Malzahn playing for a national championship, if that makes any sense. And number one in the month of November. Florida fans, you got to be patient because we're talking USC is open right now. Have no idea what direction they're going to go. LSU is open. And Florida's open. I mean, what's the better job? But Florida's LSU or Florida? not open, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if Florida was open. Yeah. If Florida was open. What would be the better job, LSU or Florida? Florida should be. Should be the better job. Um, if I'm a coach right now, I don't know which one I'd take, Florida or LSU. I would, I, really, I would take Florida. It should be the better job. Traditionally, it has been. I think LSU, and I don't know this to be certain, but I think LSU's passed them on facilities where people normally judge the facilities. Well, that's a good point. I think LSU spends more. Yeah. There's more There's more for me to I, – I, hard to describe, but I think I can tap into more resources at LSU than I can at Florida. Yeah, Florida recruiting, you should be able to swing a dead cat and hit – you know, a, a top five class. When you get the right guy in there, you yeah. should be able to dominate the entire state because nobody's everything. I mean, Florida State, Miami are awful right Central now. Central Florida's bad. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you're absolutely right. I, I would, I would probably take the Florida job if all those are open. LSU is obviously the best opening right now. Brooks in our chat. Uh, we appreciate everyone jumping in as you view us on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. Dan Mullen now four and eight versus Alabama, LSU, Georgia, and Kentucky as the head coach at Florida. His wins come against the rest of the SEC, where he's 19-2. and two. The ostrich of the next round says you can't spell Mullen without two L's. You know, I would say it's three now and about to be four. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot it's of L's. Mullen. Yeah. I, I would say in Brooks's stat, if I'm a Florida fan, it's hard for me to stomach Alabama, LSU, Georgia being in that stat, but Kentucky, i got to throw Kentucky in there too. Florida used to own Kentucky. And now they've lost two of the last four, if I'm yeah, not mistaken, yeah. to the Cats. Two, two and two in the last four. Yeah, so, I mean, all of a sudden, I can't even really beat Kentucky consistently anymore. Well, and Florida still has a better roster than Kentucky. That's what's really got to be frustrating. Yeah. Um, Hunter wants to know, I want to know how much money Ed Orgeron has collected going out the door of all the schools he's been at the last 10 years. That's a great question. It's got to be almost $30 million, he says. He's getting $17 million here, but if you count what he's actually been paid, I mean – if he doesn't spend anything and only eats at Sonic, like he claims, um, I guess he's also at, what's the chicken place down there? Um, oh Raising Cane's. Uh, Raising Cane's. Yeah, he talks about that that place too. So just those two entities. Um, 
if that's the only place he eats, I mean, he's got to be worth. And he only wears a collared golf shirt. Yeah. Or no shirt at all. Or no shirt at all. And now he, <laughs> he does rip a lot of them, so he has to buy new ones. I think, or get them I, gifted yeah. to him. I think it's going to be no shirt at all once he gets to seventeen million. I, I mean, his no net shirt. worth's got to be twenty million dollars. Yeah. Well, I got a divorce. That's true. Right. That's, 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 that's a, a the most expensive purchase in a man's <laughs> lifetime will be a divorce. Uh, I would say he's got to be worth at least nine million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got a lot. That's why, if you can teach your kids to be anything. Growing up, get them to be a fire football coach. I will coach. tell you, man. No, a fire football coach. So, so I to thought me, you were going to say loyal. Lawyer, uh, <laughs> no, loyal, yeah, loyal faithful. Things, yeah. Any worth their salt will tell you the first thing when you meet them. Hey, the most expensive purchase yeah. in your lifetime will be a divorce. But if you can be but, a fire football coach when you grow up, it's amazing. Ed Orgeron, you know, the 30 for 30s have gotten a little stale to me. Mm -hmm. But to do one on Ed Orgeron his entire career, because we've heard the story from Tommy Tuberville when he made that call oh, when yeah. he was looking for – I forgot exactly. Maybe it was just a grad assistant. He drove overnight in his old Toyota, and him and Tuberville roomed together. And, you know, starting there to just his last 19 months from winning a national championship, the ESPN piece they did on Kelly Orgeron, you know, you don't know how relationships are behind the scenes, but I thought those two were thick as thieves. Me the next too. thing you know, they're divorced. So his last 19 months, you're talking about a whirlwind. Well, and there are a lot of stories that have come out about him now, now that it is all behind him, that are pretty interesting. He likes yeah. the ladies, it appears. Yeah. Uh, Mark, who is an LSU fan, uh, LSU and Florida post Tebow nine and three in favor of the Bengal Tigers. And he says Joe Brady ain't coming back to Baton Rouge. So nobody can uh, waste their time discussing that. He doesn't think Brady's coming back. A lot of people believe LSU fans will only be happy with, with a Joe Brady. I, I'm not sure mm -hmm. that is the case uh, because you've got an athletic director who has proven that he can shoot for the stars and land them, at least perceived stars. When he was at Washington, he was the only guy who's ever lured Chris Peterson out of Boise to go to Washington. And when he was at Texas A&M, he lured Jimbo with a boatload of money to go to College Station from Tallahassee. Look, so we'll see where he targets this, this uh, time around, and we'll jump into all that coming up later on. But Woodward's a guy who likes to aim high. Yeah, just real quick on Joe Brady. I don't know how you guys feel about this, and I think it was T-Bob that we had on a couple of months ago where he's like, I don't get the whole Joe Brady thing. But Joe Brady wants to be in the NFL. But if he was offered this job based on watching them again yesterday. Impossible to say no. Where Sam Darnold yeah. is, they've lost three consecutive games. It would be impossible for Joe Brady to say I mean, no. I mean, he's going to get 6 or $7 million to coach a program like LSU as your first head coaching job. I don't know how you would say yeah, no. Yeah, and what it. is Joe Brady right now? 31, yeah, 31 32. 32. And, and hey, if I go have success four or five years, I can still go to the NFL. And structure yeah. a massive buyout just in case it doesn't work. Yeah. Or if I get fired, I that's get it. $17 million that's what I'm and leave. St structure yeah. the buyout just in case it doesn't you, work. You can ask have him. Joe yeah. Brady is on gotcha. the table. See, I wish, and I'm with Trip here, I wish in Vegas they would allow you to gamble on stuff like this. I, I would love to be able to place a bet right now that whoever replaces Ed Orgeron doesn't win 74.2% of his games. I think I, I would bet they wouldn't. Yeah, I think um, I would bet the under, yeah. too. We talk about how difficult the SEC West is to navigate right now. We've got Oklahoma and Texas. We don't know how everything's going to be aligned, but the SEC is going to get more difficult. Yeah, especially bringing in those teams. Part of our show right now being brought to you by the great folks at New Life Art. We ask you every Monday during this first segment to send us the pictures. And I saw one already on this weekend of me at a tailgate um, it's hard to explain what was going on, but there's a couple of fans there, Alabama fans, state fans, and a mixed family. They have these, these unique T-shirts, and they have a competition on who can be wearing the T-shirt and get the best photo, like at a wedding or at a concert. And so I posed with this guy who you know wanted to kiss on the bald head Ooh, while boy, we're wow, posing man and <laughs> we, yeah so i did not know where that was going yet. so uh to win the competition this week <laughs> yeah <laughs> that picture's floating around out there at next round live you can send it in and we'll pick a winner at some point so uh if you see a picture of me floating around kissing a bald guy um on the head okay top of the head yes right there in a tailgate in starkville during the daylight hours wouldn't have surprised you after midnight 
but in the daylight hours, that was what was going on there. And that's already submitted there. Send us all your tailgate pictures. It's, it'll be fun. It's brought to you by our friends at New Life Art. Hey, New Life Art, bring you memorable sports moments by Daniel A. Moore for over 40 years. For more information, 1-800-735-2787. You can also view his incredible work today. Go to danielmoreart.com. All right, we'll open up the phone lines and the Pepsi hotline, 205-734-0923. A lot to get to. We've got uh, the Ole Miss win at Tennessee and all the aftermath. Alabama looking good. Bo Nix's best game maybe as an Auburn Tiger. Definitely his best road game ever as an Auburn Tiger. Bo's with us on the show coming up at 11 o'clock Central Time today. Nick Saban News Conference at 12 noon as it's rivalry week. Bama playing Tennessee. So all that is there for you. You can jump in the chat room. You can jump on Twitter at Next Round Live. Uh, listen to us on your smart devices, Alexa, Odyssey, uh, Spotify, and iTunes. If you miss any of the show, you get the podcast there. And, of course, watching us live on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. As we broadcast live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studio, presented by our friends at Bud Light, it is a monumental reaction Monday to what we saw in Week 7 of college football. And we roll on on the next round. Follow LT on Twitter at the Lance Taylor. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. Banking isn't just about your money. It's about you. It's about getting help with what you need when you need it. AmFirst was founded for members just like you, and they've been putting those members first since 1936. Putting you first means services that grow and change with the times to serve you better. Now, every bank has their own app, but that's just it. It's theirs, not yours. The AmFirst app was made for you, so it's easy to pay bills, deposit checks, or transfer money to friends and family from anywhere. You can even customize the app, which means you can personalize your dashboard, create usage alerts, and redeem points for rewards that will make you feel like the number one priority you are. And you can do it all on your own time. So what are you waiting for? Get the app made for you from AmFirst. Visit any AmFirst location or AmFirst.org today. That's AmFirst.org, America's first federal credit union federally insured by the NCUA. ERA King Real Estate agents are out there every day working hard to make home buying easy. I'm Jim Dunaway, and I know firsthand ERA King's commitment is to support them with the most innovative training and technology available. So even though home values may change, ERA King agents stay priceless. Text the word MOVE to 35260. That's 35260 to get started. ERA King working hard to make home buying easy. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. I'm absolutely loving my Alfa Romeo Stelvio that I've been in for months now. And right now you can get up to $3,500 bonus cash plus 1.9% financing for 72 months on the all new 2021 Alfa Romeo Julia's and the Stelvio's at Alfa Romeo of Birmingham. Come experience the passion and performance of Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo USA of Birmingham.com, 1837 Grants Mill Road, exit 27, right off of I-459. Nothing to do tonight. Want to bet? It's nonstop gaming action at the Birmingham Race Course Casino. You'll find the latest and greatest games featuring fun bonuses and big jackpots. Wager and win on horse and greyhound races from all over the world. And try your luck on our popular sports parlay promotion. Don't miss your chance to win at the Birmingham Race Course Casino. Located off I-459, exit 31. Must be 21 or older. Truckworks is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the next round's 9 o'clock hour. With locations in Alabama, Mississippi, and the Florida Panhandle, there's a job opportunity for you, no matter where you're located. Visit truckworks.com and click the Join Our Team tab today for more information.
I want my lawn to look better than anybody else's on my street. Ryan Brown here for the next round. Here's one problem. I play a lot of golf, but I'm not a greenskeeper. It's why I depend on my friends at Wayne's. And now is the time to make sure your lawn is properly prepared to grow healthy and lush when spring rolls around. Let the lawn professionals at Wayne's set you up for success as your lawn enters dormancy for the winter season. I depend on them for my lawn. You should too. Get Wayne's treating your lawn now so it looks great in the spring. 866-WAYNES1. That's 866-WAYNES1. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. That's nextroundlive.com. The seasons have switched to fall, and it's time for you to change your game day wardrobe with our friends at the Pants Store. For the ladies, all the game day fashion, including body suits and those booties, plus a wide variety of clear purses that you need for every stadium. For the guys, all the game day accessories, Yeti coolers, Yeti cups, sunglasses, plus your game day wear from Cutter and Buck, Antigua, Taylor and Mick, and the perfect game day hat. It's all at the Pants Store, five locations, Crestline, Leeds, Trustville, Tuscaloosa, or Huntsville, and always online at pantsstore.com. Game day headed to UCLA this week. Uh, Georgia's number one, Cincinnati now number two, then Oklahoma, Alabama, and Ohio State are two through five. Michigan, Penn State, Oklahoma State, Michigan State, and Oregon, your top ten. Oregon at UCLA is where game day will be. It is a light slate (laughs) if you are looking for big, big matchups this weekend. I know we've got a rivalry game with Alabama and Tennessee that – that Tennessee hasn't won since Barack Obama was a senator from Illinois. <laughs> um, that picture floats around every year. Love that. And we've got LSU on the road at Ole Miss, but it is a light slate of uh, top 10 matchups this week. What time does Oregon UCLA kick? I don't have my TV schedule. Did we, uh, did we, did we slough off this weekend? Uh, I, I, it's, it's, I've told people on Twitter I will pass along the television schedule yeah. a little bit later on. Jimmy Party had a, a big out of town weekend. This weekend. <laughs> deep in uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, that game I'll, I'll tell you right now. I think well, it's. So, I think it's a prime time game. It is. If your game day, no, it's two thirty ABC. If your game day, do you just do? <laughs> what? You know what I just noticed. What? You know I've had a bad weekend when I'm doing this cup right here. Look at my handshake. So. <laughs> I just got away. Yeah. You have a full six pack this week. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a professional like you, LT. Uh, you know, watching Oregon again on Friday night, they no are good. good. Their de- their offense is in trouble. And Justin Wilcox, I don't know what the relationship is with Bill Musgrave, his offense coordinator, but that offense is terrible. Yeah, it is. And they, but uh, to their to their defense, not to their defense, but uh, to their fortune, their great fortune, Cal had <laughs> no idea. How to block Kayvon Thibodeau. None no, whatsoever. Yeah. Could not block him the whole game. Thank God he only played a half, right? <laughs> yeah, no, well, that's true. Could not block him the whole half. My but anyway, to me, they're not a top 10 team. I agree. Um, I think Utah is a much better team with Cam Rising. If you watch that game, look, they got dominated in the first half. But how they played in the second half Very good. is how they've played with Rising this year. Utah is a better team than Oregon. But if I would have told you guys that we're rolling into late October – and the top 10 looks like it looks right now. This is insane. Yeah, yeah. it is. But it, it does look like it's starting to funnel back to some familiar teams uh, in the top four minus Cincinnati. Um, best and worst of the weekend is brought to you by our friends at Hemp Hill. We'll get to the phones. Andrew is standing by in Beaumont. Let's bring Andrew in for his best and worst of the weekend. What's up, man? How are you? Good morning, guys. How are you? Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Just, just to clarify, I can't uh, use Jimbo Fisher beating uh, Nick Saban. The first fish to beat Nick Saban is my worst again, right? Uh, no, um, that, that's dated. Okay. All right. Well, uh, my best of the weekend is the two uh, ninth inning uh, walk-off rallies from the Braves. And I got two worst. The first is the officiating in the Auburn-Arkansas game. Auburn got so many favorable calls in that game. It was insane. And then my um, other worst, my main worst, is uh, Mark Stoops. Uh, calling that timeout with four seconds or whatever it was left to uh, get that touchdown. That I mean, was that, that was, I, I really wish a player almost would have gotten hurt on that play just to hold him accountable. I thought that about was that. Just so needless. It was. You're right. It was so needless because Kentucky still got a lot in front of them. They still have an opportunity to go 11 and one, do things that Kentucky teams have never done. Andrew, it, was, Andrew, it was a dumb, dumb call. Andrew, Andrew, are you are you related to Lance? Is this a pla- <laughs> is this a planted no, phone call? No. 
No, I'm a big Georgia fan, so like obviously giving up the two, I didn't want. Yeah, he wasn't worried about point spread. The they just don't want to give up points. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, really, it, it was so petty. Even if I wasn't a fan of either team, and I was watching them, like, what are you doing? I mean, Andrew, let me, let me ask hurt. you this: I was I was obviously pissed off because I had Georgia plus the points. They deserve to cover that, but the play before the touchdown. That was a fumble. And, like, they didn't even look at it. They didn't talk about it. They right. didn't review it. But it should have been clear fumble. Georgia recovered. Game's over. But for Stoops to go down and have a 22-play drive to take their time and to call a petty timeout there to cover, you cannot tell me. No one on this face of the earth can convince me that Stoops didn't know what the number was. He was laughing about it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was smiling yeah. on the sidelines. He just he got his ass whipped and he was laughing he about it. He knew what he was doing. I mean, Stoops knew what he was doing and – I, I got nothing on the game, but I can see how people that did would get upset about that because it was completely needless, and it's a way to get somebody hurt. I mean, there's no doubt. If somebody gets hurt there, you feel like an idiot. You look like an idiot. Yeah, and I'll show you all the text. I got a, a text from somebody in the industry. He said, look, I didn't have a dollar on this, but that is a complete clown move by Stoops. <laughs> somebody well-respected. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is. If, that's, if that is in the back of your mind what you're doing, and I can't think of another reason why you're trying to score in that situation, calling a timeout with four seconds left, unless you know the point spread. People will say, you know, those guys work hard. They deserve an opportunity to, to get some success well, for their hard work, and punching it in against that defense may build on something down the road. But, but the, the other side of that is – if you really wanted to score, don't bleed clock. That was it. You bled clock all the way down the field, and then you just happened to be in scoring position late, and you're like, oh, my gosh, let's call a timeout here. And, and they brought that up. Hey, look, stu they're going to run their normal offense here. Look, you know, they are building upon next week, and, you know, there's no urgency here. That got brought up multiple times on that drive yeah, because, none. look, this game is over, yeah. but you continue to run your offense. What you don't do is when you get a first and goal at the one, you try to punch it in twice, you get held in seven seconds, you're going over there to call your first time out of the drive. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. That's part of best and worst of the weekend as we get going, brought to you by our, our friends at Hemp Hill. Look, uh, when something's not running right, flowing right, draining right, or flushing right, disaster can strike at any moment. I experienced this myself a couple of months ago. First thing I did, pick up the phone, call Hemp Hill Services, Adam, Chad, and the team at Hemp Hill. The only ones I trust to fix it, fix it right the first time. Hemp Hill Services, they do it right, always at a fair price for all of your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs. Trust the name Birmingham is trusted since 1954. Hemp Hill Services, call now, 205-229-2090. Love the blue, and I agree with this. On the Hunter fumble in the Arkansas, saw game the play was over when hunter was picked up off the ground by the arkansas defender i do believe that the play was stopped at that point you can't convince me that when i'm able to pick a guy up in that kind of move and then start making a wrestling move to dump him head first onto the ground and i just let go of the ball to keep from my head hitting the ground to just brace for the move that my progress had not been stopped it was so quick there was like it was uh, the movement was non-stop so the forward progress had not stopped did they blow a whistle yeah the whistle wasn't blown. I, I thought they said they the progress was stopped they, they blew said the whistle. progress was stopped I, yeah. I think they showed a replay there was no blown whistle called steratore yeah. is on there saying guys i didn't hear a whistle i don't see how you rule forward progress is stopped this is clear fumble clear recovery and, SEC's and listen, got had, had some shaky officiating SEC officiating has been bad this season yeah. it has been bad um I know you have defended it as better than most conferences, and in years past it has been. It is not anymore. Oh, it's, it's, just as bad it's still as the better than most conferences. I disagree. It, it, no. is, it is worse than it used to be, but it's better than most conferences. You watch enough football to see there are blown calls every week. I, how many conferences has ha have had to apologize for calls this year publicly? Well, nobody else does it but the SEC. <laughs> nobody else apologizes for it. Okay. All right. But, I mean, that's, no, a, that's but, a big no. turning point. Look, yeah. but, but see, the biggest calls of the weekend, right, that people are going to complain about, that one there, uh -huh. okay, now you've got differing opinions. Now I'm on the minority here on the show, but there are people out there who would agree in the chat room, so there's at least some debate there. On the Matt Corral play, now he he has no he's not no forward progress. He has stopped. He thinks the play is dead. Now there's no whistle there. All right, hundred percent no whistle. Well, in that there's one. no whistle from an official, but you don't know what's blown in the stands. I was at an LSU Auburn game in Baton Rouge where Patrick Nix, I believe, was the quarterback, he was. stopped in the end zone yep. because an LSU fan blew the whistle, blew a whistle that he thought was the official. So he stopped, and that ended up being chaos there. It looked like Matt Corral was not. He, he was not running a play. He stopped 
because he heard something. So he stopped. So how is his forward progress not stopped? He's not. He's got none. He his, stopped. His, it, his, and his, his body language tells you he's not playing anymore. His forward progress is stopped because he's not being tackled. They just ran up and knocked the ball out of his hand. At least the Arkansas guy was being tackled. Yeah, but in in the corral one, it's not an instant ball knocked out, right? First they grab him, and then the ball I comes out. I mean, it's out. pretty quick. I mean, it's maybe not instant, but pretty quick. That's a fumble. And the, the, the problem is the SEC is now using this forward progress was stopped as their bailout when they screw up calls. That's what's happening. Yeah, because they don't even explain it on the field. Yeah. It's they, like after the fact. Like, even after the game is when they explain yeah, it. They, so, on the corral play, you, in your opinion, think that is a fumble touchdown Tennessee. It is a fumble Tennessee. touchdown for Tennessee, and I don't see how you rule it any other and way. And you think that's the case as well. When the guy I, has I stopped don't, the play, he's heard something, and he has stopped. I, I can't help and it his that he heard something down. stopped. My did, did any yeah, officials blow a whistle? It, no, it, that's the only it, way I can it's rule. It's kind of like you guys have seen it like once or twice in the NFL, where the guy gets up and just drops the ball, the receiver, and then defender picks it up and takes it to the house. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's scooping. Like score. the ostrich says, the body language of the officials tells you everything. They ran with the defender. They knew yeah. the officials knew that was a fumble. Yeah, they they always they always run with them, even when well, they know, they're going to rule it differently. They run to let the play play out. Not when they're blowing the whistle. They come in and wave their hands. Nobody yeah. was blowing a whistle in the Tennessee Ole Miss game. Nobody that. They botched that call, and this has become their big bailout, is we ruled forward progress and stopped. And I'm with Lance. When it goes to review, I think from now on, the policy should be the previous play is under review. We ruled forward progress yep. had stopped. Give you us gotta, an explanation. you got to tell us beforehand because it looks too fishy that that's always the explanation coming oh, out when they botch a call. I would agree with that. I mean, I, I just think that. that's the way they got to do it. Because they usually tell us what the ruling is on the field before you go to review. That's correct. We have ruled progress was stopped. Correct. The play is under review. That's right. You know, and our official ruling was before the fumble, progress had stopped. Forward progress had stopped. The unfortunate thing for Tennessee is that that call is going to get overshadowed because of what happens at the end of that game. Right, but that's what Nobody's started talking what about happened that. at the end of the game. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's exactly right. And, and I will totally admit that that call and everything leading up to the the disaster of the fans throwing everything on the field all led up. It was all a, a, a series of events from Lane Kiffin coming to town, the way Lane acts all the time, to those calls, to it being a an opportunity for Tennessee to get a big win. And the way it all ends led to how the fans acted. More on that as we tell you our part of our show being brought to you by our friends at Nichols Outfitters. Camping and outdoor equipment. I was just talking to a friend of mine, guys, that went camping this weekend. Greg from Pell City? No, it's not Greg from Pell City. Another friend of mine. And he says he's going to do it every weekend. I loved it. Camping and outdoor equipment, clothing and footwear for all your outdoorsman activities. Get all of it at Nichols Outfitters in Pelham. Great prices on the brands you know and trust. Always be prepared with Nichols Outfitters. Off exit 242 on I-65 in Pelham. Visit them in store or online at NicholsOutfitters.com. Vols fan 205, I agree with this. As I as I watched the game um, off and on, I was in Starkville, but as I watched the game off and on, I promise you, every time I looked on my screen, I had it sitting beside me. Every time I looked, there was a player down from both sides, but yep. usually it was an Ole Miss player down. The stoppage of plays in that game. Now, listen, I know they ran 100 plays on one side and 70-something plays on another side. There were a lot of plays, but – that many people could not be cramping. That was that was the obvious example. We go back last week when we had the James Franklin Penn State comments after the Iowa game. We all agreed with that pace, the Iowa offense. And again, if you watched them this weekend, pathetic offense. That it didn't seem like James Franklin and Penn State were actually taking dives to to stop clock. Right. Watching Ole Miss, it was beyond obvious. Yeah, there's no doubt they were. Now, now late in that game, both teams were cramping because they had run a thousand plays, both right. of them. Even, I mean, to the point that Hendon Hooker missed the last two plays, and Tennessee, unfortunately for them, had to go with Joe Milton. But you had both sides cramping up. You know, late in that game, I get it, but in that fourth quarter, it did seem like there were a lot of convenient injuries. Now, look, there was one, I can't remember the Ole Miss player's name, they, he stands up and goes right into the locker room. Right. You're not just stopping the clock if the guy gets up and goes right in the locker room. He was going in for an IV. There was no doubt he's cramping. Because I'm not going to take a starter – off the field into the locker room just to stop the clock. Yeah, this right? is going to be something that's going to be addressed in the offseason. I mean, the SEC, I think all of college football, you got to take a look at this. And we talked about it. We don't know what the answer is. Is it the player's got to be out the entire series? Does he got to miss? Uh, does he have to miss an entire quarter? But you've got to do something to address this. Yeah, but you also have to do something about the fans, too. And we'll get into that as well. But there's got to be – that was a huge advantage of having the Tennessee defense the ability to rest oh, yeah. for 20 minutes and then have to get a crucial stop on three plays 
and have all their timeouts to get the ball back. That has to be addressed, too. And we'll do that, and we'll keep the phones open at 205-734-0923 on the Pepsi hotline here. Ed Orgeron will not stay on at LSU. That's your headline. They are parting ways official yesterday at Orgeron with a news conference. You'll hear from him coming up. He'll get almost every penny of his $17 million buyout. Uh, the search is on there. Fines are expected uh, for Tennessee after the fans there delayed play for about 20 minutes. Georgia stays unanimous number one in both polls. And the betting line is out for Alabama and Tennessee. 27 and a half, the tide favored over the Volunteers. Part of our show today being brought to you by the great folks at Odie's. Odie's brings you that news update, and uh, you'll get a little brownie at trivia coming up this Wednesday night. Hey, a Birmingham institution, Odie's located in Crestline Village. Rodney Davis cooking up incredible lunches and dinners for almost 30 years now. Stop in for award-winning wings, delicious burgers, my personal favorite, the Diablo sandwich. Inside or outside on that great patio, you can enjoy this fall weather. Get the ice-cold beer buckets full of the Bud Light. Go see Will Haver and that great staff today, Odie's Tavern, Crestline Village. Hendon Hooker's status, we'll know more today about that. Uh, he couldn't finish the game. Of course, they're coming to play Alabama. That Tennessee team looks a lot better with Hooker at quarterback. We'll see his status later on when uh, we get an update from Josh Heupel and from Nick Saban on the injuries and the lead up to the Tide hosting the Volunteers this week right here on the next round. Follow Brownie on Twitter and Instagram at Ryan Brown Live. Hey, if you're looking for a local agent to handle all of your insurance needs, you need to call my good friend James Anthony at the James Anthony Agency, 205-985-7717. Hoover, Birmingham, Northport, and Tuscaloosa has been in business over 20 years. The James Anthony Agency. What makes Culver's Butterburger one of America's best-loved burgers? I could go on for hours, but all you really need to know is this. Our fresh, never-frozen beef is made from the highest quality cuts for richness and flavor. We press that beef into a very hot grill after you order, and that's how we get that nice caramelized edge. Then we lightly butter and toast the bun for that extra bit of goodness. Mm -mm. That's what makes it a Culver's Butterburger. Let us craft one for you today. Welcome to Delicious. Cool weather is approaching, and now is the time to get your heating system checked out. Excalibur Services excels in all residential heating, cooling, or electrical problems or upgrades you may have in your home. Owned by a Marine veteran, Excalibur uses highly trained HVAC and electrical service experts to ensure the job is done correctly and in a timely manner. If you're looking for a company you can trust to do it right, call Excalibur today at 205-718-8688 or ExcaliburService.com. Excalibur Services, Alabama license number 152. There are few things in life more important than getting a good night's sleep. Ryan Brown here from the next round. I learned that after going to Sleep Outfitters and getting my sleep outfitting. What is an outfitting, you might ask? Well, I simply went to the Sleep Outfitters off Highway 280, sat down and answered just a few short questions, and in moments, they had me laying on a mattress in the store so I could pick it out myself. The delivery was so easy, they set it up right there in my home, and I have an amazing night's sleep every night, and my life is better because of it. You can get that same night's sleep by finding a location at sleepoutfitters.com. And right now, now, you could win a $1,000 MasterCard gift card from Sleep Outfitters. This is a special sweepstakes, and it is just for our listeners. So go to sleepoutfitters.com forward slash Ryan to enter. That's sleepoutfitters.com slash Ryan. This is exclusive to the next round audience, so go try to win. Discover more about Sleep Outfitters and how they can help you complete your personal sleep profile, and you can start sleeping better too, and you can sleep with a $1,000 MasterCard gift card in your pocket now. Sleepoutfitters.com slash Ryan. Want more of the show? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast, The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and the entire Double Down Media podcast family. All at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. The Double Down Media podcast family is live and full of content for all ages. The Mystery Fifth Hour gives the Next Round host a chance to talk about everything but sports. Pour a glass of Bama and bourbon. Our weekly college football conversation while sipping some of the most interesting pours in the bourbon world. And our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call. LT takes off the gloves for an in-depth conversation with stars like Taylor Hicks, presented by Redmond Vodka. Find those podcasts and more by searching The Next Round on Apple, Spotify, and on our website, nextroundlive.com.
For your next round of residential and commercial termite protection, pest prevention, mosquito control, and lawn care services, do what my family does and trust Wayne. Ryan Brown here from the next round. Wayne's may be headquartered here in Birmingham, but they're serving more than 100,000 families and businesses across SEC country, from Tuscaloosa to Auburn and Nashville to Knoxville. And right now, get started with their EnviroPest service for $60 off when you use the code TNR. Get started by calling 866-WAYNES1 and don't forget the code TNR for $60 off your initial EnviroPest service. Football season is now in full swing, and you need to be winning with us at Lance'sLock.com. You get the free lock during the show, but get even more with a subscription at Lance'sLock.com. Get Lance's full slate of college football games every Saturday, as well as Sunday's NFL, all with the same subscription. No complicated or expensive weekend packages. Get everything, all leagues, every day. Only $90 a month breaking down to $3 a day. If you want to win this football season, jump on your phone, tablet, or computer right now and go to lanceslock.com and get on board with us. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. <laughs> Boy, the cold temperatures flipped around, or cool temperatures flipped around for Saturday. I was actually out at dinner with Maggie on Friday night and did not realize that there was going to be a temperature change. She goes, are you, do we need to go to the, the storage area and pull out some winter clothing? I said, what are you talking about? It's beautiful weather today. It's going to continue through the weekend. She goes, honey, the high is going to be in the 60s. It'll be 50s during the game you're going to be at tomorrow night. Love I was like, it. are you kidding me? And so we went and shopped right after dinner and bought a little jacket and, and some boots. Man, I, I don't know. Some boots. I, I've always said I'm really, really yeah. soft when it comes to the cold, but me. I decided to watch game two of uh, Dodgers Braves last night, NLCS, outside last night. Uh-huh. And it, it was only like 50 degrees, but I, I was freezing. Yeah, I don't like cold weather either. I was cold. You know, when Brown and I were doing the Saturday breakout over at Davis Wade Stadium, tell. all that to tell you, it's it's gift buying season, whether you're buying for new weather <laughs> or for the holidays. I have no <laughs> idea where we were going yeah. with that. But Our friends at Bromberg's literally told you. <laughs> Family owned and operated since 1836. Bromberg's, they have established that solid reputation as a fine purveyor of quality diamonds as well as jewelry, timepieces, and gifts. Bromberg's also has an extensive giftware department to service the registries of brides and grooms in the Birmingham area. Go see our friends at Bromberg's, two locations, Mountain Brook and the Summit. You can also, check out their online store today. Go to Bromberg's.com. More of the Hemp Hill Best and Worst of the Weekend. Let's go to Miles, who is over in Pell City. What's up, Miles? How are you? I'm good, guys. Um, I actually heard an explanation of why they didn't call the fumble in the Auburn game. Okay. And let me before you say that, Miles, and I wanted to say this earlier, that was not the only missed call. They missed calls against Auburn, too. The caller earlier was talking about Auburn getting all the calls. I thought that... No, 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 no. I just want to be abundantly clear. The officiating was bad on both sides of yes. that game. And, and so. what, what ultimately lost Arkansas the game, in my opinion, was Kendall Brown's play calling it in was the bad. second half. And Bo Nix was fantastic. And Bo Nix was great. But go ahead, Miles. Um, what they called was the fact that he had been picked up and was off his feet and then turned over. He became a defenseless player. And uh, because of that, they didn't call the fumble. How how does that negate a fumble? Like so, when you the minute you become a defenseless player, the play's over. <laughs> that doesn't happen in live action. It, well, it was sort of an NFL ex- explanation because they said he needed both hands to protect his neck. Huh. Is what the explanation was, or it would have been a flagrant defensive. Um, well, boy, they did a bad true. job of explaining that. Yeah, I mean, you got to explain that over the uh, microphone if that's the way you're going to call this. You and can't. I find it hard to believe, and I don't know about you, Brown, I find it hard to believe with them watching in live time that's exactly what they were yeah. thinking. But for all the praise that the Arkansas coaching staff has gotten throughout the year, this is one that, you know, if you compare the Brian Hartson coaching staff and the Arkansas coaching staff. Oh, they got out coached. Advantage Auburn in oh, that one. In, yeah, in that one, I thought Mike Bobo did a great job. Um, you know, I 
Again, Kendall Browse, the play calling first down. And Aaron Murray brought this up. They just pissed away first downs after first downs. I mean, that's what they were doing. It was like, we're, we're just going to see what we can do on second and third down because we're giving you first downs. Yeah. But Bo Nix played, you brought it up earlier in the show, to me, the best game he's played is an Auburn Tiger. Well, it I starts he was with that good. He made one mistake all day. Yeah, and, and that was you know, like a, a long punt at that point, the long interception. But the throw to Demetrius Robertson, the 70-plus yard touchdown, his I, best deep ball but of I his loved career. Bobo yep. taking that shot. You yeah, know, I agree. Right after Arkansas gets held on fourth down, go up top, take that shot. And, and you, you were down three. You got the defensive touchdown. And then you get to stop, and then you call, dial up the deep ball yeah, that has been sudden change. has been a yep. problem That's for, right. for Bo Nix connecting on those deep throws. And three seconds completely changed everything in that game for Arkansas. And, and, and again, back to the, the punt, man. The, the punt by Oscar Chapman to pin Arkansas. And then the play calling out of the end zone for, for Kendall Browse, I thought was really bad. Put K.J. Jefferson in a bad situation. And Derek Hall... Big play there. But the three minutes, three seconds, the two touchdowns by Auburn completely flipped that but game. you know what's weird? You don't see a lot of teams overcome this. It's the old coaching axiom. You don't want to give up points in the last four minutes of the half or the first four minutes of the half, right? Try to own the middle eight. And Arkansas owned those, those middle eight. Uh, Auburn gave up both. Yeah. And it's it when you're fairly close teams, it's kind of hard to overcome those types of scores. Yeah, I, I thought that was really a positive performance for Auburn – beyond Bo Nix I mean that's that's one of those games against a ranked team on the road that Brian Hartson can start to build on um and now a bye week and then you sort of suit up and ready to go for the for the rest of the way I thought you had enough running early on from Tank Bigsby to sort of the the running rushing numbers were not great at the end but you had enough running early on, I thought, from Tank Bigsby to sort of make that a threat again, and you hadn't had that in a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, Bigsby was involved, you know, had only went 68 yards, but had 18 touches, had the touchdown. If you would have told me before the game that Arkansas was going to outgain Ar- um, Auburn by almost 100 yards on the ground, I would have said Arkansas probably wins this game. Yeah. But Bo was that good. Best and worst of the weekend brought to you by our friends at Hemp Hill. Uh, we do this every Monday to start off our show. Yeah, if something's not running right, flowing right, draining right, or flushing right, you need to call Hemp Hill Services. Trust the name. Birmingham is trusted since 1954. Call 205-229-2090. That's 205-229-2090. Alabama gets a bounce back game. And, boy, Mississippi State and Mike Leach, if you're a State fan and you love him, you've got to at least admit with that offense, they've got to figure out how to do something different against Alabama because in two tries now, Alabama's defensive coaching staff has not been fooled one bit by what the Pirate tries to do. Uh, three field goals in two years is not going to beat Alabama ever and they're going to have to start running the ball at some point or do something different if they're going to beat a team like Alabama in Mike Leach's time at Mississippi State that was a pretty dominant defensive performance by Alabama and it did it kind of looked bend but don't break early on but Lance for them to keep that offense under 300 yards to have the two turnovers one of which was the pick six um, to sack seven times the Mississippi State quarterback, including four um, by what might be the best defensive player in the country right now. That was a dominant defensive performance this Look, day and I, I know we had Will Anderson. We, we showed him from the podium last yeah. week and how angry he was. He played that but way. If, but if I'm an Alabama fan, I'm so upset going back to last week because – the A&M offensive line, I don't know if it's as good as Mississippi State's offensive line. I think they're probably comparable. But for that Alabama defense to come out and get the seven sacks and they were held sackless the week before, it just makes no sense. We, we gave you Will Anderson um, going into the game. Here's Will Anderson after the game. Now, the, the, a lot of Alabama players are up here, but Will is the guy that will be doing the talking <laughs> in the post-game scenario. Everybody's trying to get back on the team bus quick, so let's do a, just a mass post-game interview. But in person in Starville, here's Will Anderson. I think we were all locked in. We were all focused. And I know like, most of my interviews have been saying, like, football has to be the most important thing. And I think definitely this week football was the most important thing, and we just didn't want that feeling that we felt last week. Yeah, 
uh, speaking for the group there, Man. Will Anderson, they they that was an answer. And no, I know Mississippi State wasn't threatening to be a playoff team or a top 10, 25 team, but that was an answer. Uh, uh, look, th- th- that type of leadership, first of all, from a sophomore is pretty incredible to think that that guy is not even an upperclassman and he's giving you that type of leadership. I mean, that guy is uh, we've said it a million times. Everybody says it, he's unblockable. But I thought John Mechie played by far his best game. I agree. Toa Toa was really good. I agree. The offensive line was improved. Yep. I mean, that looked the part of a team that could win a national yeah, championship. Yeah. I mean, and, and Bryce Young and I mentioned this in our breakout, and I'll give you a chance to talk about it, but he he surprising numbers, four touchdowns, no interceptions, well over 300 yards passing. It just looks so effortless yeah. in doing it. That was the smoothest 20 of 28 for 348 and four touchdowns you'll ever see. I mean, it just didn't – like you didn't watch that game thinking Bryce Young is lighting this defense up. And you look at the numbers at the end, and you're like, man, Bryce Young kind of lit that defense up a little bit, didn't yeah. he? And – I mean, there were some long catch and runs, the matchy catch and run to start the game for the touchdown, the Jamison Williams catch and run right out of the locker room in the second half. Holden. The Brian Robinson catch and run. You know, there were some longer catch and runs. It's not like they were just torching them deep the whole game. But boy, Bryce Young, man, it's hard to ask him to play better than he played Saturday night. Oh, and night. so good on third downs. I mean, yeah. Robin was 12 of 16 on third downs. Yeah, and I, and I think Bryce Young, and you said the offensive line protection was better. Uh, it was better. It, it still has a long way to go. But he had some Kyler Murray moments. Um, but I mean, there, there, there were just a couple where, yeah. you know, he, he with his feet, he can get some things done. He does. And I think he did it at Texas A&M. He continues to bail out that offensive line. You know, if you're if you're a cup half empty guy, the, the right side of that line is still a swinging gate at times. At times. And uh, there are some guys who are coming in. Uh, on both sides occasionally untouched and he may make some miss and he keeps it alive tremendous performance from Bryce I'll tell you who saves you time and time again though is Brian Robinson yes on blitz pickup that guy stones people and he he saved his quarterback several times on Saturday night so a big win for Alabama they're up to number four in the rankings Georgia Cincinnati Oklahoma Alabama and Ohio State your top five we had 11 6-0 Six and zero winners in our Buffalo Wild Wings pick six. Eleven of you went six and zero. We are now at sixty five entries into our Week Thirteen Championship round, and uh, that is a an impressive group. But you still got time to get in. We'll do the pick six coming up online next round live dot com. Coming up again on Friday. This part of the show been brought to you has been brought to you by our friends at Mortgage Right. You can get a mortgage all over the college football map. Uh, yes, we appreciate everything our friends at Mortgage Right do. It's the American dream to buy your own home. Mortgage Right wants to make that dream a reality. With branches across the country, Mortgage Right has all of the resources of a nationwide organization while maintaining the charm of a local lender. Mortgage Right makes home buying simple. If you're looking for a quick and caring mortgage experience, Mortgage Right is your go to lender. Visit mortgageright.com slash TNR to get started. NMLS 2239 equal housing lender. All right, Pepsi Hotline's open for you 205 734 0923. Chat in the uh, comments in the chat room, also on Twitter at Next Round Live. We've got a poll question out about who the next coach at LSU will be. We'll jump into that conversation when the next round returns. Follow Dunaway on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Dunaway. There's not a better place to watch the big games with a great atmosphere than right there at Walk-Ons, Highway 280 and 119, and coming soon near the Hoover Met. The Walk-Ons Happy Hour is 2 to 6, Monday through Friday. $5 moonshine swirls, $5 house pours, and half-price appetizers. You can download the Walk-Ons mobile app for an easy take-home experience for the family. Authentic, mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine, prepared fresh from scratch. It's game day with a taste of Louisiana at Walk-Ons. How do you know you're in a community, not just a town? Well, strangers smile as they walk by. They refill your coffee without you asking. And when you ask directions, people offer to walk you there. Communities give more. The way you know when you walk into First Bank that you are in a real community bank. Great products, direct access to your local bankers, and relationships that can last a lifetime. Don't just have an account. Have a community with First Bank. Member FDIC. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. Hi, this is Wes McClooney, owner of the New Balance Birmingham store. Today I have some tips on how to stay healthy. Number one, get some cardio. Two, get a proper fitting on your shoes to get the most out of that cardio. 
Our in-store fit specialists will match your feet with the perfect New Balance shoe so you get the perfect fit. Come see us at the New Balance Birmingham store, located on Highway 280 next to Chick-fil-A. Experience the difference a custom fit makes today at New Balance Birmingham. Truckworks is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the next round's 9 o'clock hour. With locations in Alabama, Mississippi, and the Florida Panhandle, there's a job opportunity for you, no matter where you're located. Visit truckworks.com and click the Join Our Team tab today for more information. Want more of the next round? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast. The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and the entire Double Down Media podcast family. All at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. Start your day online at nextroundlive.com. Get all the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. And it's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. Iron Mountain Construction is an industrial services company with over 500 people available for your situation and needs. They are committed to safely supporting the operations of your facility through their execution of quality-driven maintenance services and on-time, on-budget small capital construction work. And they offer support with plumbers, pipe fitters, millwrights, iron workers, laborers, operators, and more. Call the office of Iron Mountain Construction, 205 781 1170 for Jeremy Purvis and Iron Mountain Construction. When it came to furnishing the new facilities here at the next round, there was only one call we made, and that was to Richie Hamer at Business Interiors right here in Birmingham. Richie and Business Interiors have a true passion for interiors and the talent to bring the client's vision to life. Through their vast selection of great designer furniture, Richie and BI will stop at nothing to make the experience great for the client. Repeat clients trust Richie and Business Interiors because he does what he says and the guys will deliver on their promises. Leave it to Richie and Business Interiors to incorporate creativity into every space in your corporate setting to set up an appointment. Call Richie today. 205-837-2497. That's 205-837-2497. Or just go visit Richie at the BI Showroom today. They're located 2309 5th Avenue South in Birmingham. Again, the entire studios here at the next round furnished by our friends at Business Interiors. Go see them today, 5th Avenue South in Birmingham. How do you know you're in a community, not just a town? Well, strangers smile as they walk by. They refill your coffee without you asking. And when you ask directions, people offer to walk you there. Communities give more. The way you know when you walk into First Bank that you are in a real community bank. Great products, direct access to your local bankers, and relationships that can last a lifetime. Don't just have an account. Have a community with First Bank. Member FDIC. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. All right, second hour of the show as we... (laughs) Uh, John, uh, uh, hashtag never Dabo. I guess he does not want the Dabo Sweeney uh, show coming to Baton Rouge. Hashtag never Dabo. Well, that'd be a shocking move right there. Oh, shocking. It would be. It would be. But if it's ever going to happen, this is the kind of year it would happen, right? I was completely wrong, Brown, Friday on Clemson. I thought Clemson uh, off of a bye would come back and Tony Elliott's offense would show us something. DJ is not good. The offensive line is awful. Well, if They're Dino, ba- if, if Dino Babers knew how a clock worked, that, that's a potentially even a different outcome. Oh, for yeah. Syracuse. I mean, he was awful at the end of that game. I don't know what Dino Babers was doing. But, but they've got they've got more losses coming. Yeah, I, I was watching, so watching that game, and I thought the exact same thing. What was he doing? Yeah. Like, why do you – what was that field goal, 47 yards? Yeah. It's fourth and one. Yep. The, the higher percentage play in college on fourth and one is trying to pick it up rather than hand it to a kicker. Now, in the NFL, it's a different game. But even even if you're not – you don't call timeout to leave them 30-something exactly. seconds. If you're going to kick the field goal, you run the clock down. I know. It, did, it made no sense yeah. why he was doing like that. Like he called timeout to give them more time if we make the if kick. If we make the kick yeah. so that they could get back a field goal. Now, with their offense, there's no way they're going to do it. But still, why even give them the you, opportunity? You know, the crazy thing is the best player on the field – was a Syracuse player, Sean Tucker. That freshman running back was the yeah. best player on the field. Yeah. I don't know how that happens. Uh, interesting weekend of college football. We'll react to all of that. But, of course, one of the big stories is off the field with uh, Ed Orgeron. Um, no longer 
being retained as the coach at LSU for 2022. He will coach the remainder of the season. That is one of the questions we have right now, a Cowan Equipment poll question. Cowan Equipment, proud to partner with the next round on our new venture. Would love the opportunity to partner with your company for your heavy equipment needs. Visit us. Go to Cowan.com to find out more about how we can be your heavy equipment solution from rental and new equipment sales to superior service and parts. Again, for more information, Cowan.com. It's a pretty simple question. Um, Who do you want or who do you think will be the next coach? We throw three candidates out. Um, that came from an interesting list from Bruce Feldman at the Athletic. But Bruce gives you a couple, and then he throws six other names out. And uh, the list we throw out, Brown, includes um, Jimbo Fisher, uh-huh. who has a tie with the AD. Uh, it has Mel Tucker, uh-huh. uh, who has a long tie Lance's guy. with LSU and with Baton Rouge and with Nick Saban during his time there. And then we've got uh, Dave Aranda, uh-huh. who was there for the national championship. Now they turned around at Baylor. They're having a good season. And then we have Other, which is everybody else on the planet. That is correct. Right now, Dave Aranda leads this at 36%. Yeah, I know a couple of guys that probably are pulling for Aranda to you get this think? job. Uh, Mel Tucker at 17%, which would be a heck of a recovery for this guy. I, I think it shows you, though, the difference a year makes. Dave Aranda, and, and I'll give him a lot of credit They've to go out and get Jeff Grimes. That was the hire of the offseason, possibly, because Baylor's offense is night and day from what we saw last year. Yep. And to me, it was just the defensive coach taking this over. He's a little overwhelmed. I don't know if this thing's going to work out. You get the right coaches in place. Going back to Ed Orgeron in 2019, he had the right coordinators. Yeah, other is at 34%. Now, I will say this. I think of the others, and this is unscientific, James Franklin probably is the most mentioned name. We did get a lot of James Franklin yeah. in there. Got a lot of Billy Napier yeah. in there. Um, and there were some other coaches who were mentioned, a lot of Lane Kiffin in there. If I said right now you give me three names that you think – you could tab the LSU coach. If I if I said Lance, three huh. names, can you can you give me a three game a three name scale to get the next coach? This is an old school statement. Lance used to do this to you to yeah. try to get a well, statement. I'm not doing it for a state because I don't think yeah. I can do it. I don't think I can either. Um, I think I know the direction that I might go if I'm LSU, and it's it's kind of the same pool that I would go if I'm USC. Because I wouldn't go directly Billy Napier because he's in the state of Louisiana and he's got SEC, SEC ties. I would go some different directions. Here is, here is the concern or maybe the desire, depending on which side of the, the street you're on, of an LSU fan. I've seen this happen many, many times in college football, a lot in Alabama when they were going through a lot of coaches. For a period of time, you wanted a guy who had t- ties to Bear Bryant, Right. Right. And then you went through a period of time where you wanted somebody who had no tie to Alabama at all. And you ended up finding it, you know, the success with Nick Saban, Mm -hmm. who had success and you just paid and and got the best coach available. There are a lot of people who will instantly say, we want to go back to the 2019 national championship year and let's bring in Brady. Um, And then, as you saw Mark earlier, don't want, don't want Brady. Don't want to go back to Brady or Aranda. Well, I mean, it's it's at least Aranda's been a head coach. But Aranda is another part that takes you back to 2019, and then there will still be some that will be like, let's go back, let's go. Back. Nick Saban is the one that really got us going. Let's go back with Saban ties, and that's where you bring in Mel Tucker, who was right. there on that staff, Jimbo Fisher, who was there on that staff, and Billy Napier, well, who is of the Nick yeah. Saban kind of philosophy of doing things. That's where that group comes in. Let me ask you this. All right, let, let, this is the way I always like to do it. If Mel Tucker had zero connections to Nick Saban or LSU, based on what he's done right now, would you consider him for this job? I, I don't think so. Okay, then you shouldn't hire him. If Dave Aranda had never set foot in Baton Rouge, would you consider him nope. for this job? Then you shouldn't I hire don't him. think so. Um, so. So there's two that if I were running the show, I wouldn't hire because I think you ought to do your hires based on, I'm, I think this guy's a great coach. I don't care if he ever coached in my place. He's a great coach. Now, that aside, you ask, give me some names that will be in there. This is hard to do. I mean, yeah. like, I would throw Mario Cristobal's name out and would say that I think LSU probably will at least test those waters, and but, it wouldn't shock me if Cristobal took the job. But if I asked you, would, great hire. would you hire Mario Cristobal um, if he had no ties to Nick Saban in the yes. SEC? Yeah, you I would? mean, he's been at Oregon. He's won a conference championship. No, 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 no. They look like really, really shaky. What's what, uh, if they no, lost Friday night? Are people talking? You've been talking about Mario. Let Cristobal me tell, let me back up real quick. Beep, beep, beep. I wouldn't hire Mario Cristobal. 
But if I did, it has less to do with the Saban ties. I mean, the guy has gone and has wanted another program, do right? You- at, at a at a big program. Now I wouldn't hire him. I don't. Y'all know how I feel about Cristobal. I don't have to say it again. He ha- he hasn't won at an elite level though at Oregon. No, he has not. And if I'm LSU, that's why this, I wouldn't hire him. At this move, I'm. I think I'm gonna at least shoot for an elite coach. Okay, well, give me elite coaches. Yeah, that's the problem. I'll tell you who I would aim at if I were Scott Woodward. Uh, I, well, I would pick, we'll, we'll write, you, you write it down because you know who I'm gonna say. No, I don't. I would pick up the phone. I would have called him yesterday. And I, even if he told me no, I wouldn't take no for an answer. I would go try to hire Brian Kelly from Notre Dame. I think he's the best coach, you, the best proven coach you could go get for this job. I, I would try to get Chris Peterson out of retirement. I really would. You know what scares me, Lance, about him was, you know, the, the talk about him leaving Boise and going to Seattle was he just wasn't comfortable with the atmosphere. You know, he liked the Boise spotlight. and being yeah. small and did not like the did not like the spotlight. Boy, if Washington and, was the spotlight, and, what is LSU? Let yeah. me tell you, my yeah. friend. But, but maybe he's gotten more comfortable being on the set of Fox. You know, I don't know. Um, I, I just at least would make that call. Yeah, James Franklin's going to be a popular call I here. I don't get it. I don't like it. He's going to be popular with USC, too. And, and I guess that's part of the discussion. Do you feel like USC and LSU – are to use a it phrase from be. John Parker Wilson, are they fishing in the same honey hole? Here's, where, here's the direction <laughs> I wish USC would go. Now, Chris Peterson would be the obvious, but Chris Peterson's former quarterback. Watching Kellen Moore call plays for Dak Prescott, Kellen Moore is 32 years old. I know he's never run a program before. Right. As an NFL head coach next year, probably. He, he might be. There's a good shot that he will be, and they brought that up on the broadcast. This guy's not going to be offense coordinator much longer at all. Nope. But I would still give him the opportunity. Uh, the way he could relate to players – you know, he was at Boise forever. He's one of the, the best college quarterbacks we've ever seen. I just think he would be a slam dunk. I, I, I wouldn't really put it past, honestly. I wouldn't put it past Jerry Jones if he thought he was going to lose him to another place. Oh, get rid of Mike McCarthy. Firing McCarthy and hiring Kellen Moore. I mean, he may be the Dallas Cowboys well, well, coach. Georgia Frontier did it when the Rams won a Super Bowl. They're only Super Bowl in 99. They pushed Vermeil out. They let yeah, him retire. And got right. Because Mike March was going to take off. And, right. he, and he was the guy who created the, the, yeah. the offense, right? Yeah. But and he. It proved a little too overwhelming for Marts. Yeah, in this, the long that run. would not blow me away that Jerry but Jones I could see that at all. Too, yeah. And if I can be the Dallas Cowboys head coach, forget any other job. I'm going to keep that job. But would you guys take a look at Kellen Moore? I would. I think Kellen Moore is a really good offensive coordinator in the NFL. I really like Kellen Moore as a future I head coach too. somewhere. But my gut tells me he's going to be an NFL head coach, and that's where he's going to stay. But you know, if it's LSU or USC, you might not be able to yeah. say no to that. But what are what are what are those jobs you take over typically in the NFL? Are you going to have the right quarterback? And he knows that. Like right now, Kellen Moore, if he could keep the Dallas job, you're right i've got dak prescott i've got a top five quarterback for the next 10 years yeah. but if i take one of these crap jobs where somebody just got fired i don't know the quarterback oh, i wonder what he does with Tua tongue of Aloha next year no i very i very easily could see mccarthy being pushed out yeah if you're and, gonna lose him. and kellen right. moore it takes over that program there and i don't really blame jerry for that because in the nfl and this is coming from a guy that's got a defensive background a guy as a head coach i think you're better off in the nfl having a hot offensive guy and here's why if you hire a defensive guy like my team did and you happen across a really good offensive coordinator, what happens to him? He gets a job and you lose your offense. If you have the hot offensive guy as your head coach, you always keep that offense. See what I'm saying? Yes. That's, that's, and that, Andy Reid, wherever that's right. he's been. Yes. That's why Sean McVay, that's why I like having a hot offensive guy as a head coach. That aside, if I'm LSU, I go try to get Brian Kelly. I think Brian Kelly is an elite coach. You said go get an elite coach. And when we name elite coaches, they are Nick Saban. You're not getting him. Dabo Swinney, I, I don't getting. know why Dabo would make that move. I don't know why. Um, Lincoln Riley, you're not Lincoln getting Lincoln Riley, him. you're not likely to get him. He's about to come to your conference. Well, Ryan Day, you're not likely to get him. Can we go back to just Dabo for a second? Sure. Okay. Sell me on this. Sell me on Dabo. No, I'm not, I'm not selling you on Dabo because I, I don't think it's a realistic possibility. Unless, I mean, we saw Steve Spurrier leave Florida. And I don't know, I, you know, Clemson has been so far off the radar this year that I don't know what the bubbling is up there. But if somewhere along the way Dabo has gotten his feelings hurt, I mean, I don't know how Clemson fans are reacting or Clemson boosters. I, I think they're are, probably fine. I mean, if, the, if there are Clemson boosters who have given Dabo any grief at all, and I don't think they have either. Yeah. But if you've got any of that that happened to Spurrier at the end at Florida, and I don't think the AD would do it at Clemson either, but, I mean, he has, he has built that program 
into what it is, and it's never been as good as it is under Dabo Sweeney, if, the, if he's catching any grief at all about having a stagnant offense and being 4-2 and two and outside of the top 25 right now, that's the only way you lose a guy like there, Dabo there Sweeney. Was a, he says, are you guys kidding me? Let me show you something. But, but the other side of that, Jim, and I, I see what you're saying there, but the other side is I look at LSU and I say, on the flip side of that coin, their last two coaches have won national championships, and both of them have been fired. One of them within 19 well, months of I was it. going to bring this up, and it's something that Clay Travis brought up last week on the show. The, the sentence that was uttered on this show is the reason Dabo won't take the job. Which is? Well, Dabo did something that Clemson's never done. Danny Ford did it one year, but Dabo has been able to sustain that. Ed Orgeron won a national championship. Les Miles won a national championship. What does Dabo prove by going to LSU and winning a national championship? Absolutely nothing. Right. And, and, you know, I, I believe in my, in my heart that, you know, Dabo is so loyal to Clemson and what he's built that he will never leave there. I sort of got the same feeling when we talked with Dave Aranda the last time we had him on our show that he was very thankful to the Baylor people for giving him a chance to be their head coach. And one year it was not very good. Now it has turned in to, you know, a positive situation at Baylor. He's got him number 20 in the rankings coming off a nice win. You know, who knows what the rest of the season looks like. I don't see Dave Aranda being the kind of guy that would pack up and leave Waco that quick. Well, I think he's been at LSU though, and he knows how good that can be. I mean, he saw it at its peak in 2019. Mel Tucker would leave his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> just burn it i'm not even coming, he really I'm not even coming back for it um <laughs> coach you want us to send the couch nope 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 i'm good I, I, I mean i'm with you i get what you're saying about aranda but he has seen how good it can be at lsu and he's got to know in his heart of hearts how tough it's going to be to sustain this and wait yeah up. and if yeah. he's going to take the job he better take it because they might be six and four before you can blink they might yeah. lose three consecutive games coming up do you guys have a feeling though that scott woodward has already got his guy in place yeah that's why this happens the way it happens yeah if you're if you're going to shell out 17 million dollars you're going to pay in full to get rid of orgeron yep you get the feeling this is already a done deal and it must be somebody really impressive that you're able to get the boosters to say Oh, yeah, we'll go ahead and pay him. If we're getting that guy, we'll go ahead and pay the $17 million. Yeah. Let's roll. I think y'all are on to something with Brian Kelly, though. I mean, that's that's, go after. I, I would give it yep. a shot because Brian Kelly, with a lesser athlete, has been able to play at an elite if, level. If I'm Scott Woodward, here's my sill. You be Brian Kelly, I'll be Scott Woodward. Brian? I, I never like the roles you give me. Do you want to be Brian Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need a better, I need a better agent. Hold uh, on, let me get my face, Brian Kelly red. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, listen. <laughs> Don't look at me that way, Brian. Listen to me, Brian. We think you're an elite coach. and Thank you. I do too. And we've seen what you've done here at Notre Dame. Brian, this is not the Notre Dame it used to be. You've done a phenomenal job here. You've had them in the playoffs twice. You played Alabama for the national championship. We think you've taken Notre Dame as far as you can take it. Look at the last two idiots we've had, and they both won national championships. Brian, you're going to be – we haven't had an elite coach since Nick Saban – You'll make the people here forget about Nick Saban. That's what we think of you. Um, do we have to play Nick Saban? Because I've done Not that. for long. He's I've old. Done, I've yeah. done that a couple of times. You, 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 you had to worry about comments about the death penalty. That's we, right. We've got a coach who just paid $17 million. Yeah. yeah. So let me, let me tell you a couple of things that have, that have been thrown out there about this yeah, guy. Our, our coach we just was, care about football. Just our, win games. Our coach was talking about burying fans in a uh, nice little fishing hole in the bayou, and everybody laughed. You, you, were, you were talking about the death penalty. People wanted to fire you. Yeah, they get mad when you get cussed on the sidelines. Yes. I mean, I, I think it would be an easy sell to Brian Kelly. I really do. I think it'd be an easy sell. Because I think Brian Kelly is smart enough to know I have recruited as well as I can here, and I have coached as well as I can here, and it does me really well in the regular season. But when I run up against the Alabamas and Clemsons and – you know, the elite teams of the world, I can't compete. Yep. He doesn't I can't have compete. the Jimmy and Joes. That's You're right. exactly he, right. He's almost maxed out. You know, a lot of coaches have left elite college jobs to go to the NFL because it's the NFL. I think now the SEC is such a brand that a lot of coaches that have never coached there want to coach there to well, give that a shot. Let me ask you a question about that after you tell me about our friends at, at Redmont Vodka. Redmont Vodka Vulcan, Vulcan Gin. It's an interesting uh, toast of a question I got for you. Uh, locally owned and <laughs> operated. Uh, Redmont Vodka, their aim, clarity, and taste, color, and smell. It is vodka perfection. Redmont Vodka made from corn, which not only makes it gluten-free, also provides that smooth finish that doesn't have the harsh aftertaste. Eight times distilled, available at your local package and ABC stores. Pick up a bottle today. Your fastest growing distillery in Alabama is Redmont. I, I think LSU 
LSU is a better job than USC is. But oh yeah, but what you just said, Lance, LSU is about it's already tough with Alabama and Georgia and all of all of all of the teams, and now we're adding Oklahoma and Texas to this league. If I go to USC, I can recruit all the Southern California five stars to come to my brand at USC and my path to whatever playoff we're going to have, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, wherever we're going, is a lot easier. And my chance of being fired at USC is small compared to a guy who just won 74% of his games in a national championship two years ago. Why do I want the headache of going to the SEC where I've got to face Nick Saban for a year, two, five more years, where I've got to face – you know, Auburn and Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss and and Jimbo at Texas A&M, and now here comes Oklahoma and Texas. Why do I want a Georgia at Kirby? Why do I want all of that? Why do I want, Why would I not just take USC? Yeah, the only thing I would say is, is USC really committed to you? Are they committed to football? And I don't know if they are. And that Pac-12 conference is a disaster. Yeah, you probably could own that, but look, you're an elite coach. Do yourself – the justice of going in and playing and coaching against the best. And that's what you would do in the SEC. You could dominate the Pac-12, but the Pac-12 is still the Pac-12. And by the way, Pete Carroll could let you know. He could lose one game, and they were out of the college football playoff, not college football playoff, but the BCS National Championship game twice for losing one game. That can happen in the Pac-12. SEC, you lose a game, you still get in. It's a good point, and Brian Kelly will, uh, will be a name that a lot of people will toss around, but the way this search is – there's a lot of people that will want this job. That's how good this Baton Rouge opening is going to be. It's odd that Ed's going to coach the rest of the way out, but it's sort of his farewell song. And I, I expect him to to not fran it up like we always used to say about Dennis Franchoni at the end of his uh, Alabama tenure before he went to Texas A&M. I expect Ed Orgeron to be all blood and guts for his, his Bengal Tigers down the stretch here. I don't know what to expect. I think it's a bad idea personally. Yeah, well, we'll see how it plays out. But LSU is looking for, or they already have their man, and they're making a change in 2022. All right, 20 after the hour. Bo Nix coming up at the top to start hour number three, coming off his best road performance, a win for Auburn. They get a bye week now. And then, uh, of course, Nick Saban's news conference at 12 noon. We'll uh, get ready to talk Alabama and Tennessee, part of a uh, light slate coming up in college football. we got a game tonight in the NFL, Bills and Titans. A uh, little note on the Bills and Titans after Brownie tells us about the great folks at Alabama Power. You know, for more than a century, Alabama Power and its employees have served our state. But that's not all. Alabama Power and the Alabama Power Foundation support local nonprofits that are working to improve quality of life all across the state. Learn more at alabamapower.com slash community. Alabama Power. Power for a better Alabama. Derek Henry trying for a personal record tonight. He has four straight games with 100 or more rushing yards. That's his longest streak ever. He's never gone five straight of 100 or more yards. Bills and Titans tonight. Do you have an early lean or a lock on that? Um, I do have an early lean on this. Yeah. Do you think he gets 100-plus yards? I do. I I lean he does. I mean, I'm I'm so torn on this game because you go back to last year. Do you guys remember they played this on a Tuesday night? Yes. Oh, that's right, because of COVID. And the Bills got walked off the field. They lost 42-16. So Sean McDermott continues to preach this redemption tour. And I still believe, even though Arizona won yesterday, the Bills are the best team in the NFL. Now they could easily lose tonight's game. But they had a point to prove last week in Kansas City. I think they're going to try to prove a point tonight in in Nashville against Tennessee Titans just because they were embarrassed last year. Mm. So uh, the Bills tonight against the Titans and maybe part of a redemption tour continuing 7:15 on ESPN baseball continues Astros and Red Sox series tied at one tonight just after seven on FS1 the Braves up two games to zero and they are off until Tuesday a Tuesday afternoon game and you're up to date on the headlines right here on the next round follow the next round on Twitter Instagram and Facebook at next round live There's not a better place to watch the big games with a great atmosphere than right there at Walk-Ons, Highway 280 and 119, and coming soon near the Hoover Met. The Walk-Ons Happy Hour is 2 to 6, Monday through Friday. $5 moonshine swirls, $5 house pours, and half-price appetizers. You can download the Walk-Ons mobile app for an easy take-home experience for the family. Authentic, mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine, prepared fresh from scratch. It's game day with a taste of Louisiana at Walk-Ons. 
Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. You've heard me for years talk about our friends at Bromberg's Jewelers, and we welcome you to stop by and see that great customer service at the Mountain Brook and Summit locations. But we'd also love for you to check out their new online shop. They've got plenty to choose from. Great gifts, big and small. Available online, they've got David Yurman, Tudor Watches, Select Diamond and Gemstone Jewelry, William Henry, seasonal and favorite giftware items and baby gifts as well. They've even got an online sale section. For more information, Bromberg's.com. This hour of the next round is brought to you by Excalibur Services, a name you can trust when it comes to residential heating, AC, and electrical services. Excalibur is growing and looking for exceptional HVAC techs, plumbers, and electricians. 205-718-8688. Alabama license number 15214. Greystone Chiropractic and their brand new facility in Tattersall Park is the premier family wellness office in Birmingham. Dr. Lee Goldenberg is committed to helping families unleash their unlimited healing potential naturally in a beautiful and stress-free environment. Voted best in Birmingham three years in a row, nominated for Shelby County Healthcare Provider of the Year. What sets Dr. Goldenberg and Greystone Chiropractic apart? Their attention to detail, their thorough approach with patients, and their excellent customer service. I trust my family with Dr. Goldenberg. You can too. Visit GreystoneChiropractor.com or call 981-8090. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at HydroLive Therapy. Boost your immune system today with HydroLive Therapy. IV therapy, B12 injections, cryotherapy, and compression therapy all under one roof. Mention next round at checkout. Save 20% off any service at the Birmingham and Tuscaloosa locations. If you're unable to make it to HydroLive, a nurse can actually come to your home or office. You can visit them online today, HydroLiveTherapy.com. HydroLive Therapy open seven days a week, Homewood 9 to 6 in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa 10 to 6. Hey, if you're looking for a local agent to handle all of your insurance needs, you need to call my good friend James Anthony at the James Anthony Agency, 205-985-7717. Hoover, Birmingham, Northport, and Tuscaloosa has been in business over 20 years. The James Anthony Agency. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but there is one game I don't ever want to be out of. And that's why I'm glad we have the Alabama Men's Clinic right here in Birmingham. They have treated thousands of Alabama men for ED. There are many different causes like a heart condition, diabetes, a reaction to medication, or simply low testosterone. The Alabama Men's Clinic staff will find the problem, and some of you will be back in the game the day after your first appointment. You can set up that appointment by calling 205-598-7000 or go to the website, alabamamensclinic.com. I know what you're thinking. A lot of guys actually just take a pill, but sometimes that pill doesn't work or it can give you unwanted side effects. Let the pros come up with your game plan. There's no need to wait. Depression, anxiety, a new connection with that special person in your life. It could be all just one important play away. Call 205-598-7000 or get back in the action at alabamamensclinic.com. Anheuser-Busch wants every experience for you around beer to be a good one. And getting home safely is always a priority. So encourage friends to decide to ride. Whether it's by being the designated driver, calling an Uber, or taking public transit. You cannot drive drunk if you don't drive there. This message is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Uber, Birmingham Budweiser, and the next round. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. The Double Down Media Podcast family is live and full of content for all ages. The Mystery Fifth Hour gives the next round host a chance to talk about everything but sports. Pour a glass of Bama and Bourbon, our weekly college football conversation, while sipping on some of the most interesting pours in the bourbon world. And in our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, LT takes off the gloves for in-depth conversations with stars like Taylor Hicks, presented by Redmont Vodka. Find these podcasts and more by searching The Next Round on Apple, Spotify, and on our website, nextroundlive.com. Forrester had the Lane's Gambit tweet up from uh, that's pretty good from Ole Miss. They had set the they'd set you up for that one. There you see the if you're watching us on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter, you know they'd set up with chess and checkers, and then uh, instead of Queen's Gambit, he drops Lane's Gambit afterwards. Uh, and that's that's a part of the discussion that we can get into after Rockstar gives us the viewing menu. Did Lane have any any uh, part in what went on in Knoxville over the weekend as they get the big win and he went back up there as the head coach of the Rebels? But first, Rockstar's View, I mean, you brought to you by the folks at New Life Art. New Life Art, bringing you memorable sports moments by Daniel A. Moore for over 40 years. 1-800-735-2787 or check out the incredible art today. Go to danielmoreart.com. 
6 p.m. on Stars, a very underrated uh, Denzel Washington movie. Do you remember the movie Fallen with John Goodman? I didn't like it. I thought it was pretty good. I guess that's a strikeout for me. <laughs> no, so, so basically it was very a, much rated. A demonic, rent. like the soul would transfer when they By touch. touch. Yeah, if you pass somebody, it would transfer from you to me. What was the Rolling Stone song that was in that? Uh, Time is on my side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you do that, you start singing that song. Did you watch any of the Tennessee game? I did. Uh, um, we were up late that night. The Tennessee band plays Paint It Black by Rolling yep. Stones. Paint It Black's an awesome song. It is an awesome song, but they play it like every other down. I mean, it is a, it, I think it's the best Rolling Stones song, personally. But a little dated, too. You yeah, would think that they would get... So they know two songs? <laughs> Rocky Top and Paint It Black, yes. And here's a cheesy one coming in May of uh, next year. A couple that met through a dating app are left with no choice but to have a tiny COVID wedding with no honeymoon. After losing a job, buying a house, and starting a new business venture, all during a pandemic, they decide to add another ingredient to their lives. Coming in May of 2022, Little Rock Star. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, are you making the announcement on the I'm air? You the just announcement. made the announcement wow. without telling us you were going to make the yeah. announcement? That's how it happens, man. Okay. May of 2022. Yeah. Little rock star. Yeah. Okay, so give us the whole thing you just yeah, read again. Yeah, or, or okay. at least give us a heads up next time. Because I checked out. I really did. I, I knew out. it was a kid. Like, I was like, okay, so this show's going to be about they're going to have this kid. Yeah. They don't need to add a kid without well, the, all that other crap. I was waiting for a twist like it was going to be a dog or something. I didn't know we were talking about you. So give us the read again. Okay. A couple wait, wait, wait. First off, the chat room. They got it 100%, so I they know. did not check out. So yeah. they're all no, congratulating you. sets us up. It's like, yeah. what else could go worse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a couple that met through a dating app are left with no choice but to have a tiny COVID wedding with no honeymoon after losing a job, buying a house, and starting a new business venture all during a pandemic. They decide to add another ingredient into their lives. <laughs> Coming in May of 2022, Little rock star. All right. Wait, now, are you also telling us the sex of the baby? Boy? No, we have no idea what the okay. sex of the baby is. Now, I, my idea was, when Rockstar first told us he and Nancy were expecting, and see what you guys think about this, is to do an on-show gender reveal. Like, he and Nancy don't know, and we do the gender reveal here on the show. Does she want to know the sex of the baby, though? Yes, we do, but I, don't, I think nah, we're, we're, today we are 12 weeks. Okay, well, let's do this. Nancy's going to find out, because we were watching you play one night, and she wanted to know instantly. Let's don't let Rockstar find out. We'll bring Nancy in, and we will not let Lance shoot the confetti gun because <laughs> he screwed that up for your birthday. He'll knock Nancy down. <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't let Lance do that. We'll let Nancy fire the confetti gun or we'll come, uh, some kind of reveal, cut a cake or let you try to you know hit a ball or something. Yeah, because one thing she wants, she keeps on me. I want to be on camera. Yeah, Please. absolutely. I want to be on camera. She hates that stuff. So yeah, sure. <laughs> well, congrats. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Awesome, yeah. Rockstar. We are so fired up about So watch yeah. that. It's going to be on the viewing after uh, the fail of Fallen. Okay. By the way, we'll tie all sponsorships together if you want to wave the white flag now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, LT can get you hooked up. All right. New Life Art. That's uh, Rockstar's viewing menu and a little... You know, little step into little his personal, curveball. yeah, yeah. Little, little step into his personal life. Keep those pictures rolling in um, from your new life art uh, weekend, your moments of the weekend, and we'll pick a winner tomorrow on that. Uh, just some great images from the weekend. But do you think Lane had any 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 part in what went on in Knoxville? Because I believe that he pokes the cage enough of fan bases that he is leading Ole Miss to play against. That what happened the other night, there he is leaving, video of him leaving, pointing number one. I, I cannot believe this guy is and, the uh, superstar that he is. And then he catches the, the bottle of, I believe, urine uh, that is being thrown at him there with a loose cap. He the, makes the catch there. Now, right. Of course he thinks it's all about him. This was not about Lane Kiffin. These, this was a juiced-up atmosphere. You guys saw pregame. This was the first time Tennessee felt like that they were relevant again in so a you, long time. You, don't, you do not no. think any of this. That I, I think that incident – I don't. Over the course of time, could have played out in Baton Rouge and Tuscaloosa, anywhere Lane is going to play if he is poking the cage, more so in Knoxville because he was the coach there. The crowd, all right, this is a, <laughs> it's complicated. The crowd was juiced the way they were because of Lane Kiffin coming back. Now, did Lane do stuff in that game? See, now I have volume up on Alabama, Mississippi State. I had the Tennessee Ole Miss game on, and, uh, you know, I'm watching, but. I didn't get all the volume. So, I, you know, people, Tennessee fans were like, you know, Lane and Matt Corral were inciting the Corral all night. I didn't see that. Now, I'm not – I watched the whole fourth quarter with volume up, but it had already gotten, you know, pretty amped up at that point. So, I don't know what Lane and Matt Corral were doing to, quote, unquote, you know, incite the crowd. But just Lane being back had the crowd the, the level it was. If that were 
Mississippi State in town, that crowd wouldn't have been like that. No, but if it or was Texas A and M, if it was Alabama, maybe. No, I think a one loss team coming in, yeah. a a, but, a but, top fifteen team. I think that Tennessee was just back on the map. I do think it added an element, but for Lane Kiffin. He did think it was all about him. Yeah. I think he loved the situation, too, personally. Uh, in the chat room, Eddie said Lane showing up. Of course he had a part in it. JW1, JW7175, Lane is everybody's favorite wrestling heel. Toby, T85, from the Twitch account, the refs officiating didn't help the situation. So many blown calls, plus Lane being there, just sent it over the top. Yeah, Lane being there is why the crowd was amped the way they were amped. And the officials screwing the call up early, or not screwing it up in your case, but... The Tennessee fans thought they screwed it up. That just took it to another level, and it never came down. The way the game played out, it was an emotional game. You had Ole Miss players looking like they were faking injuries. It was a tight game. You had what appeared to be a controversial call on the fourth down spot at the end that I think they got exactly right. I think they spotted it in the exact spot, and I think replay held that up. I mean, just everything everything boiled over, but the fact that it was Lane Kiffin is what had it too close to a boiling temperature already. But I still think if that's a one-loss Florida team, the, the fans still throw garage maybe, sale on field. Maybe Florida, maybe Alabama, maybe Georgia. But Lane Kiffin, outside of those three teams, Lane Kiffin is the only other thing that could have gotten it there. But, but LT, I would, I would bring up this point. You don't bring a Titleist to a football game unless you're going to throw it. Right. Why did you have a golf ball in a football game? And you know what people are saying is that the squeeze mustard thing – they don't have those anywhere in the stadium. Like some people are saying it was a flask, actually. It's a design yeah. flask. But I mean, it's like people brought stuff intent to throw it. And look, Ole Miss can't yeah, point fingers. You say that, though. I mean, but you really, th- I mean, you've got to have a moment to throw something like that. Uh, if I know it's going to be Lane Kiffin, again, that's my point. Yeah, but you've got to have a controversial moment. You're just not going to chunk a golf ball in the middle of the game. But you know Lane Kiffin's going to be out there. So if I want to throw a golf ball at Lane Kiffin. why I play more golf than anybody. I never walk around with a golf ball. It was was a good shot, though. I hit Lane. Which which brings up another. I'd I'd like to see the tape on this. And we know we got cameras. You know, they'll be able to see where the golf ball came from. Got cameras everywhere. Security cameras everywhere in these stadiums. What if what if it comes from somewhere on the Ole Miss sidelines that this is all set up? Because I I mean, shock me. I mean, it did. It did hit Kiffin. Right where it needed to hit Kiffin. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that's a that's a throw from. You could get Max that, Scherzer to come out, and he's not going to be able to make that throw. That was a fluky throw. I know, I mean, but if ball, I'm throwing it, am I throwing it at Lane Kiffin from the student section, it does, and it hits Lane? You know Kiffin? how difficult it is to throw a golf ball a distance with yeah. that kind of accuracy. It, the angle it comes down from. I mean, it's it's not a low angle. It's coming from a high angle. While he's talking to a ref. While he's talking to a ref. <laughs> I don't I'll know you, that, that catch, this is an inside job. Catches him in the eye. We got a problem. Oh yeah, heck yeah, you got a problem. It's That's a, why this all is all so fun games till somebody yeah. loses an eye. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I just feel like, and Chet's right, Chet, you know, Lane says everything he's supposed to say correctly. He was very complimentary of Tennessee going in and this and that. But his actions, it does, I love Lane. And I think if he was the coach at Alabama in the future or LSU, it Never would be happen. it would be fun. It would be fun, though. It would be entertaining uh, yeah. to cover I mean, Lane be Kiffin. It would be a fun nine and three. Because it's a show. <laughs> it's a show, is my point. It is a, it's a circus. And that is. I think plays a factor into what the Tennessee fans felt like with Lane coming back. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt. And it just gets amped up because of what you feel like you're you're getting screwed out of the game. And the crazy part about that is the Ole Miss fans react this way on that fourth down call. By the way, they got the football back. Yep. They were reacting that way like that call ended the game. You still had your timeouts, and Ole Miss still had to get a first down and well, couldn't do it. Rodgers and Hart continue to bring up, man, yeah. you've got three timeouts. You still got your timeouts. You're, you've it got played a shot out perfectly, and you had two opportunities to hey, the zone. They had an open guy in the end zone that Joe Milton's just not a very good quarterback, so he couldn't hit him. Hendon Hooker may make that play. Well, uh, and that was to Cedric Tillman, and it went yeah. off the fingertips. And if Tillman, and they brought this up too, if he's not fatigued in the, in the fourth quarter, he probably makes that grab. Brad with a great point on Twitter. It's hard to throw a golf ball. Um, it's not easy to do. And I'll go back to uh, our friend Cole Kublik. Tried to throw a golf ball around 18 holes of golf against Arky Shea, a radio guy in Huntsville. And Arky was, is a guy who never breaks 100. And Cole couldn't beat him throwing the golf ball instead of hitting a golf ball. It is hard to throw a golf ball with any distance so because of small. its size yeah. and its weight. And... You end up throwing your arm out if you throw it a lot. Well, I've, I've done it. So our our buddy Drew, yeah. um, you know, he's really really good golfer. He hasn't played in a while. But when he was playing a lot, we would go out and play, and he'd give me one 
one stroke per hole where I could throw. You right. could throw play a, a hole, par, yeah. But you never three. want to do that off the tee box. No. Never want to do it off the tee box. Now, I tried on the par three on some of the shorter ones, mm-hmm. and that's a good way to tear the rotator. That's, that's right. Absolutely. You that's, throw that's it like a baseball. It doesn't have enough weight. You even crow hop and yeah. try to throw it, and that's even worse. Yeah, you want to you want to do that one toss around around the green or that's out right. of a trap or something. Yeah, but even like 60 yards out, that is a difficult with accuracy to be able yeah. to land on now, green. So now to try to hit human. Yeah, hit Lane Kiffin is pretty incredible. But back to it, Lane Kiffin, it's all about him. How many successful coaches running a program in college football make make it all about them? Um, some do. Jim Harbaugh for a while. I feel, I feel like Dan, less yeah, less than that, that now. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like Dan Mullen does a little bit. You yeah. you accused Dabo Swinney of doing it the other day. Yeah, running down the hill. But it seems like more about I, him I, now. And look where the direction of the program is going. I think Dan Mullen's I, a good call. I think in a lot of ways Mike Leach does it. I think that's a good call too. Yeah, I mean he does it in a different way. But I think when you hire Mike Leach, you're hiring a guy you know it's going to be a lot about him. But with Lincoln Riley, uh, Ryan Day, Nick Saban. No, no those guys, they really don't do it. No, yeah. I would agree with you. Kirby Smart's doing a great job of, yeah. of keeping it about yeah. the, the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of our show being brought to you by the folks at Ship Happens today as you're getting ready to tackle another week at work. If you need products and big things move from one part of the country to the other, Ship Happens can happen for you. In today's ever-changing market, your supply chain is a major factor in maintaining and growing relationships with your customers, safe, on-time, and affordable shipments. They are crucial with over 20 years combined experience and relationships. Jeff and Griffin at Ship Happens have the ability to get ship done. From LTL, Van, flatbed heavy haul and expedited ship happens is ready to bring a solution to all of your transportation problems don't have an accident and ship yourself call the guys at ship happens 205-605-8101 i don't want to get too inside baseball here with john's comment in the chat room worst of the weekend was the lack of good review angles of the disputed call at the end of the tennessee game can't the sec afford an opposite field camera they can but if i and and listen you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of broadcast, but I think sadly all of our SEC network broadcast games are student operations from on campus student run productions. Um, like anything on the SEC network, including Tom Hart, Cole, and, and Jordan's game, prime time would have been a Tennessee production. I can find that out. Find that out. I, yeah, but I don't I, know if that's accurate, but I, I can find it out. Think it may, that, it may I think that is correct. But I'll text it, right now. But see. you compare the angles you have in that disputed call on the line to gain, and I th- I'm with you, Brent. I think the call was 100% right on the field. Yeah, the ball down at his hip. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. If he stretches out, he gets the first down. That's they right. Give it to him, yeah. Part of his body reaches the line. His right hand goes over the line. The ball's in the left hand. Down at his hip. So yeah. – I so I think the call was correct, but the angles of that call were, was horrible. Uh, very few, very few good angles of that disputed play. If it had been a game on CBS or the main ABC game with Fowler and Herb Street or the, 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 even the main ESPN game with Sean McDonough and Tom, Todd Blackledge, you've got more angles. You've got pylon cam. You've got this and that, and I don't think you have that on all the SEC Network broadcast. And, and that's unfortunate that you know that sometimes your review is impacted by camera angles and in that situation i, I think well, the call was right but it had been nice to have more angles what everybody asked for is some sort of angle at least down the goal line from both both angles that's right and i guess you could add one down the first down line i mean well the pylon cam and the first down camera has be, it, it's almost like the first down line 23 years ago 25 years ago yeah. It has been a, a change of some of these reviews. The pylon cam and having one right there on the first down marker gives you some great angles on some yeah, of those marks. If you had an opposite field angle because his back was to the camera angle, and if you had that opposite field angle, you had to kind of piece it together. And that's what Tom Hart and Jordan were doing. They're like, his balls at, the ball is at the hip. And when you see where he lands, where the ball is at the hip, there's no way it's at the first down. SEC yardage. can afford more cameras. You would think. I mean, especially with this new ESPN deal. Yeah, it, it was a, it was not the best angle for that review. And I, I'll tell you this, for Alabama fans that were in Starkville, I like the way Mississippi State, I don't like the p- commercial that they run over and over every time there's a review. But what they actually give you on the screen, Brown, is the, the what's the company that does the review? DV Sports? D- yeah, yeah whatever the company yeah. name is. They actually have that screen up there, and you see them clicking the videos and which ones they're looking at in the review and you see all the ones they have a choice from 
uh, the down. I mean, it is that screen that you get on the review and you see them going through the process like they eliminate real quickly. They start eliminating cameras that they don't have a good angle and they get down to the best four or five camera angles and they keep hitting those over and over, reviewing it from different angles. That's an interesting way to see how they do that. And they did that on the big screen in Startful during every review. Looks really cool. I am being told by someone in the biz that um, that crew is produced by ESPN. So that one crew that, is well, not necessarily. By- he he says not necessarily for football. I think when they have maybe like an Arkansas Pine Bluff Arkansas game, maybe right, or those weeks where you got a ton of SEC out of conference games in the SEC network. So the Cole Tom yeah. Jordan crew this week had an ESPN that's, that's normal truck and everything. That's what I'm being told. So I don't think that was the issue. All right. Uh, well, they they were limited on angles. At least what we saw on television. Maybe they had a better one. Uh, in the broadcast part of our show being brought to you by our friends at storm restoration roofing my boy greg from pell city can get you hooked up right now with a great roof listen uh the winter is coming that <laughs> sounds like game of thrones it is. winter is coming uh you got to be ready you got to protect your house right and the best way to protect your house is with a great roof and if you have that question that you ever ask honey is our roof a good roof uh greg from pell city can answer that question better than your significant other and he'll give you a free free no cost inspection of that roof to find out just how good your roof is why would you not want uh, a free no cost inspection on that roof to finally answer that question just how good is your roof you call this number 205-542-3531 205-542-3531 and talk to greg from pell city usually he'll answer the phone if he's not on the roof if he's on the roof somebody else will answer the phone greg will get back to you you're dealing directly with Greg Nelson, Greg from Pell City of Storm Restoration Roofing. A-plus a rated by the Better Business Bureau, locally owned for 20 years. Insurance companies trust these guys, so you get a great deal from your insurance company, and they've got a great warranty and that free no-cost inspection. 205-542-3531 or look up Greg from Pell City on Facebook. Follow LT on Twitter at the Lance Taylor. Let's just cut to the chase right here. A tax problem is way too important to trust someone out of state to some national 1-800 number when you have someone here local that can take care of you. I'm Jim Dunaway from the next round, and I've seen what ignoring IRS tax problems can do. If you owe back taxes and are looking for a way out, I've got the answer. It's my friend Perry Cronin with the Axiom Tax Resolution Group. You've got to understand this. The IRS is starting to take the gloves off again as we roll into 2022. They're coming after people. So don't fall victim to liens and garnishments. Call Perry Cronin, 205-872-1100, 872-1100, or the website 205tax.com. Perry and his daughter Teresa Cronin are tax professionals right here in our area. You'll meet them face to face you'll explain your situation and they'll handle your case like a family matter perry cronin can help visit the website 205tax.com are you sick of leasing your life away ryan brown here from the next round mortgage right has the cure with locations nationwide our friends at mortgage right are dedicated to making the home buying process easy they are eager to offer tips tools and a staff of industry professionals to move you in with confidence so if you're ready to let go of the leasing life and start living life mortgage right can help visit mortgageright.com slash tnr to get started NMLS 2239 Equal Housing Lender. A legendary coach once said, it's not the will to win that matters, it's the will to prepare to win. Bryant bankers have the dedication and experience to put together a financial game plan that's right for you. Stop by one of the seven Central Alabama locations today or give them a call at 1-855-4-BRYANT to begin preparing for your financial future today. You'll find out what unbeatable service and legendary results are all about. Bryant Bank, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Suffering from an old sports injury or tweak a joint being a weekend warrior? Precision Sports Medicine and Orthopedics may be able to reduce or eliminate your knee, hip, or shoulder pain, increase your mobility, and get you back in the game. From pediatrics to geriatrics, appointments are available at nine convenient locations affiliated with Brookwood Baptist Health. Call Precision Sports Medicine and Orthopedics at 855-219-6200 or visit precisionsportsortho.com. Stay up to date with the next round at nextroundlive.com. The latest videos from the show, plus podcasts like the Mystery Fifth Hour, Bama and Bourbon, 
Last Call, and others from the Double Down Media Podcast family. You can start your day with the latest college football stories, plus easy to listen to hour-by-hour downloads of the live show. NextRailLive.com, a great way to stream the show live or shop in the Next Round store. Make NextRailLive.com your homepage. That's NextRailLive.com. Follow Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The social media team at Next Round Live is dedicated to giving you daily news conferences and practice video from UAB, Alabama, Auburn, and around college football. Follow and compare to the sites you used to visit. You'll also get the latest highlights and news from the Next Round Daily Show. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss a thing. Follow Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. See more at nextroundlive.com. The Next Round is proud to partner with our friends at Taco Mama to support local Alabama startups. Taco Mama is celebrating their 10th anniversary, and as part of this celebration, Taco Mama wants to give back to startups that are trying to build their new business and live out their dreams. As part of this promotion, Taco Mama and The Next Round wants you to send us a 90-second or less video telling us a little bit about your startup. The Next Round will select multiple winners, and they will receive a Taco Bar compliments of our friends at Taco Mama and one lucky startup. Startup will receive one month's free advertising thanks to our friends at Taco Mama. Taco Mama knows how difficult these first steps are, and they want to support local startups and make their journey just a little bit easier. Really simple. Email us that 90-second video or less, staff at nextroundlive.com. That's staff at nextroundlive.com. Again, Taco Mama celebrating their 10th anniversary, and as part of this celebration, they want to give back to startups trying to build their new businesses throughout the state of Alabama. We always tell you, you guys are the smartest viewers in in the business. We'll give you what you're saying in the chat room about replays and down and distance and that stuff in just a second after I tell you about our friends at Backyard Adventures. Um, Listen, if you're a young parent out there, father or mom, and you're looking for that perfect gift this holiday season that you can tell Santa to bring your kids, Backyard Adventure Playground is the correct answer. They can enjoy it, not just for the moment they get it on Christmas morning, but they'll enjoy it for years until their mind starts drifting to what kind of car you're going to buy them, right? So Backyard Adventure is an investment for not just one year of fun, but for a lifetime of fun. Quality, 100% cedar, lifetime warranties, not this thin, cheap stuff that you see uh, some of the big box stores. Backyard Adventures, and I had one for my kids during their formative years. It is one of those things that even you as a dad can crawl up and play and swing and slide with your kids. It is perfect for the backyard, and they take care of their customers from start to finish, from the point of sale all the way to when you're done with the set. They'll come and get it and take it away for you at the, for, um, take it away for you at the end. They've got maintenance programs to keep it looking brand new. They even do landscaping. They did that for me when they put it in there. They still do that today. They'll landscape it and make it fit in perfectly to your backyard. To see more, to see more about your backyard adventure, go to backyardalabama.com. Backyardalabama.com. You can even use 3D imaging right there to put together your playset. Or you can call them up, 205 408 4 fun 205 408 4386 Trust me, it's worth a look right now, backyardalabama.com. Everyone is saying when it comes to down and distance in the chat room, we should go the way of tennis and having all the, the imaging and GPS that they have to whether balls are in or out. The, their replay system is by far better than any in any other sport. I mean, it's it's like I don't watch a lot of tennis, but where the ball hits that image. It's, it's a little shadow. I mean, it's it's – like spot on. I do yeah. hate the way they do the. <laughs> and then they go the. Oh. Oh. Uh, I don't like that part of it. But, <laughs> but I mean, I guess you could do that with a football. I mean, the I mean it's pro- a bigger surface, but surely we could come up with a way to do that. Yeah, right? As people are pointing We're out Americans. in the chat, the tennis ball is perfectly round and the football is oblong. So where do you put the computer chips? You know, you don't always hold the nose over yeah. the goal line. Sometimes it's the side of the football that might break the plane or something like that. We'd need multi- multiple chips. I mean, that's fine, and that's great for the SEC, but can you know Conference USA afford to do that? No. I, I can't be cheap putting chips on a football. 
Bo Nix coming up at the top of the hour as Brown reigns in our parade there. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. We appreciate all your chat, your stuff coming in in the chat room. Keep those coming. And uh, the phone lines open up later in the show after we get through um, the Nick Saban News Conference final hour. We'll get back to the Pepsi hotline at 205-734-0923. I did want to bring up the question going into the weekend was how Texas A&M would respond coming off the big win against Alabama. Luckily, Missouri was the opponent, but I thought they gave me another A performance in Columbia. Yeah, Missouri, I don't know what's happened because Eli Drinkwitz, we talked about maybe coach of the year last year in the SEC going 5-5, five and five, 13 penalties, a couple of turnovers. A&M got back to the basics running the football. A-Chain, Spiller, both over 100-plus 100, 100 yards. Uh, Calzada came back to earth, though. Calzada not close to what he did against Alabama. You know, th- that's exactly what I said what happened in that game when I made it my upset alert. That didn't happen. But I said I called it my regression to the mean game of the year because I said Zach Calzada is going to be back to who he was. He had the game of his life against Alabama. And Lance, that's exactly what happened. I, Those are I, his normal numbers right there. I, I don't think we realize how bad this Missouri rush defense is. Clearly awful. They yeah. can't stop anything. Yeah, Tennessee had great success running against them. So did yep. Texas A&M and everyone else that they will play. But I thought that was a good sign for Texas A&M being able to do that. The biggest game in the nation was Purdue taking it to Iowa, beating number two Iowa on their field. You called it all week long, watch Purdue and Iowa, watch Purdue and Iowa. Were you were you saying that thinking Purdue would just cover, or did you think they would hand it to them and win the game like well, they did? I think they had a shot. You know, that was one of the reasons I, my upset alert was Purdue. You know, Iowa's offense just isn't that good, and it got exposed. O'Connell was the better quarterback of the two. Um, I don't know what of, you guys have thought. I, of that, the three? They played three. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, you mean of the two in the game? Yeah. So Plummer played a little <laughs> bit, and that's been, you know, Brahms being back yeah. and forth O'Connell or Plummer, but O'Connell was the main uh, right, main yeah. quarterback, and but, the Plummer played just a little bit, but I'm talking about Petrus. Yeah. That's been the problem two, yeah. for Iowa. Yeah, I agree. The Purdue quarterback play was better than Iowa's because Purdue played, they rotated three guys, which is amazing. I never thought Iowa was the number two team in the country. No. You guys didn't either. And you think the AP polls agree with you? Yeah, yeah, Jim, you know, he was. we were doing our show yesterday, and he pointed out that Iowa fell to 11. Is that where yeah. they fell? They, they fell dropped to 11. nine spots. Yeah, so that's not right, though. But yeah, but that tells me you never thought they were two to begin with. If you drop them all the way to 11, you didn't think they were the second best team. You just voted them because next man up basically and we've talked about a college football playoff ranking is going to look totally different than what you're going to get in the ap iowa was not going to be in a week yeah but the best player on the field was david bell i don't know if you guys watched it but the wide receiver for for purdue i mean the guy was fantastic purdue's not a bad team and they're finally ranked for the first time in forever brown blew my mind with this stat yesterday can you give me the stat let me see Uh, if i can find it real quick okay Uh, he talks about purdue historically against top five teams he'll give that to us but so iowa loses cincinnati now is number two in the country if the playoff committee announced their top four right now, would Cincinnati be in it? I think if they're smart, Cincinnati would not be. It would have to be Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, and Oklahoma. Those are your four best teams. Oklahoma is night and day with Caleb Williams at quarterback. Yeah. Night and day. Hats off to Lincoln Riley. That had to be a tough choice to make that decision, uh, but he did. He went to Caleb Williams, and Spencer Rattler will be a story coming up. Uh, in the offseason, no doubt, of where he ends up. We'll get to that. Talk to Bo Nix and all that coming up at the top of the hour. Brown will give us that stat. The show being brought to you in part by the great folks at the University of Montevallo. Right now, Montevallo currently waiving the ACT-SAT requirements through the fall of 2022. Your son or daughter can find great academic success at Montevallo, a college of distinction, 10 years running, 75 majors right now and they're adding new majors and minors all the time for the most in-demand careers to this changing job markets 21 ncaa division two scholarship sports that includes by the way uh esports team and also a bass fishing team that is a national championship contender find out why you belong at montevallo montevallo.edu montevallo.edu follow brownie on twitter and instagram at ryan brown live banking is not just about your money It's about you. It's about getting help with what you need when you need it. Brian Brown here for the next round. AmFirst was founded for members like you, and they've been putting those members first since 1936. Putting you first means service that grows and changes with the times to serve you better. Now every bank has their own app, but that's just it. It's theirs, not yours. The AmFirst app was made for you. So it's easy to pay bills, deposit checks, or transfer money to friends and family from anywhere. It's even customizable, which means you can personalize your dashboard, create usage alerts, 
and redeem points for rewards that will make you feel like the number one priority you are. And you can do it all on your own time. So what are you waiting for? Get the app made for you from Amfirst. Visit any Amfirst location or amfirst.org today. America's First Federal Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. This is for the men who never settle, the ones who miss the fairway all day and still pull out the big stick, the type of guys who will always prefer to be behind the grill than in front of the camera, and the men who never let their friends forget about a high school nickname. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. Who wants to settle for a single TV? With more TVs, bigger screens, plus our fabulous scenic views, there's more to watch at Twin Peaks. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. Major situation the other day. Basement and garage flooded. So who did I call? Our friends at Dry Tech Water Restoration. Call them today, 205-637-0143. They were at my house within an hour. They will always respond quickly, and they answer the phone, 205-637-0143. They work for the customer, not the insurance company. No ties to any insurance companies. Go online, mydrytech.com. That's mydrytech.com, or call 205-637-0143. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. I'm absolutely loving my Alfa Romeo Stelvio that I've been in for months now and right now. You can get up to $3,500 bonus cash plus 1.9% financing for 72 months on the all-new 2021 Alfa Romeo Julia's and the Stelvio's in Alfa Romeo of Birmingham. Come experience the passion and performance of Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo USA of Birmingham.com, 1837 Grants Mill Road, exit 27, right off of I-459. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about my friends at Michelson Laser Vision, located conveniently UAB Highlands. Almost 20 years ago, I went in for the procedure. Only took 12 minutes for both eyes. When I went in, I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Now I have 2015 vision, still 19 years later. Make the call today. Schedule a hassle-free consultation. 969-8100. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, Michelson Laser Vision. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you. 969-8100 or Michelson and laservision.com. Want more of the show? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast. The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, the last call, and our entire Double Down Media podcast family, all at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. This hour of the next round is brought to you by Excalibur Services, a name you can trust when it comes to residential heating, AC, and electrical services. Excalibur is growing and looking for exceptional HVAC techs, plumbers, and electricians. 205-718-8688. Alabama license number 15214. Drunk driving prevention is a priority at Anheuser-Busch. You can't drive drunk if you don't drive there. Encourage friends to join in the pledge to Decide to Ride on DecideToRide.com. Brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Uber, Birmingham Budweiser, and the next round. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. That's nextroundlive.com. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about my friends at Michelson Laser Vision, located conveniently UAB Highlands. Almost 20 years ago, I went in for the procedure. Only took 12 minutes for both eyes. When I went in, I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Now I have 2015 vision, still 19 years later. Make the call today. Schedule a hassle-free consultation, 969-8100. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, Michelson Laser Vision. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you, 969-8100 or Michelson and laservision.com. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. Uh, we got bye week Bo Nix coming up here in just a second. This hour brought to you by our friends at Champy's World Famous Chicken right there on 119 in Alabaster. Win your tailgates all football season long. And hey, even if you got holiday parties coming up and you want something different other than pizza in the office, our friends at Champy's Chicken can hook you up with a variety of different things. Check them out online at champyschicken.com. When you talk about a big game on the road, how about Bo Nix this past weekend? 
in Fayetteville, lighting up the Hogs. And in a three-minute span, the Tigers down three, boom, boom, and then a long pass from Bo. They're up 11. They don't look back. They win it 38-23. to Auburn's now won six straight in the series against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And Bo Nix joins us each week on the Pepsi Hotline at this time, courtesy of our friends at Rental Works, the rental division of Crane Works. Big or small, they got the equipment like skid steers and excavators all the way down to the smaller equipment like the pressure washers, brush mowers, and trailers. Visit craneworks.com for more information. Hello, Bo. How are you? I'm doing good. How are y'all? Doing great. We appreciate you uh, being back with us. We asked you last week, do you have like good mojo in that stadium? Because you played well there as a freshman, and then <laughs> Saturday you had another great game. Uh, have you considered playing all your games in Fayetteville? Uh, I have not, but I do uh, enjoy that stadium. I think it's a good atmosphere. Um, obviously, we came to play both times we've played them. Um, our team played well, um, and but they, they were a good team, and, and they did have a good atmosphere. It was a fun fun game to play in. Um, it was a fun road game, and, and we just played well. Do you feel like you and Mike Bobo are building more of a rapport? I mean, you know, I go back to the fourth and three. You guys stop Arkansas. Very next play, you go deep to Demetrius for the 71-yard touchdown. It just seems like you guys each week are getting more in sync together. I, I do. I think he is um, kind of understanding and, and seeing how um, – kind of what kind of positions that I work well in and what kind of um, plays fit me. And I think he has obviously being a coach for a long time has run a lot of plays and he's been with a lot of quarterbacks. And so he has a bunch to him that he can fit around me and, and make work. And I think that the more games we've played in, the more time we've been together, the more times we can meet and talk and discuss certain things. He has gained a, a true understanding of, of, what puts me in a good situation and at, from an OC and a quarterback, that's extremely important is when an offensive coordinator puts their quarterback in good situations. And he has done just that um, really in every game that we've played in. Um, he's had me very well prepared um, for the opponent and for our schemes. Um, and he puts me in great situations when we're out there on the field um, and, and gives me great opportunity uh, and gives me a lot of options and at the end of the game which I much appreciate he, he puts the ball in my hands and let lets us just just finish the game he also Bo had you in the I formation some in this game you don't see a lot of I formation in college football anymore I don't know how much you even ran in your dad's offense I know you didn't run any of the Gus Malzahn offense yeah this is the first time I've ever been in the I formation with coach Bobo but it <laughs> allows us um, to get in a different formation to run the ball um, and run it efficiently. Sometimes from the gun, um, you can kind of be not schemed up, but got, based off your formation and personnel, teams can kind of know what direction you're going in based off run game. But in the eye formation, um, you just got to get going downhill at them. You can run side to side with some tosses and then obviously just some downhill runs with zone. And um, we had to do that in the second half uh, just kind of to choose some clock, and that was our, our – um, part of our offense that we knew we could get in um, a run in formation and, and run the ball at them and, and put the game away. Hey, and with that uh, off of that a little bit early in the game, tank had a big run down to the one yard line. I, I, you know, had a chance to get in and eventually gets in there. I know he's not putting up the numbers that, that maybe he was projected to put on, but for him to do that early in the game, what did that do for you offensively? Does it free things up knowing that there's a threat that he and Hunter can do damage running the football does that open up plays for you guys if that happens early absolutely the run game is is a quarterback's best friend and when you can get that started um and and working then that's obviously huge for a quarterback and it sets up some um play action and some some deep shots and then obviously just the passing game they may get into a different defense and you got some some open passes to throw uh, but even though we didn't like, like rush for, for a ton of yards, we just were consistent with the run game all game. And, and it took us kind of throughout the game into the second half to, to reach a good number. But we just kind of we stayed with it and, and we didn't give up on it. And, and there at the end of the game, we were able to rush for some good yards and, and to chew the clock and go down and score. Well, the final score of the game, you were running one in, uh, in for the 23-yard touchdown there at the end. I've got to ask you this. We meant to ask last week. But Kirby Smart, going into the Georgia game, said they put a gun on you 
and you got up to 22 miles per hour. <laughs> we really doubted that. Uh, you've got really good speed, but Kirby Smart was talking about that you're one of the fastest players in the SEC. Is 22 miles per hour on the gun a little too much? Um, actually, that's um, right. Pretty accurate. Um, I have a GPS that tracks me um, on the uh, our strength and conditioning staff has a GPS that that tracks me and tracks my speed. And I have actually reached 22 miles an hour. And it's um, up there on the board as, as one of the top. But we have some fast guys. So I kind of blend in with the rest of the guys. Um, but yes, I 22 is accurate. So it's not wow. just a so, false number. So, so what does that equate to in a 40? Not that it matters, but just wondering. Well, I, see, it's different because a 40, you gotta, you have to obviously can like keep that speed up. And so 22, just on a, just like being gunned at 22, that means I reach 22 miles an hour. So it's doesn't necessarily correlate with a 40 yard dash time, just because the 40, you can reach 22 and then obviously come back down because you don't maintain top speed. Um, so it's kind of different. Um, but I've, I have a, a decent 40 time, but it's nothing like other guys. But I think just in a game like situation, I can kind of touch top speed just from from running away from guys that are bigger and faster than I am. Bo Nix is with us on the Pepsi Hotline. He joins us each week courtesy of the Rental Works Division of Crane Works. Everything they, uh, you need from landscape equipment like mowers and big machines and skid steers and certified operators to handle those big jobs too. Thanks to David Upton and an entire crew there at Crane Works. Uh, you can check out their full fleet, craneworks.com. Uh, how much does this team need a bye week? Is this a good time for a bye week for you guys? Yeah, I think any time during an SEC schedule is a good time. And obviously we've played three um, important games the past three weeks. And then obviously there at the beginning of the season, we were at Penn State. And so just a lot of things going on, a, a lot of traveling. The road games were, were tough, um, some late nights, and then obviously some physical games. So it, it's, it did come at a good time, and it's important for us to – um, reevaluate where we are, um, look at the things that we're really good at, and then fix the things that we need to correct. Um, but obviously, anytime you get a bye week in this kind of – with the schedule that we have, um, it's important, and, and we're not going to complain about any time we get a bye week. Well, I wanted to ask you that because, I mean, it's got to be some self-care that goes into this. I'm not talking like pedicures and manicures or anything. <laughs> I know you're not going to a spa, but uh, there's got to be some part of a bye week where you get away from football, right? I mean, just to flush the mental aspect of the game. I, I would imagine fans think it's 24-7. You guys are preparing for the rest of the season. But is there some moments this week that you guys are allowed to get away totally from football? Yeah, absolutely. I think you have to. Um, because we've been at it for a long time um, on back through probably the beginning of August into July. Um, and so that's a lot of football. That's a lot of just consistent um, training and a lot of wear and tear on your body. And so this week um, it is important for just mentally and physically uh, just to take care of ourselves and, and to get away from the game a little bit, maybe go focus on something else. And maybe that'll give us some, some positive energy when we come back. It'll get us focused and ready to go again and get back to work. Um, and just from a physical standpoint, it just kind of takes a game off of you and allows you your body to recuperate and, and you kind of get some some energy back and, and some speed and strength that you may be just lacking just from, from the physicality of the game. Uh, I know you're not a procrastinator, but the schedule goes deep into December, right? Your, your schedule does, and you've got a fiancé now. Is this the week you pick out Christmas gift this week? Do you do Christmas shopping this week? Well, that's a good question, too. Um, but that's going to have to wait, and that's going to be um, a, a later down the road thing. Um, but today is actually her birthday, so happy birthday to Izzy. Um, and But I did a good job of getting her a birthday gift. Um, and that just obviously came in a good time with our with our off week. And so I'll have to wait for her Christmas present and for the rest of my family um, until after the season. Bo, I've been married 21 years, buddy. It only gets harder to think of the gifts. I mean, it was some of the biggest relief. My I, wife. I agree. Oh, yes. it's crazy, man. My wife, her her birthday and our anniversary are five days apart. And when I get past those five days and then, then I start worrying about Christmas, you just, it's so hard to think of the gifts, man. I bet. I can only imagine. That's that's three times you got to get a gift. And um, I mean, they they enjoy gifts, but they don't ever tell you what they want. No, uh, no. or at least my, at least mine doesn't. So yeah. it's right. just it's our creativity that a comes into play. Great resource. Great resource is the mother-in-law.
All right. Future that mother. is true. You yeah. you ask her, what can I get her? The mother-in-law always knows or close friend. Yeah. That's the I, way you do that. Yep. I, I now go, my daughter is is older, Bo. Oh, yeah. So I was like, find out what your mom wants for, for our resources. anniversary. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You got you to work resources. the field, man. You got to work that locker room. Exactly. Uh, yep. <laughs> All right. He is uh, Bo Nix, the Auburn quarterback with a bye week now. And he joins us each week on the Pepsi Outline, courtesy of Crane Works. Bo, enjoy the bye week, man. We always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, War Eagle. Yeah, take care. We'll see you next week. Bo Nix with us each week, courtesy of Crane Works. If you have a home project coming up, you need to call Rental Works. They have everything from landscaping equipment like mowers to big machines like skid steers. They also have certified operators to handle those big jobs, too. Check out their full fleet at craneworks.com. Uh, do you think uh, Izzy looks at the birthday gift and said, I mean, I know you're getting more money with the next round, guys. Yeah. Look, yeah, I, mean, right. I know you can. I know you can afford. <laughs> we go a little more than this. Yeah, now. but if you go mother in law and you get too. it wrong, you can always blame mother in law. That is correct. Twenty two yes. miles an hour, and get me something different. <laughs> <laughs> I, that blows me away. I mean, it, the, 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 you do see the burst, and you know the guy's an athlete. He's a competitor. I've always yeah. said that. People say I'm hard on him. I did say at the beginning of the show, this is the best game I've seen him play, especially in that true road environment. His last two road starts, though, at LSU. And at Arkansas, he's turned a corner. He's obviously much more comfortable. Turned a corner since when, though? What happened that right before he turned that corner? Well, the the controversy and the That's fact right. that he, he got might, benched. yeah, he might lose his starting job going into the LSU game. We really didn't know. You and, know. and and if you wondered if Brian Harson made the right call right there, look how Bo Nix has responded. But, right. But, but I got to say this: the whole staff. This thing almost went off the rails. If they lose to Georgia State, that you know it came down to that final possession. Very next week, you know, they're down 13 nothing to LSU to make the adjustments. Georgia's Georgia. Georgia's a different animal. We all That's agree right. with that. That's right. But to go on the road at Arkansas, a team that is really, really good, and to win that game going away at the end, they've made the adjustments. And I'm really surprised sitting here seven games in, they're 5-2. and two. Yeah. A lot of credit to Bo Nix and to Brian Harson. Uh, Riley, Bo Nix, more like Usain Bo. Am I right? Uh, Shannon says, how much extra work did Bo put in with those wide receivers to reduce the drops? He has to be proud of their development. Not No drops this past weekend. None, Isn't that weird? None huge. I mean, there well, were a you, lot in the other games. You had two that were questionable drops. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, nothing like the Georgia game. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, But uh, I'm just saying, Bo, the, the numbers could have actually been better. Yeah. EVH93, one of our great female viewers. Anything at next round sponsor in Bromberg's would be a good gift she's recommending for Bo. That's a great idea. That's Thank what you. Izzy should tell him. Yeah. That show you're on each week. They've also got a sponsor named Bromberg. Yeah, if it's not in the silver box. Uh, Chris says Bo's a class act. We've learned that dur during this process for sure. Um, so that's a, a good reaction there in the chat room to the Bo interview. We appreciate him joining us every week, and we appreciate the folks at Crane Works. If you're going to cheer on Auburn after the timeout, after their bye week this week, or going to the Bama-Tennessee game this weekend, or down for the Children's Harbor game with UAB, remember our friends right there at the Pants Store have all your weather gear, all your Good weather, cold weather, or wet weather. They've got all the gear right there at the Pants Store. Five great locations, Crestline, Leeds, Trustful, Tuscaloosa, or Huntsville. You can see everything they have fashion-wise at pantsstore.com. But they also have sunglasses that you need, the bright fall sun, the game day hats that you can get there, all the accessories, the Yeti coolers, the cups, the huggies, and uh, those clear purses for the ladies. they got a huge variety of styles of that as well. Plus all the clothing with your favorite team logos on it, all at the Pants Store, Crestline Leeds, Trustful, Tuscaloosa, or Huntsville. And don't forget, pantsstore.com. Forrester, can you give me highlights of the UAB game because of Orgeron and everything that's going on at Tennessee and Alabama playing so well in the bounce back? Here's some of UAB against Southern Miss from over the weekend, and uh, UAB just took it to rival Southern Miss. They beat their eyes out 34 to nothing. Did you look at the box score? Southern Miss had 107 yards. Not 107 rush yards. Not 107 pass yards. Not 107 penalty yards. They had 107 yards. So you had three different Southern Miss players attempt to pass. You know what their, their <laughs> stat, their box line? Six of 16, 32 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. I mean, that is... It's got to be some crappy offense, but it is a lot of dominating defense, yep. too. And, and here we are again uh, with UAB. When you get to October and the games you remember in November, they are chasing down another Conference USA Western Division championship. But, oh, okay, here's UTSA finally getting respect in yep. the rankings. Yep. They're now number 24 in the nation. Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like a lot of tech's a tough game for UAB. 
Um, I, I think they should shell Rice. They're a big favorite over there. They should beat La Tech. UAB, their three toughest games are coming up. They should be. Uh, they should be. Well, Marshall is going to be tricky for them. Yep. To keep Marshall. Them un- if they're un- if they're not undefeated against UTSA, it's going to be because of Marshall. That's the one they would lose. Yeah, they're going to be dogs at Marshall. They'll be dogs definitely against San Antonio. Yep. And the UTSA game is home or away? No, it's away. away. They're it's away. having to play them at the Dome. Okay, big weekend, though, this weekend. Protective Stadium. It's the Children's Harbor game. A uh, variety of different ways. You can check out UAB's website on how you can support the great folks at Children's Harbor and that mission. It's been a great event for UAB over the years. We appreciate Bill Clark and UAB giving back to Children's Hospital and the folks at Children's Harbor there as the Blazers return back to beautiful Protective stadium this weekend all right nick saban's news conference coming up at the top of the hour a lot more reaction to what's going on in college football if you uh, have been away from everything ed orgeron is out at lsu he will coach the rest of the year he's getting his full buyout george is number one in the ranking cincinnati oklahoma alabama and ohio state there in the top five we'll get back to all of that and trash with lt coming up on the other side part of the show being brought to you by our friends at graystone chiropractic jimmy d i went to graystone chiropractic just to get my golf swing right and what i found out was getting my spine aligned properly it affects every cell tissue and organ in the body so i have a healthier lifestyle now you can enjoy a healthier life today by visiting dr lee goldenberg graystone chiropractor just off 280 tannersall park and 119 graystonechiropractor.com or 205-981-8090. I've got real quick that stat that you were asking for earlier. Uh, Purdue, most wins against a top two team while unranked. Purdue now has nine. Yeah, I told you guys this on Friday. I'm glad you all listened to me. I heard you. Most wins against top five while unranked. They now have 16. I was just updating. And so nobody, the stat you told me, no, nobody has beaten a top five team more as an unranked team than, than Purdue. Purdue. Well, it's, right. yeah, it's uh, in, in, as far as top one or two teams, they've got five outright wins as unranked. Yeah. No, nine outright right wins. wins as unranked. The closest yeah. is four from any other program. That's right. right. It's crazy. And that's a small thread, to, uh, you know, small needle to thread. Because, like I pointed out to you, most of your Blue Bloods aren't unranked when they're playing a top five team, right? That's right. You're really, really good teams. Yeah, you wonder how many more times we're going to see this in the Big Ten. You know, how good is Michigan? How good is Michigan State? And and I I don't think they're that good. I think Ohio State, by far, will end up being the best team in the Big Ten. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. And the the pollsters agree with it now. The highest ranked team in the Big Ten is the one-loss Ohio State team. At number five. And I think if we started the college football playoff today, although Oregon beat them and Oregon's got one loss, oh, you're going, to the, in. You're going yeah. the four best teams. You've got to put Ohio yep, State I in. I agree completely. And that's hard, but Ohio State does look better in Oregon yep. right now. All right, Trash with LT, and you'll hear from Lane Kiffin and Ed Orgeron all in the next segment. Follow Dunaway on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Dunaway. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at HydroLive Therapy. Boost your immune system today with HydroLive Therapy. IV therapy, B12 injections, cryotherapy, and compression therapy all under one roof. Mention next round at checkout. Save 20% off any service at the Birmingham and Tuscaloosa locations. If you're unable to make it to HydroLive, a nurse can actually come to your home or office. You can visit them online today, HydroLiveTherapy.com. HydroLive Therapy open seven days a week, Homewood 9 to 6 and Tuscaloosa 10 to 6. Iron Mountain Construction is an industrial services company with over 500 people available for your situation and needs. They are committed to safely supporting the operations of your facility through their execution of quality-driven maintenance services and on-time, on-budget small capital construction work. And they offer support with plumbers, pipe fitters, millwrights, iron workers, laborers, operators, and more. Call the office of Iron Mountain Construction, 205 781 1170 for Jeremy Purvis and Iron Mountain Construction. 
The Double Down Media Podcast family is live, including the Mystery Fifth Hour, a chance for the next round host to talk everything but sports, or a glass of Bama and bourbon, the weekly college football conversation while sipping some of the most interesting pours of bourbon in the world, and the Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call. Lance Taylor takes off the gloves for an in-depth conversation with stars like Taylor Hicks, presented by Red Mod Vodka. Find those podcasts and more by searching the next round on Apple, Spotify, and on our website, nextroundlive.com. Anheuser-Busch wants every experience for you around beer to be a good one. And getting home safely is always a priority. So encourage friends to decide to ride. Whether it's by being the designated driver, calling an Uber, or taking public transit. You cannot drive drunk if you don't drive there. This message is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Uber, Birmingham Budweiser, and the next round. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Take a second to listen to me. Do you have problems sleeping? Is your energy down? Your workout's not the same. Is your libido down? Your problem could be as simple as low testosterone. Whatever the challenge, the Alabama Men's Clinic has a solution. You can come in, get a medical consultation and blood work. If medically advised and you start your low T treatments that day in the office, your visit is free. Set up that appointment by calling 205-598-7000 or go to the website, alabamamensclinic.com. Another side effect could be depression, and most men wait a year or longer before ever getting tested. The goal line to better sleep, more energy, a rekindled love life, and more may be as simple as getting your low T checkup at Alabama Men's Clinic. Located in Birmingham to serve you, the number again, 205-598-7000 or one click at alabamamensclinic.com. That's alabamamensclinic.com. A legendary coach once said, it's not the will to win that matters, it's the will to prepare to win. Bryant bankers have the dedication and experience to put together a financial game plan that's right for you. Stop by one of the seven Central Alabama locations today or give them a call at 1-855-4-BRYANT to begin preparing for your financial future today. You'll find out what unbeatable service and legendary results are all about. Bryant Bank, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. If you need to move, you only need two men and a truck. Local or long distance, they can pack it, load it, move it, unload it, and arrange it when you get there. See more details at twomenandatruck.com or call the Tuscaloosa Northport location, 205-614-8522, 205-614-8522. And guess what? You can get a free quote on your moving cost up front to or from campus, from your apartment to your next home, or from Tuscaloosa to L.A., your next move starts and ends with twomenandatruck.com. All right, a clear view into our post-game locker room is brought to you by our friends at Michelson today. You're about to hear from Lane Kiffin and Ed Orgeron. Kiffin from Saturday night after the win. And Sunday, Ed Orgeron, after finding out he's not going to be the coach, he already knew that before the game, but they finally addressed it with the team. And it's brought to you by our friends at Michaels. Hey, if you wear eyeglasses or contacts, do yourself a favor. Write down this number, 205-969-8100. Call that number today. Schedule the hassle-free consultation. Ask for Amy. Tell her the next round sent you. You're going to thank me for this. Almost 20 years ago, I went in. I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Didn't even realize that without the contacts. Got the procedure done. 2015 vision better than 2020. I've still got it today. Call 969-8100 or go online, michelsonlaservision.com. All right. A little um, context after the win in Knoxville, Lane Kiffin. Uh, they win the football game against Tennessee, a big win. I mean, this Ole Miss team looks like they're staring 11-1 and one right in the face, right? They're, they're staring down 11-1. And, one. and mm-hmm. uh, here's Kiffin reacting to everything that went on in Knoxville. I just wanted to play. I mean, the players got helmets. It's the coaches that are going to get hit. Like, I still have my souvenir golf ball that I got hit with. But I, I think that's one of the most passionate fan bases in America. <laughs> And you got a hundred thousand of them together, and things don't go their way when all that energy is going. And you know, they got upset. I don't know if it was. I don't. I'm not sure. It wasn't partly at the refs too, because they replay the play, and I think they're watching his other hand, thinking they had a first down. So, it is what it is. There's some number of bottles with some brown stuff in them, so I'm not sure. Probably not moonshine. I don't think they'd waste the moonshine on me. <laughs> yeah, it's a good line. A hundred percent. He. It was urine. 
Brown? No. What have they been drinking? N- not enough water. <laughs> it was bourbon. You think it was it bourbon? Throwing piss at him. If you feel like bottle water, give me a second. Like medieval <laughs> times. No, no, you chat. You go <laughs> no. ask. You go ask the United you, States you, men's soccer team when they play in okay. rival Mexico. <laughs> That's a little bit different. I don't think this fan base, and I do agree with Brown, it was whipped up a little bit more because of Lane Kiffin. He was there one year. Lane Kiffin's given himself way too much credit on this. <laughs> if you were a Tennessee fan and you went number one in a bottle in the stands and threw it at Lane Kiffin, hit us up on the chat room. And, now, and if it was Brown, head to the infirmary. No, I will say this. If there, you're being there was such a delay that maybe there were fans in there that had already run out of their flask or bottle. They had already drank it, and they didn't want to miss whatever chaos possibly was going to come down. That's what I'm saying. Then they took a leak in the bottle and then maybe threw it at him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm saying more likely it's just the bourbon they had left they over. They didn't bring a urine sample with them. They deposited while they were in the mm-hmm. students. They section. brought golf balls. Yeah. I've never seen anybody take a leak in a bottle in a stadium. I've seen somebody in the old Brian Denny take a leak off the chain link. <laughs> <through>. <laughs> back in the stadium. Through the back of the stadium, yeah. Rain. I know the guy that did it. So I've seen that, but I have never in all of my days of going to any football game seen anybody take a piss in a bottle. Okay. Wow. But I'm sure it happens. Boy, I, I have always, I try to walk underneath to know you're, you don't want to walk that edge when you're walking to the press box or into a stadium where people can drop things off of the upper deck like ice or, you know, pour a Coke or pee off on top of you. So you try to drop either way in or way out. The urine thing would be a, um, a different scenario. It ruins the day. It's a game it changer. Does. There's no doubt. Uh, this hour of the show brought to you by our friends at Champy's World Famous Chicken, known for their tamales with that Mississippi Delta recipe. Poor boys, uh, the chicken, the fried chicken's unbelievable. They got the tenders as well. Perfect for tailgating, chicken on a stick. Champy'sChicken.com, the website, right on Highway 119 in Alabaster. Ed Orgeron uh, dismissed his coach. He'll finish out the year. Um, pretty good reaction, I think, from it because he's getting $17 million. But he was asked this question, will you coach next year at Orgeron? Here's his answer. What is the, the motive to stay here the entire season when you know you're no yeah. longer going to be well, here? Well, I've been telling them, kids, we're we, we going to finish. We're not going to blink. I'm going to be right there with them. That's the reason. And Scott and I mutually, mutually agreed. But I'm going to finish with this team. I, I love this team. I love being with these guys. I love LSU. And the day I leave here, I'm going to do everything I can every day. Yeah, and and he's not going to coach next year. He says, at least at this moment. And I think this is this is Ed Orgeron cementing his legacy. If he goes out the right way, then he's beloved. Yes. He's beloved, and that's why I think Scott Woodward gave gave Ed Orgeron this opportunity because he's done really good things for this program. Look, sadly, he's a caricature, caricature of himself. <laughs> I can't say that word. Too many C's. It is a caricature. Yeah. But I mean, he, <laughs> he can't either. Yeah. Caricature. And now, <laughs> caricature. If you think about it, it really is going to get in your mind. Yep. DJ Uyunglele <laughs> you know, is a caricature of a quarterback. With that said, this guy does care about this program. And you saw it on Saturday, man. They could have laid down, and it seemed like yeah. they had tapped out after Kentucky. And for them to bounce back, and it, when Florida went to half, when Shorter caught that, which the defense on that Hail Mary was some of the worst I've oh, ever seen. Oh, 31's just standing I mean, there watching. I mean, he just he didn't What's even he have to extend, didn't have to yeah. high point it at all, just catches it. Everybody's just standing around looking. I was like, they're going to lose this game now. And did you hear what Orzeron said going off at the half? Yeah. I <laughs> couldn't the believe that. They, uh, Erdl, was it Erdl? Yeah. Ask him about the, uh, ch- no, it wasn't. It was uh, Molly McGrath. Ask him about the challenge. He goes, oh, he caught the ball. <laughs> he said he caught the ball, but I had a timeout, so I just used the challenge. You only get the one challenge, Ed. <laughs> you might have needed it in the second half. But anyway, with all that said, they still made the adjustment, came back out, and and played their asses off for 30 more minutes. So I give him a lot of credit. Yeah, and I them. do believe... With all this attrition, look, it's going to catch up and they're going to lose a lot of games, but they're going to beat somebody they shouldn't, and they're going to play for full 60 minutes. Uh, everyone is saying most likely tobacco juice for dippers and chewers Could've in the that. stands. More Ooh. likely than urine. Spit in the bottle and yeah. uh, throwing that What would you rather really be hit it. with? Well, not urine. Well, you'd have to be hit with both to kind of see which one you <laughs> <Yes>. dislike. <laughs> Rockstar parking lot, yeah. last hour. We'll see. I mean, I really don't know what's worse. Let me finish this off real quick. <laughs> I mean, you guys have – I mean, Import, export. Boy, I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's bullet or knife, but – Yeah, I think I'd rather – I'll pass. I don't like spit. <laughs> spit with tobacco. <laughs> no, don't, I don't dislike piss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do trash with LT. Hit the button. They let me look at the, the lawyer's building. I know the vacuum cleaner man. 
He's seen my tits. Um, I know that's not going on TV, but it's true. It's true. I'm not here to lie to you. LT's Trash is presented by Mortgage Right. Mortgages done the right way. Hey, life comes at you fast. Our friends at Mortgage Right, they're faster. Looking to refinance with a multitude of trusted professionals behind them. Mortgage Right has got your back. Whether you need a cash out refi to pay off the debt, make home repairs, or you're just looking for a lower interest rate, Mortgage Right has the right option for you. Visit MortgageRight.com slash TNR to get started today. NMLS 2239, equal housing lender. So an accused burglar told cops that he broke into a vehicle so he could, quote, see his imaginary girlfriend, Emma. Oh, well, she's got a good name. Was now, she in the front seat or back seat? He, he takes it a little it. deeper. He says that he only gets to visit while, quote, tripping on meth, according to a Florida police report. She's real picky when she, she lets me come over. Yeah. Emma's got some strings to her. I don't wanna, you shouldn't stay with her. <laughs> Matthew Huber, 43 years old, was arrested Tuesday evening after witnesses spotted him attempting to burglarize a Nissan truck parked outside of a Walmart in Vero Beach. Now, during police questioning... Huber uh, reportedly admitted to opening the vehicle's tailgate and, quote, looking for something to take. Now, that's when he explained he intended to sell those things for some math so he could see his girlfriend, Emma. It's a love sense. story. Love story, Jim. Yeah, it's, 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 you love a good love story. It's a modern-day Romeo and right. Juliet yep. with um, bad teeth. <laughs> cops didn't care. They arrested him. Oh, also man. Had, also Kill had a conce- Joyce. concealed weapon on him. You guys want to guess what the weapon was? Um, um, nunchucks. Shovel. Uh, throwing star. Butterfly knife. Uh, mm. Ooh. I like a good throwing star. Do you think him is going to visit him in prison? Uh, has he got Conjugal meth? Conjugal visit? Got meth. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. A nurse has failed in her bid to sue the NHS after claiming she was being hypnotized at work, causing her to fart. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, the health worker lost her tribunal after insisting she was unfairly dismissed after being possessed and, quote, gaslight. The nurse said she was suffering from unwelcome gastrointestinal disturbances at work, including f- flatulence. Yep. Now, a tribunal has also heard she claimed that she was, quote, gaslighted through the use of low frequency sound waves and her private parts were, quote, being attacked. I, I, I wonder if I, I ever do that when I sleep. I would imagine, right? That's just a natural function. You know, I would ask Maggie if I were you. I really don't want to know. You I don't want to asked, worry about it while I sleep. You literally just said, I wonder <laughs> if. And well, I don't want to know for real. Oh. But I would imagine, yes. It's probably a pretty natural thing when I'm yeah, asleep or hypnotized. Yeah. Now, the uh, she's blaming the experiences on poor heating and ventilation at the hospital unit where she worked. Can I can I give you a, a little gym secret? She was this? fired, by the way, in December, December 2019. At least for farting is, too much? This is, um, no, I think she's bringing this suit up after the fact oh, okay. that she yeah. was fired. Yeah. Um, Original, though. Occasionally, if I've got to rip one, I do it when I'm in the car by myself. Right. But but I I, rip. I don't want people. I know Forster's shaking his head like, really, I left my career for this guy. You know, <laughs> you, you know, ship happens, right? <laughs> I do, I do. But I am so like I'm uncomfortable, even people thinking that that may be what I'm doing. So I act like I'm getting something from the floorboard of the other side or looking in the glove compartment. <laughs> Wow. No, Just sorry. so people behind it's me at the it's, stoplight it's do not think. It's bigger than that, right? There's a rip. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that, is that Emmy winner Jim Dunaway? He's getting something out of his floorboard. <laughs> Why is he looking for yeah. something? He's dropping floor. ass on two of these. <laughs> He's ripping He's one. Ripping <laughs> one. Okay, we've got a uh, pensioner in Russia who attacked a man with an axe was given a suspended sentence after the victim married her so he could plead with the court that she should not go to prison. Uh, this, is a, this is a triangle. <laughs> By the way, muscle memory, me just leaning over there. Yeah, I was afraid that yeah. one was going to come out. I was too. Almost in the direction. <laughs> now, in the statement released on Thursday, the regional prosecutor's office in Siberia said the woman who is now age 67 had constantly quarreled with the victim, age 38, who described as a, quote, roommate. Yeah. Oh, oh hey. I heard this phrase. You yeah. know, roommate. Yeah. You and I are constantly quarreling. <laughs> yes, me and my roommate. Now, the argument stemmed from his, quote, unwillingness to keep the apartment clean and orderly. Things took a violent turn in September of 2019 during the consummation or the consumption. Yeah, they didn't consummate this. <laughs> Very different meetings. Yeah. During the consumption of alcohol yeah. with friends, according to the prosecutor's office. Now, after coming home, the woman approached the victim from behind while he was watching TV. She then struck him with an axe multiple times in the head, and ribs, and neck. How is this guy even alive? I don't know. Wow. She must be really, must be really dull axe. 
Now, when responders arrived at the property, it seemed that he did not want his attacker to take the blame. The victim then tried to, quote, convince the medics and police who answered the call that he injured himself from an accidental fall. (laughs) Now, later, the motives from the behavior became clear. During the trial, the man proposed to the defendant, and they got married, according to the statement, adding that as a, quote, spouse, that the uh, he asked the court to not imprison the defendant. However, she was given three years suspended sentence and a probation period of three years. She got out of prison. Back though. to the uh, headline for uh, Dunaway. Yeah, for that story, accident or not. <laughs> yes. Back to the uh, passing gas story. Ashley says Dunaway might be an overthinker. <laughs> no, no. Uh, thank you, Ashley. No, okay, I do. These are ways gym class used to be so much worse. Dodgeball. 1922 P guide put out by the junior ROTC describes a version of dodgeball where a team stands in a circle. The other team congregates in the middle. The outer team then wallops the inner team with medicine balls, like legitimately in 1922 medicine balls. Medicine balls that the would hurt. Leather bound that weighed between seven and 12 pounds. I loved dodgeball. Now we would do it just half court of the basketball. Yeah. One side ball. of the other war ball. Basically. Yeah, is had, that what that is? War yeah, ball? War but ball. it was a rubbery, yeah. the rubber ball. You can't play that anymore. Yeah. yeah. It was this. Yeah. You could palm it. Yeah. 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 Well, they had the bigger one, but the one you could palm, you could fire. Missiles. That's right. Yeah. Now wall ball was, if it hits the wall, you got to catch it off the wall or you got to run touch the wall before you get hit with it. Right. That was done with the tennis ball. Oh, uh, okay. We no, we used to play with the bigger yeah, We just played war ball and you had, I like um, war ball. Mid court, you yep. couldn't cross it. That's right. If yeah. you caught somebody, they were if out. You caught it in the air, they were out. They were out, and it was his last person. It was a fun game. It was nothing wrong with that game. If you caught it, you also brought somebody back the, in, the right? The problem was, and this is you terrible, that, yeah. but but like the kids that didn't really want to play sat at the back. Yeah, they so, stood so, at the back, yeah. and so the kids we would that take didn't really want to. play. <laughs> well, we would take were. shots with right. the, with and oh, yeah. try to hit the heater, and if you hit them right in the head, it would bounce off against the the bricks on the back. The double hit, yeah. That's why it's outlaw. Because people that did stuff people like, like us, people, people like that, you, yes. yeah. Uh, how about this gym class? P and Sparta, they said, was really rough. Now, in the warmongering Greek city state, boys attended a program called the Agaji. <laughs> now, the first stage for ages 7 to 13 was like a five year long combination of basic training, fraternity hazing, and a, gr- a bear grill show. Students were provided little clothing, had to make their own beds, and actually build a bed for yourself. They were kept half starved. Stealing food was encouraged. If you were caught, though, you would be beaten and flogged for your lack of skill. Jeez. Oh, wow. Long how time was, ago, though. That was PE today. Um, <laughs> that was P- we lost Billy. Yeah. Oh, he was just, oh, come on, man. Yeah. I'm yeah. beaten and flogged. He was, was not just one. I used to complain about having to climb that rope and touch the roof at the gym. Did you guys ever do no, that? No, we never did that at yeah. Saks. Yeah, we had to do yeah. that. Yeah. I never could do it. Um, and finally, Way's gym class used to be so much worse. One gym class was basically CrossFit for kids. The La Sierra High School program required students to do high-intensity circuit, push-ups, pull-ups, and an obstacle course. At the basic level, students were doing, among other feats, six pull-ups. By the way, the Marine Corps only requires three pull-ups. Really? Wow. physical exam. Yeah. It's hard to believe. That is. Um, finally, I've got classy slang terms for naughty parts from the past 600 years. Okay. Here let's, are see the can name, let's see if Brent Brown can hit the parts. Go. Female privates. Thatched cottage. I, mean, I think it's obvious what okay. the parts are, Jim. The old thatched cottage. <laughs> <laughs> How about Miss Flub's parlor? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, I think that's Miss Flub's parlor. There's also Mount Pleasant. The final two are my favorite. These are classy slang terms for female private parts 600 years ago. The Phoenix Nest. <laughs> Rise, and, my child. And ladies low toupee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, I've got male privates. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. How about credentials? <laughs> uh, can I check your credentials? How Jim. about the matrimonial peacemaker? <laughs> the scepter. <laughs> the scepter. And the two best. The pioneer of nature. <laughs> and the silent flute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Sorry, that way too much. The low toupee is so good. Uh, uh, Jesus. That, that, my friend, is trash. <laughs> you get the light again? Yeah. That's two, three times you hit the light. Hey, no place like home, uh, Brown. Nobody knows that better than our friends at Mortgage. Yeah. Right? Locations nationwide. Perfect matchmaker <laughs> to connect you with the home of your dreams. Mortgage Rights team of skilled professionals. They've got the skills and knowledge to move you in with confidence. Visit mortgageright.com slash TNR to get started today. All right. That's, uh, we're brought to you by our friends at Champy's Chicken on Highway 119 in Alabaster. Over there, uh, 
John wants to know, can Coach O do a good job with defensive lines? you think he's going to coach again? I mean, he's getting so much money. I don't think he'll be an assistant again. Yeah, I mean, if you think he's going to go to the Saban Rehab Program with that kind of money, I yeah. would not well, Unless think so. he just really wants to coach. I, I, the way he talked, he did. He was talking about going to Sonic and getting cheeseburgers yeah. and saying I mean, he's, he's going to get away from it. He's 60. I don't know, I yeah. don't know about that. Nick Saban's news conference at the top of the hour. The best moment from Nick Saban postgame in Starkville when we come back. Follow the next round on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Next Round Live. At Amherst, you always come first, especially during this summer of freedom. That's why they're offering their very best rates to members right now, so you can hit the road and see it all with an even lower auto loan. And while you're feeling so free, you'll get even more for free from Amherst, like free gas when you refinance your car, free rewards on checking, and the chance to get more free and giveaways and prizes. Amherst is making your summer freer than ever because this is your summer, the summer of freedom at Amherst. For more information, visit them online, amherst.org slash promotions. Available to qualifying members only. Certain restrictions apply. Amherst is an equal housing lender, NMLS number 403456. Federally insured by the NCUA. No purchase necessary. For complete offer details and rules, call 1-800-633-8431 or visit them online for more information. Go to Amherst.org. Again, go online, Amherst.org. At ERA King Real Estate, they're empowered by technology and driven by community. What does that mean? It means you are the reason they have the most extensive training and the most innovative tools in the business. ERA King believes a culture focused on building value in their agents produces big value for their clients and their families. To find your agent, text MOVE to 35260. That's MOVE to 35260. ERA King, working hard to make home buying easy. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. You've heard me for years talk about our friends at Bromberg's Jewelers, and we welcome you to stop by and see that great customer service at the Mountain Brook and Summit locations, but we'd also love for you to check out their new online shop. They've got plenty to choose from, great gifts, big and small. Available online, they've got David Yurman, Tudor Watches, Select Diamond and Gemstone Jewelry, William Henry, seasonal and favorite giftware items and baby gifts as well. They've even got an online sell section. For more information, Bromberg's.com. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Hi, this is Wes McClooney, owner of the New Balance Birmingham store. Getting the whole family into comfortable shoes can be an incredible feat, but not at New Balance Birmingham. We have the largest selection and inventory of any specialty shoe store, and our fit specialists will match your feet with the perfect New Balance shoe. Come see us at the New Balance Birmingham store, located on Highway 280 next to Chick-fil-A. Experience the difference a custom fit makes today at New Balance Birmingham. Is that the sound of an ooey-gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of (laughs) P-I-Z-Z-A? Obviously, but as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh yeah, that's the sound of a freshly opened fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Stay up to date with the next round on the website, nextroundlive.com. The latest videos from the show, plus podcasts like The Mystery Fifth Hour, Bama and Bourbon, Last Call, and others from our Double Down Media podcast family. You can start your day with the latest college football stories, plus easy to listen to hour-by-hour downloads of the live show. Nextroundlive.com, a great way to stream the show live or shop in the Next Round store. Make nextroundlive.com your homepage. That's nextroundlive.com. 
Follow Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The social media team at Next Round Live is dedicated to giving you daily news conferences and practice video from UAB, Alabama, Auburn, and around college football. Follow and compare to the sites you used to visit. You'll also get the latest highlights and news from the Next Round Daily Show. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss a thing. Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. See more at nextroundlive.com. Let's do a Precision Sports injury update brought to you by the great folks of Precision Sports. Hey, are you suffering from the old sports injury that won't go away? Maybe you tweaked a joint being a weekend warrior. Precision has nine locations in the Birmingham metro area to get your life back on track, including the new Southern Orthopedic Sports Medicine Associates location right there in Jasper. Your health can't wait. Call 855-219-6200 or visit precisionsportsortho.com. First off, um, Luke Doty's got a foot injury. Uh, Shane Beamer says Zeb Nolan will start for South Carolina against Texas A&M. He came in and led them to the oh, win. He did. He, he led them on the drive to beat Vandy and threw the touchdown pass. Said, said he got in the huddle, told him, hey, look, keep me clean, and yep. we're going to go down and do this. And look, they went down they and did it. it. I, I can't believe they struggled with Vandy like uh, they did. I'm with you. Yep. But, but they won. But they won but the they game. Won the game. Um, of course, a big uh, eye to keep an eye on this week is Hendon Hooker. I haven't seen an update on Hendon. You got one? What yeah, is it? Uh, according to Josh Heupel, they are day-to-day right now is how he's describing him and Tyon Evans. Um, does it look like a long-term injury, he says? And that's pretty much all he said right now. So Hendon Hooker is day-to-day coming into the Bama game. And, of course, um, we keep an eye at Georgia, who's in a bye week now. Then they play uh, Florida. Two more weeks of rest for the lat muscle of JT Daniels. But in our precision sports update, what do you do in that situation now? Because Stetson Bennett, the fourth now, has started three straight games. And I mentioned to Brown in our Saturday breakout, I watched them and I don't think they're doing any, they're not holding Uh -uh. anything back. They're not protecting him in any way. They're calling the offense for Stetson Bennett. I don't know, Brown, how good this offense is, though. And I give Stetson Bennett a lot of credit. And I do think it's, it's kind of a dilemma now for Kirby Smart moving forward once JT is cleared because Stetson's done everything you could ask of him. He's actually making really, really good throws. He's completing 70% of his his passes now. He's only thrown two picks. So I do think you've got a little bit of a dilemma, and I'm not going to be surprised at all if it's just Stetson Bennett moving forward. But Brock Bowers, if you can somehow take him out of the game plan – once Georgia plays an elite team, I wonder how effective their offense will be. Yeah, I mean, two more touchdowns for that young freshman. That guy is a stud. And, um, and now they're about to play a Florida team that gave up 287 rushing yards to Ty Davis Price. Um, who saw that coming? A this team week? that can't run the football. Yep. They, they give up that much yards to a team that historically had had a historically bad run of uh, running the football. Yep. And I would assume on our injury report, all the Ole Miss players will be hydrated in time to play at home this weekend <laughs> against LSU. That's our Precision Sports update. Let's listen to Nick Saban afterwards. If you're watching the game, uh, they're, they're lined up inside the five. Um, Bryce Young's empty backfield. Now he is, as, as Nick Saban's calling the timeout, he is bringing Brian Robinson back to line up bus behind him. But Nick Saban, when he saw the empty set in the backfield, rushes and calls the timeout. He gets asked about that timeout sequence, and then the next play out of the timeouts, a handoff to Brian Robinson and a touchdown. Here's what Nick Saban said post game. We had a play call. We called timeout. We changed his play. <laughs> Did you see something you didn't like? Or? <laughs> If you want to know the truth, I'm not going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. So when you go fast and you're using signs and you're going no huddle, those plays get called and those signs go up and those signals start, it's really hard to change plays unless you call timeout. And, 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 and last week we didn't call timeout. This week we did. <laughs> uh, you but know you, what that is, man? I, I don't know if you guys – I didn't see this until right now. Okay. And Nick Saban being that jovial, I don't think I've ever seen it in that setting. It was kind of weird. I agree. What it kind of tells me is going back last week against A&M, I think he was in shock, like really believing we're not an elite team. And then after seeing what we saw in Starkville, he was a little relieved. Hey, 
these guys focus as they did against Ole Miss and as they did tonight against Mississippi State, we can be really good. Maybe so. I'll say, too, though, on that play, they didn't just change the play. It was empty with Robinson motioning back in. After the timeout, I believe it was two tight ends, and I know it was eye formation. Yeah. I believe they were in 22 and ran the eye. So, I mean, that's about as opposite as you could get without running the wishbone. Yeah, and, and it, was a, it was a statement made. He's well, like, listen, I, yeah. I said – I said we didn't challenge in the right. red zone run game. We call a timeout. He sends him out. We'll hear from Nick Saban at the top of the hour. From Matt Hayes at uh, Saturday Down South, Alabama, Texas A&M. Now, I'm going to point something out on this. These numbers can be a touch misleading. Alabama, Texas A&M, Alabama was 60% pass, 59 passes, 41 rushes. Alabama, Mississippi State, Alabama was 60% rush, 41 rushes, 28 passes. Now, what I would point out, it, those numbers jump out at you, but the difference is in A&M, they were playing from behind a lot. So they right. naturally had to throw just a little bit more. And in state, they were playing ahead a lot, so they were burning clock. So that's going to get those numbers out of whack a little bit. But still, you went week to week from 60% pass to 60% run. So it felt like a statement was made there. I don't think Bama can lose a game going 60% run, do you? I'm saying if the, at, at the end of the game, if they've run the ball 60% oh, of the yeah, time. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That means they're that far ahead. That, yeah, yeah if, if Alabama's ever 60% rush, that's a good sign. Okay, let's we'll get back to football. Nick Saban's news conference coming up at the top of the hour. But uh, four good minutes here on the fact that basketball season's about to crank up and the AP Top 25 poll is out. Gonzaga is your preseason number one. UCLA is two, Kansas three, Villanova four, Texas is five. Michigan, Purdue, Baylor, Duke, Kentucky's at 10. Kentucky's the highest ranked SEC team at 10. Um, Alabama is the second highest ranked SEC team. They're in at 14. Arkansas is 16. Tennessee is 18. And Auburn is 22. And you get some others getting votes of some other SEC teams down the line there. But that's the preseason rankings. Both Alabama and Auburn in the preseason AP Top 25. That doesn't happen often. I don't know if it ever has. Mm. I, bet I bet it, in the 80s. Yeah, I bet in the 80s. Maybe so. Somebody will have to look and tell me. I, I don't I know 80, where to I bet 85 up. both were ranked. Um, maybe so. As Paul points out as well on Twitter, Alabama only has to play number one Gonzaga, number three Kansas, yes. number eight Baylor, Number 12, Memphis, and number 15, Houston in the non-conference. Yeah, in the non-conference. That's a pretty good non-conference schedule. Yeah. And then you add in... That was, that was one-third right. of the top 15. Yeah, and then you add in all the conference teams that are ranked in Kentucky and Arkansas and Tennessee and Auburn. and Some of those are twice. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty tough schedule Alabama's got. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be exciting if you're an Alabama basketball fan to see something like that and, and to know that you can lose two or three or four of those games and it really doesn't matter because the SEC... I mean, there were a few years ago that we were doing a show together when the SEC was trying to get two teams in the NCAA tournament. You've got five now in the top 25, and I think some of these teams are probably they're – not, they're not high enough in this ranking. They, they will be higher when the season is over. No, I see what you're yeah. saying. And I was in Starkville over the weekend. The Mississippi State folks are excited about their basketball team. You know LSU is going to be good in basketball because, you know, Will Wade is still there. We talked about that this weekend in Starkville. Uh, no, it doesn't matter whether you're an Alabama fan or a state fan. The fact that Will Wade still has a job is is amazing to all fan bases. It really is. I mean, like if I'm under NCAA investigation, I'll point over there and say, how, how is this guy still coaching? So that's seven really good teams right there. Didn't even mention Florida, which has fallen, fallen off under Mike White. But that I would imagine that team's going to be pretty good. Exciting year ahead. And Andy Kennedy's UAB team is one of the best rebuilt teams and he kept some really good guys from last year. What, they went 22 games yeah, last year? Got no votes, but uh, I think it's a team that could challenge for the top 25 if you can get it all together. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, exciting to have basketball coming around the corner, especially with what's on the table uh, here locally. All right, Nick Saban's news conference coming up. In the NFL yesterday, Trayvon Diggs, another pick six. Uh, as the Cowboys beat Mac Jones and the Patriots, uh, Boy, I took loved, that to the house. After that pick six, though, you know, Josh McDaniels dials it up and finally lets Matt, uh, Mac unleash one. Very next play. The very yep. next play. And I just think if, if Mac is going to be the quarterback of the future, especially now this Patriots team, and they pointed this out on the broadcast, they've lost four consecutive home games. Yes. First time since 1993. It's been almost 30 years. So if you are really rebuilding, 
let this guy just go on to take shots. Big, yeah. Biggest quarterback day yardage wise against uh, Belichick ever. Bills, Dak Prescott. Bills and Titans tonight. We'll get to the Nick Saban news conference next. Follow LT on Twitter at the Lance Taylor. It is the American dream to buy your own home. Ryan Brown here for the next round. Mortgage Right wants to make that dream a reality with branches across the country. Mortgage Right has all the resources of a nationwide organization while maintaining the charm of a local lender. Mortgage Right makes home buying simple. If you are looking for a quick and caring mortgage experience, Mortgage Right is your go-to lender. Get started by visiting mortgageright.com slash TNR. Mortgage Right, NMLS 2239, Equal Housing Lender. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Let Holly Mac Wilson put you in a new home for the holidays. A new place to have a family Thanksgiving dinner. A new place to put up the Christmas tree and hide the presents. A new place to ring in the new year with friends and family. Holly Mac Wilson, putting a new meaning to home for the holidays. Call Holly Mac Wilson today, 205 901 9446. That's 205 901 9446. Holly Mac Wilson, a Tuscaloosa Keller Williams agent. One Man in the Toolbox has provided professional handyman services since 1997. Honesty and reliability are qualities that embody every one of their employees. From residential to commercial, One Man in the Toolbox has the background to help you with almost any project. 823-2111. Want more of the show? Download the app or visit nextroundlives.com for the latest podcast, The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and the entire Double Down Media podcast family, all at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. One more of the next round? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast, the Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and the entire Double Down Media podcast family. All at nextroundlive.com and on the next round app. Let's face it, we all have a favorite something. This is LT, talking about my favorite men's store, Shea's in downtown Homewood. Why do I like this store so much? And what makes Shea so unique? Well, to start, they have been in business since 1922. Yes, 1922. And they offer an eclectic mix of menswear brands from classic to contemporary, such names as Zinnia, Canali, Peter Millar, and many more. They have an in-house alteration personnel who understands that fit is key. And Shea's gets it right. Whether they're fitting a suit, shirt, or jeans, they offer unbeatable service with a sales staff that truly understands the products and how they fit your individual lifestyle in any occasion. Whether it's your work, leisure time with friends, or a formal event like a wedding, stop by Shea's and see if you don't agree. This store is simply the best. That is Shea's in historic downtown Homewood, where you will feel at home when you arrive and well-dressed when you leave. Hey, for the best pizza in Birmingham for lunch or dinner, make it Slice. Go see the Bajaya brothers, Jeff, Jason, and Chris. Slice Pizza and Brew is as local as you can get from the ingredients that go into every pizza to the beer on tap. Two great locations, Lakeview and Vestavia. A legendary coach once said, it's not the will to win that matters, it's the will to prepare to win. Bryant Bankers have the dedication and experience to put together a financial game plan that's right for you. Stop by one of the seven Central Alabama locations today or give them a call at 1-855-4-BRYANT to begin preparing for your financial future today. You'll find out what unbeatable service and legendary results are all about. Bryant Bank, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Start your day online at nextroundlive.com. Get all the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. And it's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. And this hour of the show being brought to you by our friends at the Standard for Insurance Agency. Insurance is something you absolutely have to have. You may as well still get the best value for it. So have your coverages ready and what you pay for those coverages every month. And call my friends at the Standard for Insurance group and let them run the numbers and see if they can save for you the way they did for me. 
Auto rates dropped four times the last 12 months, so a great time to call 664-3200 or go to standardforinsurancegroup.com. Tennessee Week, let's listen in to Nick Saban on our Hamburger Heaven on-campus drive through This last game, I thought we played really hard in the game. Uh, played for 60 minutes, tried to finish plays, uh, played the next play regardless of what happened in the game. Uh, when we had bad plays, it wasn't always perfect execution, um, but I think we competed in the game like I'd like to see us compete. Um, you know, the question is, is can this become a part of who we are or does something bad have to happen for us to respond in the way we need to respond? And uh, I think that's a challenge for all of us, and that's a challenge for all of our players and the leadership on our team uh, to continue to do the things we need to do. You know, guys that practice well, played well in the game, guys that prepared well, you know, played well in the game. So that that's something that we need to continue to do. Um, I think the rivalry between, you know, Tennessee and Alabama is, you know, one of the the, the old great rivalries in college football. It goes way back. I know it means a lot of lot to a lot of people you know in our state uh, certainly means a lot to me and uh, hopefully we'll get that translated to our team um you know Josh Hype was done a really good job at um at Tennessee their team is playing really well they're explosive on offense they make a lot of big plays they run the ball very effectively um I don't really think the quarterback situation regardless of whatever it is both guys are very capable uh, they're very similar in style in terms of the way they play. They're big guys, strong arms, accurate passers, and they have ability to make plays with their feet and run quarterback runs. Uh, they have good skill players outside. Uh, their defense is playing, you know, really well. They're mostly a four-down team, but um, they do they do a good job. They've they played uh, really well together as a unit. Create a lot of negative plays, and um, they've got good specialists on special teams and. Uh, they played extremely well uh, on teams as well. So all the way around, it's going to be a very challenging game for us. Okay, we will start things off with Nick Kelly and Tuscaloosa. Nick, go ahead. You guys were really effective on third down um, against Mississippi State. Uh, what, what do you think clicked there? What, what are the things you guys can replicate? Well, you know, I'm not satisfied with the way we played on third down. I think there was couple third down and tens and one third down and 12 where we gave up first downs. Um, and I think in those kind of situations, whether it's screen, screens, vertical passing game, whatever, uh, we need to continue to work on trying to be more efficient and effective, um, you know, on third down in terms of getting off the field. And uh, we did do a good job at times, uh, but that's something that we need to continue to work on. Okay, we will go to Michael Casagrande. Michael. Yep, through seven games this season, how would you describe the identity of this team? Well, I, I'd say, you know, right now, uh, based on what we just did, uh, that's still sort of up in the air. Um, you know, if we continue to play like we played in the last game, play for 60 minutes, play hard, support each other, play together as a group, uh, compete in the game, play the next play, uh, not look at the scoreboard, uh, I think that we can – develop a really positive identity. I think we took the first step of that in the last game, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to build on that in the future. We'll go to Aaron Settles. When you have a player like Will Anderson, who last week very publicly held his team accountable, uh, both I'm guessing internally and he said some stuff to the media, what does that mean to you when you have a player who, who's willing to take on that and, and sort of challenge his teammate? Well, I think you need leadership on every team. Uh, I think that there's two things about leadership, and I've talked about this before. You know, you have to, have to have people who are willing to take responsibility for leadership, which we have some players stepping up on our team to do that. Uh, but the other players on the team have to be willing to accept that leadership and respond to um, the standard that uh, the leaders are trying to get everybody to aspire to. So um, I, I'm happy that that's starting to develop on this team. I think it's really critical. Uh, to having a successful team that you have really positive, good leadership on your team. We'll go to Charlie Potter next. Charlie. Hey, Coach. Uh, it looked like uh, Byron Young maybe got banged up late in the game. Do you have an update on his status? Uh, he's got a little, you know, shoulder problem. Uh, he's kind of day-to-day. So um, we'll, we, we, we can't make a call on where he is right now. Okay, we'll go to Mike Rodak. Mike, go ahead. 
What was your message to Jai Hall after he publicly expressed some frustration after the game and just how much more complicated are those situations now with transfer rules being as they are? Well, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, look, it still comes down to players creating value for themselves by what they do. Um, you know, I've said this before that, um, you know, there's players that have talent, um, but they have to learn how to use it and they have to use it in an effective way in the way they practice. Uh, it's up to the player uh, to um, impress the coaches that they can be trusted to go in the game and do what they're supposed to do. Um, so when players get frustrated, you know, they sometimes don't respond the way they should uh, in terms of their preparation and focusing on what they need to do to become a good player uh, because they're so concerned about how much they're playing. So, um, you know, if, if players are competitors, uh, they probably will be frustrated that they're not playing. But it's how do you respond to that? You know, what, what do you do to respond to that in a positive way that's going to help you improve your circumstances in the future? And the way to do that is do the right things and go out and practice and play well so that um, not only you, but your teammates and everybody in the organization can trust you to go do what you're supposed to do. We'll go to Tony. Kind of on that note, we did not see uh, Javon Baker uh, travel with the team. What's his status? And then also just the receivers as a whole, how have you seen that, that group, the kind of the backups on that group kind of mature uh, over the season? Uh, they're doing fine, but it's the same thing. You know, when players do what they're supposed to do. Um, they travel, they play, they contribute to the team. And that's every player's choice. Every player has a choice to do the things that they need to do to contribute to the team. And everybody's got to buy in. Um, so, you know, players that do that travel players that, um, have issues with that. Um, they're not really doing what they should do. I, I mean, th th that's our job as a coach to, uh, make sure that people are doing the right things. And, uh, if they're not doing the right things, there's consequences for that. There's consequences for that life. Uh, there's consequences in that, uh, when you're in competitive sports. We'll go to Joey. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, Coach. Last week you talked about using the the loss at AM to kind of you know motivate your team, but also use it as an experience to learn from. How how difficult is it to maintain that intensity that you had at Mississippi State after a big win, you know, moving forward in the season? Well, I think that's probably something, you know, that you know, people like to put negative things that happen to them behind them. Um, but I don't think you know, that's what you want to do in sports. You know, you want to remember what it feels like when uh, you don't have success and let that be a motivating factor for you to do the right things, especially when you did the right things and that helped you play better um, to become a part of who you are. If you really learn from the lesson, you know, that's what, that's what you would do. We'll go to Steven next. Coach, how are you seeing, you know, Trey Sanders become more comfortable working back from all the, the adversity that, he, he's, that he's been through? Well, he's worked really, really hard, and he's making good progress. And it was good to see him get in the game a little bit this last game and make a couple positive runs. And uh, I think that getting his confidence back is a big part of that. Uh, and we're going to continue to work him. And uh, he's have has, has a great attitude about what he's trying to do. So I'm sure he's going to just get better and better. Reminder, you can raise your hand if you have a follow-up. If not, we've got Aaron Suttles. Go ahead, Aaron. You've been involved with a few games where there's been sort of a spontaneous rushing of the field. What's that like to be in the middle of that? And there was an incident Saturday night in Tennessee. Do you feel like the conference can do more to protect the players and the coaches? Uh, I don't think that's my question to, to really answer. I mean, you know, I've said this before. We're in the entertainment business. There's a lot of people that come to the games. They've got a lot of passion and excitement for what they do. Um, hopefully as institutions and fans will always do that in a positive way. Um, and I still got a big bruise on my arm here from, you know, what happened after the Texas A&M game. And I can always just look at that as a reminder to what it feels like to be in that situation and uh, motivate myself to try to do a better job with our players. Okay, coach. That's all we got. Thanks. All right. Thank you.
Mm-hmm. That's Nick Saban in our Hamburger Heaven on campus drive through today, brought to you by the great folks at Hamburger Heaven. Great locations all over Birmingham, including the 280 location, where uh, I always love the number four cheeseburger. You love the good uh, uh, club uh, sandwich, man. Club, yeah. club sandwich. My kids love the milkshakes. Mm-hmm. You can't beat it. Hamburger Heaven, always a great place for you. All right, as we work our way uh, out of what he was talking about there, um, you, you have a receiving core that has so many talented young players and some of them are now getting disgruntled from the lack of playing time. What did you think of, of the questions there of a couple of them who, who are not getting the opportunities they think they should be getting? Well, Baker didn't make the trip and without calling him by name, even though he was asked by name, it's obvious that's who Nick Saban is talking about. He basically said, you earned the right to travel. And if you're not on the travel roster, you didn't do what you're supposed to do in practice or off the field. Uh, Jai Hall um, who tweeted, for those that didn't get the reference, after the game, Ajay Hall basically tweeted that he was quitting. He deleted the tweet, and Nick Saban was asked about that and basically said the same thing. His answer, Lance, was, it is what it is. He didn't exactly say Ajay Hall is still part of the team. He just says it is what it is. Well, I'm sure Hall, you know, coming out of spring, thought that he was going to be one of these impact freshmen. And all these guys want to play, and it starts with a quarterback, and we're starting to see transfer portal with quarterbacks. Now you're going to start to see – everybody that's not playing well you you are but you know to Saban's point you you can't just put guys on the field because they're talented Alabama's got talented guys out their ears yeah look and the good news is Jamison Williams although you know the touches were limited still an explosive guy that made plays when he touched the football John Mechie had his best game of the year you know so you've got guys that are starting to step up Uh, I would tell you that Holden even tweeted afterwards you know he was you know, been waiting, waiting to get this opportunity. He's been waiting to get the opportunity that they gave him the other night, and he took advantage of that. He's apparently doing what he needs to do to be on the on the road trip and to get the ball thrown to him three times the other night. Well, I do think you know there is a spot open for that number three receiver in Alabama's rotation. I mean, Williams and Mechie are your one and two, however you want to put those. Yeah, and I guess going into the season it was Slade, but Slade I mean, Bolton is. It's been okay. They yeah. go to him. So they went to him a good bit Saturday night. He had a catch that got overturned somehow. We talked about bad officiating. I don't know how that one got overturned. Even the Holden tweet, though, had a little bit of – that would rub you the wrong way if you if you think, you know, it's always everybody pulling the rope in the same direction. Sorry for the reference. Uh, can't believe they let me shine. I was waiting. Finger across emoji with a picture of his celebration after the touchdown. Hashtag roll tide. Um, the, the fingers cross – you know, I don't know It's if that's... I, mean, I, I kind of read it as I've been hoping for playing time. I finally got, got it. it. I can't believe I got it. Hope and, it keeps and, happening. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, here's the truth. Treshawn Holden could start at a lot of schools. Right. Right. I mean, he could, he, if, if he wanted to hit the portal, he could start at a lot of schools. And there's a good chance that Hall and Baker could, too. Probably so. And you just have to ask yourself, if you're one of those guys, do I want to play for an elite program where I may not hit the field right away? Or do I want to go to a non-elite program where I can be on the field right away and I'm going to go eight and four, or seven and five, or six and six? I may still get to the league either way, but which experience do I want to have going to the league? Right? Do I want to have an experience where I'm playing on teams that are in the playoffs and in the SEC championship game and playing big time football, or do I want to go somewhere where I can play right away? I'm never going to do any of that, but I'm still in the NFL maybe one day. Yeah, I think it's almost worth. And this is easy to say: biding your time and getting out there as a junior and playing for an elite program where you're on that stage. That's, That's what right. I was saying. And you're playing it, with elite quarterbacks. It only takes one big year. That's all. And it has to come at the right time. Just look at Spencer Radler. If he if he wasn't back this year, if he'd just gone off reputation, he'd be a first-round quarterback. Spencer Radler's got to do some work to get that back now and likely not going to be at Oklahoma. So if you're a freshman – are not a draft-eligible sophomore, it doesn't matter if you have a big year. There's that next year that's got to happen. When you're draft-eligible, it's the college version of the contract year. It's got to time out exactly right. Yeah. right. I mean, it does. It's just, you know, look, Alabama can only have 12 guys, 11 guys, not 12 guys. It would be a penalty, right? Yeah, well, if it goes to review in Birmingham, they'll, never know. they'll, they'll yes. allow it. 11 guys on the field at the same time. And that 11 is pretty darn talented. But to your guy's point, you know, a guy like a Jai Hall might want to talk to John Mechie. It's taken John Mechie, because of all the freaking talent that Alabama's had at receiver, a little bit to even be the number one guy or potentially the number one guy, right? Yep. But to Mechie's credit, you can dog out Mechie all he wants. He had the best game he's had 
at Alabama probably Saturday night. Mechie has stuck around. He's apparently worked hard. And now he's got his chance to shine. It's going to be a small chance to shine in comparison to a Henry Ruggs or a Jerry Judy or a Devontae Smith. Well, Gaston says uh, Dunaway landmining the young Alabama receiving core from last week, drawing parallels to Devontae's class. No, I'm still there. And you saw, you know, JoJo got more snaps, not more targets, more snaps this week. Holden got targets, more snaps this week. I think there's, you know, the coach himself last week talked about getting some of those receivers uh, more playing time. A lot of the young players more playing time. Um, so I think that is something that's still progressing down the road. And you apparently got to do things right in the week leading up to, to get those chances on Saturday. Uh, again, that's Nick Saban, part of our Hamburger Heaven on campus drive through today. And you can see the Hamburger Heaven sauce, which is fantastic, oh, right in front of LT right there. Stuff. Yeah. Hey, and I just wanted to bring up Jamar Chase who now is with the Cincinnati Bengals and had that incredible – he won the Blitnikoff, what, two years ago in 19, took last year off. You know, in 18, he only had 23 receptions. Yeah. So it was really – as back to your point, one great year, that's all it takes. Yeah. Uh, tell us something about yeah. Hamburger Heaven. Since 1982, Hamburger Heaven serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order, always fresh, never frozen, hand-pattied each day for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Visit any of the four locations – Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. Okay, we've got our, our three and uh, out coming up in our next segment. We still have a locked lock to get to. You got football tonight with the Bucks, excuse me, the Bills and the Titans, and you also got baseball tonight. Astros Red Sox series tied at one. They go to Fenway for Game Three tonight. That game just after seven o'clock on FS1. If I asked you something we haven't talked about yet, because obviously Orgeron's. Uh, situation, what happened in Knoxville, Alabama playing great. We had Bo Nix on earlier, Bo playing great. Something we haven't talked about yet from this college football weekend that you wanted to bring up. It can be your best or your worst, but something that we haven't hit hit yet, Brown. What is it? No answer. I mean, I'm trying to think. We've covered a lot of things. Uh, if we mentioned your boy Sark can't close out a fourth quarter. That's a good place to, a good place yeah. to go right there. I, I was going to bring up that Oklahoma State's defense – is the best in the Big 12, and that sort of runs into that, that they scored the last 19 points in that game. And how come all gas, no breaks works for a half, but it doesn't work in the second you half? You run out of gas, yeah. apparently. When well, you do I give way. Mike Gundy a lot of credit, too. And watching, it seems like a different Mike Gundy. Watching the post-game interview with Mike Gundy and, you know, talking about Jalen Warren, a kid that transferred in from Utah State, the running back who was just, you know, really taking the Big 12 by storm. And for him to adjust his coaching style, we talked about, I think they were 80th in total offense. They're eighth in passing in the Big 12. Eighth in passing. This yeah. is a team that used to lead the nation in By passing. By the way, with right. a really experienced quarterback in Spencer yeah. Sanders. But Mike Gundy has changed, it, it almost seems like, philosophy. At least based on 2021, it's about running the football and it's about defense being dominating. And think, that's think what about they it. were in the second half. His best team was a decade ago now. Yeah, Ten yeah, years ago. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. But, but I tell you what, we're heading towards an, uh, an undefeated Bedlam. I mean, that's a, you think Oak State goes down this I week. I think they go down this week. But if they don't, we're headed towards an undefeated Bedlam. Charlie yeah. thinks, uh, excuse me, Brett thinks Oakey State can win the Big 12 this year. Oh, I think they could lose this weekend and still win the Big 12. Um, after this, they've got Kansas, West Virginia, TCU, Texas Tech, and then Oklahoma. So but, Iowa State over Oklahoma State is this week's Purdue over Iowa for you is, already? Yeah. Already. He's calling it on Monday. Yeah, this is a lot easier than Purdue over Iowa. What's the well, number in that one, Lance? Uh, I think Iowa State's a six and a half point favorite. Mm, is this your upset alert? I mean, it's not an upset. I mean, yeah, oh, Iowa a State's a favorite. Yeah. Wow. Iowa State's unranked I'm, on my board. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Oklahoma State. My upset alert. It does Knock seem. It, it does seem automatic. They're number eight in the mean, country. How could they not? They're Jeff? unbeaten. They're That's number eight. On the way talking. <laughs> you mean, yeah. you mean to tell me number eight's catching points? <laughs> Give me that upset. You mean to tell me LeBron and the Heat can't? <laughs> they're getting two points against the Pacers. <laughs> how many mistakes did I lose on that? Like three yeah, years in let, a row. Let me check that. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Iowa State right now is. It's gone up to seven. Uh, now there mm -hmm. was some developing news during the Nick Saban news conference. Ole Miss was ten and a half as they were going to host LSU, but uh, Lane Kiffin letting us in some information about his quarterback going into that big game in Oxford. Well, it's puzzling because Matt Corral talked to the media after the game, seemed to indicate he was okay. Lane Kiffin even tweeted this morning, we need a good crowd at Vault Hemingway. Who doesn't want to come see Matt Corral play? And then in his press conference just now, Lane Kiffin doesn't go into details, according to Neil McCready of rebelgrove.com. 
but says he doesn't feel really good about Matt Corral playing Saturday against LSU. It, it looked bad initially. It, it did, but he finished the game. I mean, that's a significant absence if he's not playing against LSU. Yeah, because who is going to be your – I mean, because I know – It's not Plumley, yeah. But Plumley got some reps earlier yeah, this He year. did, but they went to that other kid. Yeah, the, the other back kid, I can't they, even say his name right now. They rolled in. I can't even think of it. Yeah. Because it's such such the Matt Corral show. Um, so that's significant watching Ole Miss because you play it, you play it out in your head right now. You you can see 11-1 and one for that team. 11-1. and one. You mentioned UAB's Andy Kennedy. Luke Altmaier, by the way, is the other kid we were yeah. trying to think of. Did yeah, I ahead. see you retweet Andy Kennedy saying that Matt Corral's a better quarterback than, than Johnny Menzel. Menzel? You don't think so? No. It's the mo- But let me tell you what. I told Dunaway this Saturday night in our, no, in our not, Saturday not, breakout. Not this, in no. our Saturday breakout, though, that's the closest Matt uh, – that's the closest Johnny Menzel-like performance we've had since Menzel in the SEC. That was Manziel, like you got to oh, give me was. that that yeah, one yeah, game. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he 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 did everything. It's like sixty. How many plays? Okay. Uh, they did. They ran a hundred. Again, and he was sixty-five of them. I think Matt Corral them? is an elite quarterback. I think he's one of the top two or three quarterbacks right now in college football. But what Johnny Manziel, he did it against elite teams. That was Tennessee. Yeah, Sixty-eight. I mean, but do you Johnny. want to be a planet or do you want to be a comet? Johnny Manziel was a comet. Yes. <laughs> so Corral's going to be the planet? Well, I think he has more sustain, uh, sustain, sustainability you than would, Johnny Manziel. Though, Manziel back in the, way, the planets, you're going wrong here. The planets have been around. Okay, so you're saying yeah, Matt Manziel Corral's is a, a comet. It burned quick. It was bright. So Matt Corral's a planet. They've been around since God Don't created Don't step them. on his yeah. analogy. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was trying to figure it the out. The planet's always there. You can count on the planets unless it's Pluto. Pluto is in planets. and out. Pluto's in and out. <laughs> we I think what happens is tonight. we forget how good Manziel was based on the pro career and all the yeah. other baggage. Shooting star, man. It, it, it was, but he was a great college player i agree with kennedy corral better than johnny menzel oh no 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 no, 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 no. I, I, again no. saturday night was the most corral like performance we've seen we saw corral since... roll into brian denny what happened a few weeks ago got shellac we, we saw johnny menzel yeah. do one whatever. time one okay. he beat alabama okay. one time i don't care he still uh, beat him listen in my universe though i'm jimmy alabama alabama's not the sun it's not the be all end all just because johnny menzel beat alabama one time um, by that analogy then you've got to say jimbo no. fisher is a great coach Oh, you've got to say Manziel beat other teams. <laughs> no, wait, Jimbo Fisher just beat Alabama. No. Go look at that other Manziel performance against Alabama. Yeah, I mean, they, I know he only won one game, but the other one was a phenomenal yeah. performance. If, Alabama if, couldn't if, keep him off the field. Johnny Manziel, Mike Evans. much better that was all college. Mike Evans. Johnny Manziel, much better college player than Jimbo Fisher, college coach. Hmm. Not even close. Uh, you can find printed all you want. Matt Corral will be when history writes itself. Matt Corral will be a better quarterback than Johnny Manziel. Well, he might never play again now that you just said that. <laughs> Part of our show being brought to you by the great folks with Nut Dust. You're getting ready for another weekend or another day's work. Nut Dust is there with you. Yeah, Nut Dust redefining the use and feel of body powder. Nut Dust is talc free. It's an all natural body powder, great for all over the body, feet below the belt. Available in four great scents: Naked Voyager, Laddie, and Wilding. All day, every day. Nut Dust has got you covered. For more information, visit officialnutdust.com. Put in the promo code FALL, as in season, F-A-L-L. Go to officialnutdust.com. Follow Brownie on Twitter and Instagram at Ryan Brown Live. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but there is one game I don't ever want to be out of, and that's why I'm glad we have the Alabama Men's Clinic right here in Birmingham. They have treated thousands of Alabama men for ED. There are many different causes like a heart condition, diabetes, a reaction to medication, or simply low testosterone. The Alabama Men's Clinic staff will find the problem, and some of you will be back in the game the day after your first appointment. You can set up that appointment by calling 205-598-7000 or go to the website, alabamamensclinic.com. I know what you're thinking. A lot of guys actually just take a pill, but sometimes that pill doesn't work or it can give you unwanted side effects. Let the pros come up with your game plan. There's no need to wait. Depression, anxiety, a new connection with that special person in your life. It could be all just one important play away. Call 205-598-7000 or get back in the action at alabamamensclinic.com. Ship happens. Give us a call to get ship started. Call Griffin and Jeff today, 205-605-8101. You can always go online. Go to GetShipStarted.com. Ship happens to get ship done. Don't ever have an accident. Ship yourself. Don't ever have an accident. Ship yourself. Go to GetShipStarted.com. 
Cowan Equipment has had the honor of providing heavy equipment solutions to Alabama contractors for more than 80 years now. With one of the largest and most diverse heavy equipment rental fleets in the southeast, stocked by Volvo Construction Equipment, Takuchi Mini Excavators, Track Loaders and Skid Steers, Groove and Cabelco Cranes, Dusan Portable Compressors and Light Towers, Indico Breakers, and much more. Cowan is your one-stop shop for all your heavy equipment needs. From short and long-term rental options, flexible rent-to-own, or straight purchase options, parts in stock, and service you can depend on. Let Cowan show you what it means to have a trusted partner who will keep you ahead of the game. Call Cowan at 800-239-2694 or visit Cowan.com. Again, where you can always expect extra effort when it comes to your heavy equipment needs, call Cowan, the name you have trusted for decades, 800-239-2694 or visit them online at Cowan.com. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. As you guys know, the team at Hempel Services are my go-to guys for all things heating and cooling. Recently, a unit went out in the house. Of course, Hempel were the guys I called. Always professional, always courteous. Hempel Services, they've been serving Birmingham since 1954. They're who Birmingham trusts. They're who I trust to do the job right and at a fair price. Hempel Services, independent train dealer, and they service all makes and models for all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs. Do what I do. Call Hempel Services. It's hard to stop a train. Do it now. 205-229. 2090 that's 229 if you're looking for a fun golf atmosphere that is laid back with a peaceful environment the meadows golf course in harpersville right off of highway 280 is perfect for you just a short drive from birmingham this 18 hole 200 acre track with rolling fairways and ample greens is the definition of peacefulness of the country just miles from the city enjoy a great lunch before your round and a cocktail on the wraparound porch after 18 Come see us today. The Meadows Golf Course in Harpersville, right off of Highway 280. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Vulcan Tire and Automotive. Four great locations right here in Birmingham. The team at Vulcan Tire and Automotive, they feel it's important for you to know they don't employ any salespeople or technicians that are incentivized with your commissions. When you are getting your vehicle serviced, the team is only incentivized to take care of you and your vehicle. That doesn't happen everywhere, but it does happen at Vulcan Tire and Automotive. Again, four locations right here in Birmingham, Hoover, Moody, Trustful, and Gardendale. For more information, Vulcan Tire and Auto.com. Say you had the greatest job in the world, which everyone knows is crafting pumpkin fresh frozen custard desserts at Culver's. Here would be your typical day. Pour farm fresh dairy into the custard maker and run continuously all day. Add real pumpkin puree and pumpkin pie spice. Then craft our pumpkin spice shake or salted caramel pumpkin concrete mixer. Yum! Serve with a great big pumpkin loving smile. Just like that, pumpkin's back at Culver's, but not for long. Welcome to Delicious. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round. Major situation the other day, basement and garage flooded. So who did I call? Our friends at Dry Tech Water Restoration. Call them today, 205-637-0143. They were at my house within an hour. They will always respond quickly, and they answer the phone, 205-637-0143. They work for the customer, not the insurance company. No ties to any insurance companies. Go online, mydrytech.com. That's mydrytech.com, or call 205-637-0143. As part of our show today being brought to you by the great folks at the Alabama Men's Clinic. Listen, when's the last time you've had your testosterone check? Uh, you may say, I don't need it checked, Jim. Well, that's possible. That's possible. A lot of men don't. But let me ask you, have you been having problems sleeping lately? You, have you had an energy problem? Your energy been down? Your workout's not the same? You can tell if you're not getting the same from your workout. Maybe your libido, your love life's not the same. All that can be a cause of low testosterone. Could be that problem right there. Whatever the challenge, Alabama Men's Clinic has a solution for you. All you have to do is go by. You get a medical consultation and a little blood work. If medically advised and you start your low T treatments that day in the office, 
Your visit is free. Here's how you set up the appointment. You call 205 205- Five nine eight seven thousand two zero five five nine eight seven thousand, or go to the website alabamamensclinic.com alabamamensclinic.com you know another side effect to having low testosterone is depression that's a problem that a lot of people deal with on a um, daily weekly monthly basis uh, that can be corrected with uh, the correct testosterone in your body get that all checked out alabamamensclinic.com alabamamensclinic.com or 205-598-7000 Uh, The DNA of Georgia is the fact that they are playing at a championship level. An impressive performance against the Kentucky Wildcats. Here's Kirby Smart after the game. Proud of our guys. I thought our DNA showed through. Our DNA continues to repeatedly show up. Composure, connection, resiliency, and toughness. Those those qualities come through in this team. You know, at halftime, nobody was – panic nobody was you know nervous it's hey it's a physical football game we're gonna stay aggressive uh keep coming at them and uh, give them a lot of credit they got a good football team but i'm proud of our guys and the way so many players have risen up and uh r- rose to the occasion mm. and they really are looking like the number one team unanimous in both polls let's do three and out it's brought to you by our friends at vulcan tires yeah four great locations anything you need done bumper to bumper our guys at vulcan tire and automotive they can handle from the brake pads wheel alignment tires and more stop into one of those great locations and for more information vulcan tire and auto.com first down Okay, better chance of happening. Cincinnati actually makes it to a college football playoff or Caleb Williams ends up in New York as a Heisman finalist. Well, yeah. being being out half a year, Brown, yeah, too is, late of a start, has yeah. got to hurt Caleb Williams. I think he can make a run to maybe be in New York, but he can't win it, right? He's going to have the Spencer Rattler Award of being your odds on favorite going into next season. Yeah, uh, which is worked hard. out well for Spencer. Uh, I would say better chance of Cincinnati making the playoffs. Neither is your answer in true three-and-out fashion, but Cincinnati's got the better well, chance. Well, I tell you, ironically, Caleb Williams can keep Cincinnati out. Because if Oklahoma loses a game, Cincinnati's got a good shot. Oklahoma or Ohio State loses a game, Cincinnati's got a good shot of getting in. First guy that brought this up was Herb Street on the broadcast. Yeah. He said it. He was like, is there a possibility we're seeing a Heisman finalist right here? Yeah, I mean, it is possible. It is possible because it's Bryce Young and then – you know, you can't you can't fault B. John Robinson. He's putting up great numbers, but they keep losing. Um, and then it's hard to find that next guy. And I mentioned to Brown that maybe you start looking at one of the great Georgia defenders to to have a seat in New York or something. They just don't have a they don't have an Indomicon Sioux star over there. They have so many stars right. on that yeah. Georgia defense. The Cubby Dean's a heck of a player. I just don't think he's he's Heisman, right? Second down. <laughs> Which top 10 has a better shot at losing this weekend, Oregon at UCLA or Oklahoma State at Iowa State? Well, you gave us the answer earlier. Well, that's my answer. I think both lose, actually. Yeah, I think both could lose against you. I know. I think both lose. I'm I'm kind of with Lance on that. So you think Oregon loses at UCLA? What what have you seen from Chip Kelly's UCLA team that makes you think they can do something positive two weeks in a row? Nothing, but I watched what Cal did to Oregon, and that's that's very, very concerning. Yeah, to me it's two average teams. UCLA's at home. Not that that home field means anything at all. But But that's the Pac-12, right? One week, Oregon barely beats Cal. Next week they play like a champion. One week, UCLA beats Washington. Well, Next week I, they play like a dog. Arizona State loses. Utah wins. We're blah, blah, seeing blah, blah, a blah. trend of Anthony Brown and Oregon having offensive issues. That's that's yeah. the week-to-week thing that worries me if I'm no, an Oregon No, C.J. Burdell. Yeah, that's a Tra- big loss. Now, Travis Dye, was, he was the entire focal point of the offense because Anthony Brown's not good enough, or at least a lot, not elite enough, to carry that offense. But Dye was good. I just I don't trust Oregon at all. I mean, Washington State all of a sudden has won three consecutive games of the Pac-12. Yeah, and by the way, maybe without their head coach. Yeah. The Rolovich decision comes down, I think, today, today or tomorrow. Yeah, and he says if he doesn't get the exemption he's done. based on religion, he's done. Yeah. Um, and the players obviously love playing for him. They, well, they guys turned done in a pretty good job. turned in a great effort yeah. for him this past week. I think it's more likely both win than both lose. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that one and one is the, probably what will happen, but better chance both win than both lose. We'll circle back to that because I would take it would be one of those only if okay. both win or both lose. Well, let's lose. not circle back. I'll take only if both wins. You take only in both lose. Okay, so I've got UCLA and Iowa State. Both have got a win. Yeah. And you've got the flip side of that. You've got Oregon and Oklahoma State. I've got the number eight and the number 10 team in yeah. the country. <laughs> How could yeah. it go wrong? Yeah. What could go wrong? Hey, everybody out there wanting chaos, Dunaway yeah, just did it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's Third a stake bet update. 
Okay. Stake bet brought to you by our friends at Royal Betting. RoyalBettingInc.com. Let the lights blow. Man. There we yeah. go. Okay. I told in the womb chair that I sat in, we had a guest in studio a little bit ago. These lights, you would be blinded if you sat in that chair for an hour. Completely blinded. Good okay, good. quickly to the NFL. Which quarterback is out of the league first, Jared Goff or Sam Darnold? Well, Jared Goff's coach just called him out, so I'm probably going to go Jared Goff. And I will tell you, I got a text from our friend Charlie, big Lions fan, like Rockstar. <laughs> good game. You tried. And he said that not only is Goff, he believes, the worst quarterback in the league, he thinks he's a coward. Oh, wow. Howard. Well, I mean, your boy called Dan Campbell flat called him out. Is he going to respond? Uh, golf. What, what, did, what can you do? He didn't check his messages. Oh, boy. I mean, I, I, I said it before. This is another example of how good Sean McVay is as a head coach. He got to a Super Bowl with yeah, Jared It's golf. pretty remarkable. Okay, right. but I, I've missed what has happened to Sam Darnold. What's happened well, to Sam Darnold? He was Darnold. just awful. Yeah. yeah, he's just not playing well. And yeah. I thought with Joe Brady, and, and a lot of this is Christian McCaffrey. If McCaffrey doesn't go down, then, you know, the offense is balanced out a little bit. But, I mean, he's just he's just not a good quarterback right now. And I thought he would be better in this setting. I don't, I don't pay as much attention to the NFL outside of my team. So the Panthers are trending in a bad direction. Well, they lost three straight. Yeah, they lost three straight. So does that put Matt Rule into play, maybe, for you one know, of these college I, his, jobs? I saw somebody mention his name for for LSU if he decides I've made a mistake now I think he's a hundred million guaranteed for this yeah. gig so I, I it'd be hard for me to leave yeah, yeah contractually I don't know where yeah. he is but if I knew that Sam Darnold is not my quarterback which he probably isn't I was wrong on that and I don't know who my quarterback of the future is in the NFL you know you can't win without one I'm having my agent float something to LSU and yeah, to USC to and see who's interested well, that'd be great to have Matt Rule in the SEC oh I love it yeah I love it I mean we'd pick up a, a viewer I'd like that yeah yeah Fourth down. Tough question here. One quarterback, one game. You go on Lamar or Kyler? Kyler. He's the MVP right now. I think I'd go Lamar. Yeah, so Lamar. Do I get those weapons that Kyler's got? He's got I, weapons, man. I don't, and he's adding Zach Ertz. And listen, I appreciate y'all, you scientists out there. You're 100%. I'm, I was confusing Comet and Meteor because the Comet goes on forever, apparently. <laughs> Haley's Comet. I mean, it keeps coming back ever. Having me up. So it was a Meteor I was shooting for. So thank you, Mr. Science, for correcting me we there. we got to have a lot of energy to be a Comet. It's yeah. nonstop. It is nonstop. But the Meteor is what I was shooting for. The old shooting star is what Manziel was. And, I mean, Kyler's been unbelievable so far, but Lamar has stacked unbelievable on top of unbelievable. I mean, Kyler, I keep waiting for him to come back to earth. Lamar has shown me he's not coming back. Did this not show you yesterday that, that Cliff Kingsbury could actually be taken hostage, abducted, we don't see him again, and Arizona will continue to win? That's what it looked Cliff like Kingsbury yesterday. Kingsbury doesn't mean anything second best team. team in the nfl right now though i think yeah i think they are too yeah. maxwell says lamar all day he's yeah, doing it with nothing too. around him he really is doing it well he, mark around. andrews good uh hollywood brown is good yeah, I mean, yeah, let's Le'Veon not, bell scored a touchdown yesterday yeah, let's don't act like he doesn't have weapons aaron uh, to be fair for darnold he had zero help this past sunday hit that fourth and i don't know fourth and a mile from the end zone yesterday to get that game to have that final drive. I mean, that was impressive that they got the game to overtime. Of course, they found a way to lose it. Krusty 1001, Jerry Judy, back to the Alabama receiver thing. Jerry Judy, Judy only caught 14 balls his freshman year. Patience for the receivers can pay off. Pay, today's player doesn't have patience. Nope. They don't. Who does? Nobody in this room has patience. Yeah, but we've earned decades <laughs> and decades of misery. You to be not have patient. Patience. I'm not, I don't have to be patient. You be patient. I can't, I honk. I literally, we were going to dinner Friday, and I told Maggie, I'm in such a good mood. I'm not even going to let traffic driving up to the summit How long for did dinner. It hold? Get uh, out I, of my way, I, I did not make it to that uh, barbecue restaurant halfway there. You know, the thing though with patience, the older you get, you've only got a certain amount of time. When you're 18 or 19, you got plenty of time. You can make that money. You've still got time to win a ring. Be patient. And I woke we don't up, have time to be patient. I woke up early, it was driving from Starkville. And did not get a speeding ticket. We was trying to make it in time for my wife's. She was preaching at Asbury. So I was trying to time it out. The intersection, flowers? intersection of heaven and hell. I was up late drinking in Starville, waking up early to go watch her preach. So I, I do all the speed limits, do all the speed traps coming back. And then I'm, you know, I'm on time. I'm on time. I'm on time. And I get on 280, and there are three people who have nowhere to go driving side by side Hate below it. the speed limit drives me crazy somebody pick uh, somebody pick, pick a, a lane, lane. and go. get out of the way and have yep. someone who's got somewhere to be to go faster yep. beside you drives me crazy when i'm when i'm in a hurry but nobody else is i hate that yeah. the left lane should be for urgent drivers yeah, but you're fun to drive with you make it an adventure <laughs> Oof, the millennium falcon yeah <laughs> you you three 
Yeah. Again, uh, we, three, we, three we, sounds like a consensus. We, yeah, we established that you're blind. Yeah. yeah. And it that was, is not true. Most recent wreck for you, Rockstar. Most recent wreck? Right. Oh, let's not do this. 17 years old? Lance? Oh, I don't want to talk about this. Jim. Don't, don't ask Donovan. Yeah. He's going to implode. Yeah, my, my wreck was when we were doing a I show remember together. it. Yeah, yeah, it was a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. Yours yes. was a bad yeah. one. I can't believe you brought that up. Well, I was 16, so. Oh, well, mine was out of college. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Last time you got gunshot. Uh, <laughs> ready? I yeah, have quickly turn the page on this. Uh, part of our show being brought to you by our friends at Gutter Cap. It's time right now to cap that gutter. Yeah, 823-2212. Right now, our man, C. Stu, 45% off the retail price for all of the next round viewers and listeners. Call him up, 823-2212. GutterCapBirmingham.com. 45% off the retail price is a patent aluminum cover. Fists over the existing gutter will keep all the debris out. It's a dirty, dangerous job. You don't want to clean the gutters out. Trust me, get the gutter cap system. You're going to love it. 823-2212. Cap it. Don't snap it. Toby's dead on here, man. Uh, patience leads to the transfer portal nowadays. That yeah, is that, true. That is their patience. Yeah. That is patience. All right, we're back in a moment. It's the next round. Follow Dunaway on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Dunaway. There's nothing I like more than a unique, delicious meal. And that's what you get at Champy's World Famous Fried Chicken right on Highway 119 in Alabaster. Those great full fried chicken plates, the tenders, the poor boys. But I love the southern staple chicken on a stick. It's perfect for a tailgate or watching the big game. And then the authentic Mississippi Delta recipe, homemade tamales, the best I've ever tasted. See the whole menu or order online at champyschicken.com. For blues, brews, and bird, it's Champy's Chicken, Highway 119, Alabaster. How do you know you're in a community, not just a town? Well, strangers smile as they walk by. They refill your coffee without you asking. And when you ask directions, people offer to walk you there. Communities give more. The way you know when you walk into First Bank that you are in a real community bank. Great products, direct access to your local bankers, and relationships that can last a lifetime. Don't just have an account. Have a community with First Bank. Member FDIC. Want more of the show? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast. The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and our entire Double Down Media podcast family. All at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. Drunk driving prevention is a priority at Anheuser-Busch. You can't drive drunk if you don't drive there. Encourage friends to join in the pledge to decide to ride on decidetoride.com. Brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Uber, Birmingham Budweiser, and the next round. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. That's nextroundlive.com. Sometimes it's not just losing the weight, but keeping the weight off. I'm Jim Dunaway, and I told you how Weight of Wellness helped save my life. They helped me lose 45 pounds. They got my blood pressure and cholesterol in check. And now they're helping me keep that weight off throughout the football and holiday season. You can see more online at aplanforme.com, aplanforme.com. Every plan is individually designed. No contracts, no sign-up fees, and you get a free consultation. See it all on the website, aplanforme.com. Weight of Wellness, your journey to healthy living. It's time to change the game plan on your night's sleep. Have you ever had a custom-made mattress set made right here in America? Now more than ever, American-made, Alabama-made means something. And that's what you get with my friends at Royal Bedding on Highway 31 in Pelham. Tom, Ginger, and TJ Vignale have been providing Alabamians with a great night's sleep for over 30 years now. You can see everything they offer on their website, royalbeddinginc.com. But better yet, stop by the showroom right on Highway 31. It's Royal Bedding and the website, royalbeddinginc.com. The Double Down Media Podcast family is live and full of content for all ages. The Mystery Fifth Hour gives the next round host a chance to talk about everything but sports. Pour a glass of Bama and bourbon. Our weekly college football conversation while sipping some of the most interesting pours in the bourbon world. And our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call. LT takes off the gloves for an in-depth conversation with stars like Taylor Hicks, presented by Redmond Vodka. Find those podcasts and more by searching The Next Round on Apple, Spotify, and on our website, nextroundlive.com. No one does happy hour like Twin Peaks, whatever your preference. We have everything from tequila cocktails and an extensive bourbon category to local craft beers and handcrafted whiskey cocktails. And don't forget about that 29-degree man-sized drafts. It's Twin Peaks at the Patton Creek Shopping Centers. Hello, I'm J.L. Shea, and four generations of Shea's have run our business in the same spot in downtown Homewood. 
People ask me from time to time why we do what we do. I can tell you that it's just not all about the clothes, although we are a little obsessive about the brands we bring into our store. No, we do what we do because of people just like you. And through all these years, I've learned one critical lesson. The most important part of a man's wardrobe is fit. When your clothes fit, they feel like part of you, not just something you put on in the morning. You move more easily. You feel more confident. And fit is not an accident or a matter of luck. It shows whether you're buying a made to measure suit, a jacket off the rack, or a pair of jeans. We're going to ensure that the fit is perfectly you. Come see us at Shea's. I promise you'll notice a difference. That's Shea's in downtown Homewood, where we have been since 1922. Lock of the day every day on the show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Iron Mountain Drains and Plumbing. LT's got choices tonight. He's got football. He's got baseball. Now, if you were with us all summer, LT likes football a lot more than he likes baseball. But where are you going with the lock today, man? Uh, we are going Monday night football. I'm going to get you an official number here. Okay. Titans are hosting the Bills. Going back last year, this was a 42-16 Titans route. Um, but I'm playing the home team. I'm playing the home dog tonight. I'm playing the Titans. I think Henry has a big game. I think this one comes down to the wire. Again, I think the Bills are the best team in the NFL, but this might be a loss for the Bills. Ooh. Ooh. If the Bills lose this one, do you say Arizona's the best team in the NFL? I mean, you would have to because they soundly went on the road and and beat what is a good Rams team, not a great Rams team. Uh, Right now, the Bills are minus six. They have have soundly beaten the Titans on the road, the Bills on the road, and now the Browns on the road. Yeah, they're only close I mean, the Rams on the road. Excuse me, the Rams on the road, now the uh, Browns on the road. It was randomly Minnesota. I know, on the road. I mean, you you mean in Arizona? I thought that game was in Minnesota. Was was that game in Arizona? Okay. But their road wins are very impressive, and they've whipped teams. That is our lock of the day. It's brought to you by our friends at Iron Mountain Construction today. If you're committed to safely supporting uh, the operations of your facility, Iron Mountain Construction can help you out through the execution of some quality-driven maintenance services and on-time, on-budget, small-capital construction work. Iron Mountain Construction is available for assisting in new projects, daily maintenance, downturns, and more. Specialized industrial service and support includes plumbers and pipe fitters, millwrights, iron workers, laborers, operators, and a lot more. Call the folks at Iron Mountain Construction, Jeremy Purvis. The phone number is 205-781-1170, 205-781-1170. And for all your plumbing needs, ironmountainworld.com. Just drain it. A couple of news and notes. Uh, Matt Corral, questionable now. He's where you got to put him. Uh, with what Lane Kiffin says is they host um, the the crew coming up from Baton Rouge and Oxford this weekend, <laughs> LSU and Ole Miss. Uh, meanwhile, Ajay Hall, uh, we're waiting to see the status of him on the team moving forward. If he's at practice today, Nick Saban talked about that earlier. I mean, would this – back to the Matt Corral, the – I mean, if he's out and they have to play the backup, would this not be so crazy for Ed Orgeron to agree to a buyout and then go out and beat Florida at home and Ole Miss on the road. And all of a sudden, I mean, there's an asterisk next to it because the crowd didn't play, but all of a sudden they're going to start winning games and they got the bye week and then they're coming to Tuscaloosa. Now I think they'll get destroyed by Alabama. But, I mean, this would be a weird situation that all of a sudden they start winning games. Yeah, there's a lot of teams that can't afford to lose their quarterback, but you brought up Luke Altmaier. He's got one career attempt. Yeah, I would say Ole Miss is high on the list if can't afford to lose quarterback. No, they still could beat LSU at home, but that game gets really interesting. Really tricky. Like, Uh, I saw the number was 10.5. What is it without Corral, would you imagine? Four and a half, maybe three and a half. Uh, Anthony Richardson, is it is it time to fully pull, yeah. pull the plug in Florida? Because they got a week off to work with Anthony Richardson as a starter and then the cocktail party, and that could be the only path to victory for Dan Mullen and the Gators. Well, you know, Dan Mullen's best quarterbacks have been quarterbacks, the ability to run. Richardson is that guy, still really raw throwing the football. But, you know, the sample size I saw of both of them in four quarters against LSU, I thought Richardson 
I thought he looked better. Bad finish for Richardson, though. Uh, bad pass. Bad pass oh. at the end there. With with your chance, your team still in it with a chance, but, but that, he's the one that gave him the chance. Yeah, that touch, though, yeah. it's, it's such a repetition thing. And you could tell he had not repped that touch pass very often. He threw that yep. one up. As soon as he let go of it, I yep. said, that's got to be picked uh, off. Absolutely. And he was running for his life. I mean, it was it was just a messy performance all around for Florida. And I don't think Dan Mullen's on the hot seat, but I do think Todd Grantham has to be. It's just continuous failure after failure by Todd Grantham. And it's weird because I thought the defense had gotten a lot better until Saturday. I know. Bo Nix with us earlier. You can get that on our YouTube channel, also in the podcast section, the Nick Saban News Conference. Uh, Clay Travis is with us tomorrow in our final segment, back to the LSU coaching search and where they're headed now. Part of our show being brought to you by the great folks at Truck Works. Wherever you're headed, remember Truck Works is proud to pre- be pr- the presenting sponsor of the nine o'clock hour here on the next round. They got locations in Alabama and Mississippi and the Florida Panhandle, and they've got job opportunities open for you right now. No matter where you're located, visit truckworks.com. That's works with an X truckworks.com and click the join our team tab and find out more information about maybe a warehouse delivery job, a service technician, or maybe be an experienced parts counter salesperson, that and a lot of other jobs. Check them out online. If you want to change careers at truckworks.com, that's works with an X truckworks.com more on LSU in our final segment of the next round. Follow the next round on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at next round live. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Vulcan Tire and Automotive. Four great locations right here in Birmingham. The next time you need one or a set of new tires, do yourself a favor. Stop by, see the guys at Vulcan Tire and Auto. Locally owned and operated with a wide selection of the top tire brands available. The guys there can get you set and get you safely back out on the road. Again, four locations in Birmingham, Hoover, Moody, Trustful, and Gardendale. For more information, you can always visit them online. Check them out today, VulcanTireAndAuto.com. Hey, are you suffering from that lower back pain? Get moving this fall with our friends at Stretch Zone. Great for golfers, runners, desk jockeys, weekend warriors, and more. To learn more, book an appointment, 205-509-2349 or online, stretchzonebham.com. Take a second to listen to me. Do you have problems sleeping? Is your energy down? Your workout's not the same. Is your libido down? Your problem could be as simple as low testosterone. Whatever the challenge, the Alabama Men's Clinic has a solution. You can come in, get a medical consultation, and blood work. If medically advised and you start your low T treatments that day in the office, your visit is free. Set up that appointment by calling 205-598-7000 or go to the website, alabamamensclinic.com. Another side effect could be depression, and most men wait a year or longer before ever getting tested. The goal line to better sleep, more energy, a rekindled love life, and more may be as simple as getting your low T checkup at Alabama Men's Clinic. Located in Birmingham to serve you. The number again, 205-598-7000 or one click at alabamamensclinic.com. That's alabamamensclinic.com. Some things just stand the test of time. Your old truck, an aged bourbon, the memory of your first girlfriend, and a classic pair of Red Wing boots. Fall is upon us, and Red Wing boots are the ones every guy must have. Whether you're on the job site, working in the yard, exploring the trail, or heading out for the evening, Red Wing shoes will have you covered. Certified fit specialists will make sure you get the most comfortable boots with convenient locations in Pelham, next to Publix, and the new trustful location between Metro Diner and Taco Mama, Red Wing boots, a classic you can enjoy every day. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus prime beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop, rare quality, well-done service. A legendary coach once said, it's not the will to win that matters, it's the will to prepare to win. Bryant bankers have the dedication and experience to put together a financial game plan that's right for you. Stop by one of the seven Central Alabama locations today or give them a call at 1-855-4-BRYANT to begin preparing for your financial future today. You'll find out what unbeatable service and legendary results are all about. Bryant Bank, Equal Housing Lender, Member FDIC. 
Anheuser-Busch wants every experience for you around beer to be a good one. And getting home safely is always a priority. So encourage friends to decide to ride, whether it's by being the designated driver, calling an Uber, or taking public transit. You cannot drive drunk if you don't drive there. This message is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Uber, Birmingham Budweiser, and the next round, Anheuser-Busch. St. Louis, Missouri. The Double Down Media Podcast family is live and full of content for all ages. The Mystery Fifth Hour gives the next round host a chance to talk about everything but sports. Pour a glass of Bama and Bourbon, our weekly college football conversation while sipping some of the most interesting pours in the bourbon world. And our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call. LT takes off the gloves for an in-depth conversation with stars like Taylor Hicks, presented by Redmond Vodka. Find those podcasts and more by searching The Next Round on Apple, Spotify, and on our website, Next nextroundlive.com. Want more of the show? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast, The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and the entire Double Down Media podcast family. All at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. All right, final part of the show. Cowan Equipment poll question updated involved the LSU coaching search. Who will be the next head coach at LSU? Dave Aranda leads our choices right now, 36%. Mel Tucker, 18%. Jimbo Fisher, 13%. Other, though, at 33%, a lot of James Franklin and, and the I, respondents I, in that other. I've got a list of some of these right here. We'll get some of the listeners' response. You uh, Tell us about Cowan Equipment. If you're having a hard time finding that new plastic on the seat piece of heavy equipment, check out Cowan Equipment's rental fleet hit list for a wide range of well-maintained equipment from their rental fleet for sale now visit cowan.com slash featured used equipment or call 1-800-239-COWAN for more information brad i'd say joe brady if brady says no mario cristobal jd says joe brady danny says i put the lsu job near the top of my list of jobs danny puts the alabama one lsu two notre dame usc texas his top five job notre dame way too high yeah, where's ohio state and Georgia? Yeah, ohio state's up there georgia's up there uh he says lt may not like this but lsu's a freaking 1000 pound gorilla in the room uh, we agree i mean les miles and ed ordron both won national championships there yep yeah gary says kirby smart joking there um a lot of others coach luke Fickle says go Tigers in 1986. Any Luke Fickle love Listen, out there? This could not time out any better for Luke Fickle doing what he's doing in Cincinnati with both USC and LSU open. I mean, those are primo jobs that if Luke Fickle can get a primo job, those are one of the two you would want. Yeah. I, I don't know that either one of them will hire Fickle. Here's the unfortunate thing. If you're a Cincinnati fan, I don't know how many Cincinnati fans are out there. But if Fickle runs the table again and they're left on the outside, Fickle needs to, t- to take a he job. D- he does. If he wants to win a championship. Yeah, it depends I mean, on what he wants. I don't know what drives Luke Fickle. Yeah. I mean, he's an Ohioan. Ohioan. But, but that sounds right. I like him more and more as I watch him develop I as a coach. I, you know, I, I tend to overreact to in-game management situations and label a guy as a bad coach. His in-game management of the Georgia game last year was horrible and it gave Georgia the win well it was bad to get such a Florida last year but I think he's been better maybe it's because they're routing everybody yeah, this maybe year, so they're just not close games that. yeah yeah uh, he he would be interesting and somebody we had not mentioned throughout the day this uh search will go on just real quickly give me an answer yes or no do you think they already have the ag- agreement with the next coach and that's why they pull the plug now or is this how you get into the conversation with some of the big fish by pulling the plug now can I make one quick point? Yes. I would say yes, because they're going to pay the full $17 million. Right. But because they're paying the full $17 million, maybe that's optics, and Woodward tells the next coach, hey, look, you know, we didn't have to pay Ed Orger on this. That's right. You know, if, if, yeah. if somebody's telling you, oh, yeah, these Les Miles and Orgeron got fired after winning national championships, we paid him his full $17 million. Yeah, that's a great point right there. So I think my answer is yes. Yeah, that's the parting shot brought to you by our friends at Mortgage Right today, bringing you a mortgage anywhere you want to take your shot at that next house. If you're sick of leasing your life away, Mortgage Right, they've got the cure with locations nationwide. Our friends at Mortgage Right are dedicated to making the home buying process easy. They're eager to offer tips, tools, and a staff of industry professionals to move you in with confidence. If you're ready, to let go of the leasing life and start living life, Mortgage Right can help. Visit mortgageright.com slash TNR today to get started. $5 million buyout. I mean, it's $17 million buyout, but you're getting a check for $5 million tomorrow. What's the first thing you buy? Mm. If you're Edwards around, what's the first thing you buy? 
Not if you're Ed Orgeron. That's not as exciting. What do you buy? Throat spray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, for five million, um, I would pay off the house, and uh, I don't know. Take a good trip. I go to Europe. What would you do? Five million dollars mm-hmm. membership to the best golf course near me. If I didn't already have it. What about you? If I didn't already have it. six right now. If yeah. I'm getting five million, there's a chance I already had the the membership. I, I, uh, what do you What do you do? What do I do? I feed the hungry. Buy a house I want to go and and I buy a house that I want with a great setup, and then I go somewhere this winter when it's cold as heck, that is it's hot, and get naked on a beach. That's, That's what I do. You always got to get naked, man. You got to. Got to get naked on a beach. Naked on the beach. It's five, a solo trip, but I'm yeah, doing it. Five million ain't fixing that. <laughs> You look a lot better naked. So, you look a lot better when naked you got on the naked beach. Naked on the beach, so that was before the spray. You actually had to, to had, rub the lotion in, right? I had the tan, yeah, yeah. all over. Now listen, you get, you look a lot better naked on the beach with five million dollars in your bank account. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. Until next time, God bless you. God bless America.